Mr. Adarshvi Singh, please come on the stage. Mr. B.K. Gupta, Mr. Atul. Mr. R.N. Yadav, Shri Atul Gupta, Shri Adarshvi Singh, Shri Vineet Gandhi, a very good morning to everyone, Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal, Chief Justice Allahabad High Court and Chief Guest of today's function, Honorable Judges, Honorable Formal Judges, Shri N. Venkatraman, Additional Solicitor General of India, Honorable Members of the Bar, Ladies and Gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to announce that Punjab and Hairana High Court Bar Association for the first time in association with All India Federation of Tax Practitioners and other premier tax bar associations of two states and Tri-City is organizing the conference which aims at educating the legal fraternity at large apart from giving an opportunity for networking and enhancing the fellowship. Today's theme of conference is India's taxation policy evolving possibilities. Taxation is a continuously evolving field and when wrongly applied, has the potential of causing irreversible historical changes, such as the American Revolution, which led to the famous slogan of no taxation without representation. Therefore, the relevance of today's conference is relatively high as it aims at bringing together leading researchers and tax practitioners to discuss recent nuisances on making the tax system more equitable at global scale. The same is visible from the overwhelming response we got from the delegates who have registered themselves for participating in today's conference. Now it is time to welcome our honorable guests on the dais. In some native languages, the term for plants translates to those who take care of us. So this time, the organizing committee decided to gift a plant, which is another way of saying, we care for you. May I now request Mrs. Anchal Goel and Mr. Sunish Mindlish to welcome honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Mindal. Now I request Mr. Rishabh Singla and Mr. Shaman Jain Advocates to welcome Shri D.K. Gandhi, President, All India Federation of Tax Practitioners. Now I request Mr. Rakesh Kataria and Mr. Rakesh Gautam advocates to welcome Shri Santokvinder Singh Garewal Nabha, President, Punjab and Haryana High Court Bar Association, Chandigarh. Now I request Mr. Vinod Kumar Mittal, President, Bathinda Tax Power Association and Mr. Saurabh Kapoor, Additional Advocate General Punjab to welcome Shri B.K. Gupta, President, Punjab Tax Power Association. Now I request Mr. Vineet Thakral and Mr. Pankaj Gupta Advocates to welcome Shri R.N. Yadav, President, Haryana Tax Power Association. Now 
Now I request Mr. Mukesh Ghai and Mr. Ashok Jain Advocates to welcome Shri Atul Gupta, President District Tax Bar Association, Mohali. Now I request Mr. Mohit Malik and Mr. Shiv Kumar Mittal Advocates to welcome Shri Adarshveer Singh, President Chandigarh Tax Bar Association. I also request Mr. Shwetanchu Goel to come on stage and welcome Shri Adarshveer Singh. I request Mr. Amit Bajaj from Jalandhar and Mr. Manish Bansal from Sangroor to welcome Shri Vineet Gandhi, President, District Tax Station, Bar Association, Panchkula. I also request Shwetanchu. Uh, Mr. Rishabh, can you please come and welcome? Now I request Mr. Amit Goenka from Amritsar and Mr. Jitinder Jindal Ambala Advocates to welcome Shri Sandeep Goel, Chairman of Organizing Committee. I now request all the dignitaries to please light the lamp for today's event. Very good morning to all.
माय लॉर्ड चीफ जस्टिस अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट जस्टिस राजेश बिंदल जी चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ द डे ऑल माय फ्रेंड्स प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ ऑल द बार्स एसोसिएशन मिस्टर संदीप गोयल चेयरमैन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी श्री एन वेंकट रमनी जी एडिशनल सॉलिसिटर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया माय रेस्पेक्टेड सीनियर्स माय पास प्रेसिडेंट एंड फेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल एट योर प्लेस इन चंडीगढ़ आई एम रियली हैप्पी टू बी हेयर इन चंडीगढ़ दैट आई नीड टू एक्सप्रेस माय एक्सपीरियंस जर्नी विच ऑल्सो स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम चंडीगढ़ आई एम रिकॉलिंग वेन आई केम टू चंडीगढ़ इन टू थाउजेंड थ्री वेन जस्टिस बिंदल ऑर्गेनाइज ए मेगा कॉन्फ्रेंस नेशनल टैक्स कॉन्फ्रेंस रोल ऑफ टैक्स प्रोफेशनल मार्चिंग दैट वॉज द स्लोगन दैट वॉज ट्वेल्थ ऑफ जुलाई I was part of that team when Justice Bindal, along with respected senior K L Goel Saab, Sandeep Goel, I was fortunate to be part along with my friend Rajiv Agnihotri here. So that was 2003, and after that, in 2017 again, the same mega conference was organized here, and I happened to be the initial vice president of the All India Federation. under the leadership of madam premlata bansal so friends and today again when i became national president in lucknow i was fortunate to have taken the oath under the auspicious presence of our honorable justice rajesh bindal so huge round of applause for justice bindal he has been so kind he has been member of the federation he is always available for the federation before i tell you about little about federation i just want to express my gratitude and special thanks to justice bindal for being always with the federation i am filled with gratitude justice bindal to you besides this i want to share one very important thing this is all india federation of tax practitioner established 46 year ago none other than justice uh, jurist nani pal ki wala sir and supreme court chief justice jc shah sir so today what we are having all india presence of 10000 members and friends it has been my proud privilege to start the foundation day fortnight this year and that also started when i was contemplating making plans that how to do this year so i make a call to all my jones and within a one month all jones became active but special applause for mr sandeep goel who came forward first that we'll be organizing under north zone from national president is also there national vice president there he took the lead and he announced first program of foundation day and we have witnessed the flag hosting also again under the auspicious presence of justice bindal last evening although we had it first in the mumbai office in the morning but all the credit goes to mr sandeep goel huge round of applause for mr sandeep and not only this uh, organizing foundation day he took a lead in inviting luminary of speakers and organize a one day conference to which all you have come i welcome you all as far as federation goes this galaxy of speakers normally comes in our two day national conference but sandeep goel has made it all team all kudos to north zone they have made it i welcome you all once again special clap clap for north zone and sandeep goel and friends why this is happening because in federation we always work 
through th uh, for three principles we all are educated professionals but we always strive for education continuous education and then on ethically and then we achieve the excellence and this is the three principle on which federation is working and we have been marching like anything and let me share with you all of you that last yesterday we had a flag hosting at more than 50 places all across the country so all zones especially from this dais i am acknowledging acknowledging that all zones have come forward to be with the national leadership to organize this foundation day celebrations in a grand manner and today at three places we are having the same one day conference one is at ranchi where chief justice of jharkhand high court is there his excellency governor is also there so this is a class where federation is marching towards and in door also we are having the same level of conference but i am really happy to be part of this serving the federation is a beautiful experience for me in a personal level but we can serve the society that's what we do in the federation besides achieving the professional this year also we have come to serve the society by bringing a social responsibility committee where we are serving to the society through federation through at personal level professional level and on this foundation day also in south zone my members have gone to orphanage they have distributed the things valuable things whatever is required so my friends federation is such a forum where we are serving to the society we are educating ourselves and then achieving not only excellence in profession but excellence in life which is foremost for every professional that what we can do and my humble request to all of you friends who are not yet the member come join the federation you will feel immense happiness while contributing to the society and not making my, this more simpler still life feel the justice bindal the heart is for federation he is always available so that is the beauty of the federation that whosoever comes to this family he becomes the family member and serving the society and let me acknowledge one of another of federation member mr jagmohan bansal has been elevated that is also from chandigarh so huge round of applause again for chandigarh and with these words i once again welcome you all and i hope when you go back in the evening you will be more enriched with the knowledge which is going to be shared by worthy speakers who have come over here at one invitation of organizer and one very important thing i want to share that federation is such a platform where we encourage young speakers newcomers and when they become stalwarts they also serve the federation they go to any place of the conference they go pro bono they don't charge anything if it is a conference of federation so huge round of applause for all the speakers who are contributing to the society they do not take anything besides the hospitality which we extend to them so it is a such a platform where all are equal but serving each other so therefore with these words i thank you all i welcome you all from the core of my heart thank you so very much may i now request honorable mr rajesh mindal chief justice allahabad high court to address the august gathering हॉल में आने के बाद बहुत सारी पुरानी यादें 
रिफ्रेश हो जाती है गांधी साहब ने तो काफी कुछ इंग्लिश में लेक्चर दे दिया मैं जिस स्टेट में हूँ वहाँ शुद्ध हिंदी का मतलब बहुत सारे वर्ड तो ऐसे हिंदी में यूज होते हैं जिसका मेरे को भी बेंच पार्टनर से पूछना पड़ता है मतलब क्या है बहुत शुद्ध हिंदी यूज होती है एंड शुद्ध हिंदी के साथ रिस्पेक्टेबल जो वर्ड यूज करते हैं कोर्ट के अंदर भी अगर आप कई जो एडवोकेट हैं वो ये बोलेंगे माननीय आप ये पन्ना पलटिए या ये मतलब काफी एक्चुअली लैंग्वेज इज ए मीन ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन ओनली अनलेस वी कैन एक्सप्रेस एज ए लॉयर ऑल्सो और वेर एवर वी आर एंड दी अदर साइड अंडरस्टैंड वट वी वॉन्ट टू से देर इज नो यूज ऑफ यूजिंग एनी लैंग्वेज बेसिकली समाइम वी ट्राई टू एक्सप्रेस इन इंग्लिश बट वी डोंट हैव द करेक्ट वर्ड्स टू एक्सप्रेस दैट सो मीनिंग इज नॉट कन्वेड दैन और इंग्लिश और हिंदी में थोड़ा सा फर्क है हिंदी में काफ़ी अप्रोप्रिएट वर्ड मिलेंगे हर एक चीज़ के इन इंग्लिश देर आर मैनी कॉमन वर्ड्स बट वट एवर इज देयर मिस्टर गांधी हैज टोल्ड यू अबाउट दिस दर्लियर टू कॉन्फ्रेंसिस आई थिंक वन ही हैज फॉर गॉटन देर वॉज फर्स्ट कॉन्फ्रेंस हेल्ड इन दिस हॉल वेन दिस अकेडमी वॉज एनेगोरेट इन टू थाउजेंड नाइन दैट वॉज बाई द फेडरेशन ऑनली kind of a inaugural of this hall though the academy was inaugurated it was yes it was uh, just as uh, ts thakur was the chief here at that time and uh, the present cgi he was connected online from bombay so and our senior member mr p c joshi he was there in the high court with jassi chanchud so this hall in fact this academy because as a judge also i had been coming here and then i was in charge of this for a year or so because in the system we have the judges at serial number matlab seniority 8 he is the in charge of the academy so at that time also i think lot of programs were held so good memories but one thing is there that this is a place of learning the atmosphere is such the ambiance is such that one learns something wo apne aap hi andar se hota hai ki kuch seekh ke jayenge yahan se jaise aap mandir mein jaate hain na kahin to wo ek mind andar enter karne mein hi aapka change ho jayega thoda so that is this is such a place we are all lucky to have this place i have seen i think many states where the academies are there but i have not seen such a beautiful academy with so much of infrastructure we are lucky to have this in chandigarh mr gandhi told that i had accepted their request but the fact is that it's a home coming from me also aur dusra ye hai ke covid ke baad probably abhi conference shuru hui hain so we all know ke online is all right because we had been continuing whatever possible was there the courts were also functioning some online conferences were also there federation also had many online conferences online year even moot court competitions were also there but there is no substitute of physical hearing or attending a conference physically because jo milke aap exchange of views hain wo online nahi ho sakte that seriousness is also not there that you must have seen lot of video conferencing hearing through of the court through video conferencing to kis tarah ki videos aapne dekhi honge so lot of issues are there sometimes somebody is arguing from the car or market mein bhi khade hain aur well, a lot of issues were there but one fact is there again ki jo mobile hai jo court mein entry ban thi usi ne court chalayi hai us time so har ek aadmi ke din badalte hain wo kahawat hai na to so that is the fact dusra i remember probably yahi ek conference thi usme mr pp rao he is he is no more and i think one of the best lawyer we had in the country on constitution law and other whatever is there the clarity of thought and expression i have heard him i have assisted also him in some cases 
सो उन्होंने एक बात कही थी तो आई जस्ट रिकॉल दैट अभी जब यहाँ बैठा था कि वन एवर यू गो इन ए कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड यू हैव टू बी यू हैव टू चेयर दैट कॉन्फ्रेंस तो तीन चीज़ें ख्याल रखनी चाहिए वन इज़ दैट यू शुड हैव ए कम्फर्टेबल चेयर दैट आई हैव बिकॉज अकेडमी में हमने अरेंजमेंट कर रखा है इस बार सेकेंड इज लिटल बिट स्माइल एंड लीव क्वाइटली कोई ज़्यादा बोलने की जरूरत नहीं होती सो एवरी थिंग इज ऑल राइट बट इन एनी केस अब गांधी साहब ने बहुत ड्यूटी असाइन की है बट द फैक्ट मीन्स दैट इफ यू आस्क मी ऑन टैक्सेशन आई थिंक आई एम ऑल्सो ए लर्नर एंड द लर्निंग प्रोसेस इज स्टिल गोइंग ऑन और अभी तो काफ़ी देर से कोई बहुत सारे इश्यूज भी टैक्स के नहीं डिसाइड किए बट कमिंग टू द कॉन्फ्रेंस इन के इन एनी केस वी ऑल्सो लर्न लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विद एक्सचेंज ऑफ व्यूज के वट इज़ गोइंग ऑन ऑल अराउंड क्योंकि कोर्ट में जो आर्गूमेंट हैं वो बड़े लिमिटेड से चलते हैं केस स्पेसिफिक होंगे बट देर आर मैनी इशूज अ लाइट वट आर द प्रॉब्लम समीज आर फेसिंग और कहाँ डिपार्टमेंट कोई एक्सरसाइज कर रहा है कुछ कर रहा है ना मतलब वो वो चीज़ें भी एक वन टू वन इनफॉर्मली भी पता लगती हैं एंड सम हैव रेलिवेंस सम मे नॉट है बट सम हैव रेलिवेंस सो दैट इज ए गुड लर्निंग पॉइंट फॉर अस ऑल्सो टू हैव वट इज गोइंग ऑन इन दिस सोसाइटी फेडरेशन की बात गांधी जी ने बताई आपको द मोटो इज एथिक्स एजुकेशन एंड एक्सीलेंस थ्री ईज बट द फैक्ट इज द ऑर्डर हैज टू बी फर्स्टली वी नीड टू हैव एजुकेशन और एक्सीलेंस आएगी इफ यू पुट इन हार्डवेयर इन देयर क्योंकि खाली एजुकेशन से भी काम नहीं चलेगा इफ यू पुट योर हार्डवर्क इन दैट देन द एक्सीलेंस विल कम और उसको अगर हम ब्लेंड करेंगे एथिक्स के साथ विच इज लिटल बिट नाउ ए डिस्टर्बिंग फैक्टर इन ऑल अराउंड इन सोसाइटी ओनली वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस प्रोफेशन ओनली इफ यू ब्लेंड दैट विद एथिक्स आई थिंक यू कैन बी ए बेस्ट प्रोफेशनल टैक्स इज वन पार्ट बट एनी वेयर यू आर आई थिंक द फेडरेशन इज डूइंग लॉट इन दैट आई एम एसोसिएटेड विद दिस फेडरेशन फॉर द लास्ट मोर देन टू डिकेट्स आई थिंक इन दर टू थाउजेंड आई बिकेम मेम्बर ऑफ नाइन्टी नाइन प्रॉबली इन दिल्ली कॉन्फ्रेंस वॉज देर इन नाइन्टी नाइन प्रॉबली नाइन्टी नाइन सो सिंस देन आई एम ए मेम्बर एंड इट्स ए लर्निंग प्रोसेस मिस्टर गांधी इज राइट इन सेंग दैट वेन एवर यू अटेंड ए कॉन्फ्रेंस देर आर लॉट ऑफ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इशूज विच आर एक्सप्लेन टू यू सो इजीली एंड मैनी ऑफ योर डाउट्स आर क्लियर अदरवाइज समटाइम्स जस्ट बाई रीडिंग द डाउट्स आर नॉट क्लियर वी ऑल नो दिस टैक्सेशन लॉज हाउ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड दे आर नो बडी एवरीबडी टॉक्स अबाउट सिंप्लीफाइंग बट आई थिंक दैट साइड इट इज नॉट गोइंग yesterday there was a dinner also i think it was a good gesture on the part of the federation that they had honored all the tax professionals who were attending this conference and who have served the federation uh, this profession for more than 50 years we miss mr goel i think he is there today yesterday night but this a great achievement in profession that you give your 50 years of prime life basically to the profession and the another best part is that you are always ready to impart knowledge or share your knowledge that is the good part of this profession and the federation is a platform for that taxation policy evolving possibilities is the theme given i think we are refrained from touching this even in court because we can't touch the policy matters of the government so it is always the, in the domain of the government but the factor means that whatever policies they are framing whatever we are they are going i think the gst collection is going robust i remember we had a conference in uh, bhopal in 2017 only when this gst was to be introduced or it was introduced but it was just close to that and some of the commissioners excise commissioners who were involved in drafting of this law they were also invited just to clarify what it is and one of them shared that they will be happy if the collection is about 1 lakh crore per month and now it is going 1 lakh 50000 crore per month in 4 years probably the contribution which the central government had to make 20% i think they had asked they had promised 
the states are also collecting more than that fact may be better compliance and in compliance you see the role of the professionals is always there and second may be the some loopholes have been plugged it's always good for the society if there is no theft of taxes and third what we can see is maybe the business is more in the organized hands now if you go to buy vegetable then also you go to big brands basically small time people are also now everybody you see on a radio also you find some paytm or some everywhere small small vendors also and uh, another factor i think which is important is the use of technology in that so technology also has played a very good role in this mr gandhi also told you about 46th year of federation so what i was thinking these are all 40s or 50 because i was told there that i am the 49th chief of alabad and uh, we have just chanchu as 50th cgi of india so all 40s 50s we are there now and the another facet of the government policy regarding simplifying the taxes and all that is that it's a welfare state we know and in the welfare state they have to keep the interest of the professional also in mind so they continue complicate complicating things so that you also have good work so this is also the policy otherwise the tax professionals also may be after the government but they are not <coughs> we all know how much amendments are made and how complicated the amendments are i think in this also gst probably more than 1000 notifications have already been issued probably i was told in last 5 years only and uh, i was reading one article where they made a distinction of roti and paratha also so this how how they are going tomorrow they'll say ke punjab mein to tadke wali dal bhi hai ke wo uska dono ka bhi rate alag hoga so this is how they are going how much minds are working on this and uh, one i was seeing some uh, unbranded cereals i think or the pulses pulses probably ke itne tak ki packing hai to tax lagega usse upar nahi lagega so wo 25 kg ki mere khayal usme likhi thi to wo 26 ki packing aane shuru ho jayegi <laughs> वही होगा फिर आई डोंट नो वट इज द आइडिया बिहाइंड बट दैट पॉलिसी मेकर में बी नोइंग सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रात उसकी भी बात हो रही थी फ्लैग होस्टिंग वॉज एट एट पी एम ओनली सो एट पी एम इन पंजाब हैज ए डिफरेंट मीनिंग ऑल टूगेदर सो वी विल रिकॉलिंग दैट इन दिल्ली ऑल्सो बट वन थिंग आई वॉज रियली सरप्राइजिंग कि कोविड टाइम में एट पी एम के जो सब थे दे वर सेट टू बी इकोनॉमिक वॉरियर्स सो रात रात भी तो काफी इकोनॉमिक वॉरियर थे वहां पे और दूसरा आई थिंक जो टैक्स प्रोफेशनल्स हैं ये जो दूसरे एक टर्म इकोनॉमिक वॉरियर आई थी कोविड में वो तो लिमिटेड पीरियड के लिए थी प्रॉब्लम टैक्स प्रोफेशनल आर तो थ्रू आउट ही इकोनॉमिक वॉरियर है टैक्स कलेक्शन में रोल किसका है दे आर दी most important people i think is a bridge between the state and the taxpayer or because of their guidance only i think and in many of the issues probably the government can have discussion with the federation representatives also because this also had been seeing because we have legends in tax laws the hamari federation ke member and that's good they give them good ideas how to plug the loopholes and all that but one thing more is there we are all helping in collection of good revenues to the state but dusri hamari duty ye bhi hai ki we should see whether it is properly utilized or not as we say money saved is money earned so wahan pe bhi agar saving hai so that is in a way tax ka collection hi hai basically and now one issue which has come before the supreme court is freebies by the political parties so there was one news that some tax people also have been involved but that is not probably part of the order but still this is a kind of buying the votes who whoever is in power or who may be contesting the elections there are other issues also we all know this is one factor i think which discourages people to pay taxes 
that it may not be properly utilized or it's not being properly utilized i was reading i was just uh, because lot of stuff comes on the whatsapp some video the gentleman shared that in india you will see lot of people pay charity without even asking if they are satisfied yes now we have seen pm cares the fund is there during covid i think before that it was started and there are lot of calamities when happen within days you will find hundreds of crores of rupees donated by the people without even asking and many of those are the persons who don't pay any taxes because they feel ke bhi ye paisa kahin jayega to utilize hoga kisi acche kaam ke liye bade bade business men bhi de denge wahan pe but as far as the tax is concerned they have best advice how to save it kyunki wahan mindset different hai and the idea i think the problem again is ke kahin doubt hai mind mein ke properly utilization nahi hai they are just extracting money and not utilizing for the development of country or whatever is there but if we have to succeed i think we need to develop the culture of voluntary compliance kafi us taraf kaam ho gaya hai i think because uh, more than 95% is the self assessment of jo accept hoti hai probably i don't have the exact ideas figures but ek research bhi hui thi ek organization hai ko organization for economic cooperation and development सो so, इसने भी कोई रिसर्च वगैरह की कुछ सोसाइटी बनी हुई है कि वॉलेंट्री टैक्स कंप्लाइंस कैसे इनकरेज की जाए सो देवर ऑफ द व्यू इफ द टैक्स लॉज आर फेयर ट्रांसपेरेंट एंड फ्रेंडली टू द टैक्स पेयर या इक्विटी हो या रेसिप्रोसिटी हो तो प्रोबेबली बेटर कंप्लाइंस होगी सो दिस इज वन पार्ट आई थिंक द पॉलिसी मेकरस हैव टू सी हाउ टू टैक्स पीपल हाउ टू मेक द लॉज ऑल्सो user friendly and not big then complicated but in any case voluntary tax compliance ke liye again the advice of the professional is must abhi we have seen uski uski reference mein i'm just i was seeing the figures assessment year 21 22 ki income tax mein koi about 6.63 पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री करोड़ रिटर्न फाइल हुई एंड प्रोबेबली नॉट मोर देन टेन परसेंट पे मोर देन वन फाइव वन पॉइंट फाइव जीरो लैक टैक्स सो टैक्स पेमेंट बहुत कम है वट डू यू थिंक हमारे हिंदुस्तान में चालीस पचास लाख लोग भी नहीं हैं जो एक डेढ़ लाख टैक्स दे सकते हो बट देर इज सम गैप इन दैट प्लस पॉइंट इज ऑल्सो इन दीज रिटर्न अबाउट फोर्टी submitted online that shows the use of technology now and 54 were there on the itr created offline software koi department ka hai so there is some gap in use of online because there are some issues also which we continue reading in the papers but the fact remains that the technology has come and it will stay in all areas but one fact we need to keep in mind that we should not allow this to overpower us it should only remain as a tool so that we can ease out or we can make things user friendly and the information system is better the moment we allow to allow this to be overpowering us us din fir wo ek movie bhi thi i think rajnikanth ki i don't remember the name robot thi ha to wo robot wali baat hi hai to fir wo kya karega we know we don't know and we have seen with technology and use of artificial intelligence and this is the i think way they have checked lot of loopholes yeah with linking of aadhar card and all that how much subsidies and uh, how much other loopholes they have plugged that's a good idea that is how they have to take care of things but this use of technology or introduction of technology i think all the lawyers professionals of our age or maybe little younger also they were never never in technology but younger generation yes it is in technology from now and now after covid i think class from class 1 only everybody every student is learning on the computers only or the mobiles so they have better knowledge of technology but it is all informal 
what i think is that once we need to use the technology this education or knowledge of information technology should not be informal only that you learn you are reading some subject maybe using technology in that let technology be a one of the subject in all spheres whichever profession it is so that somebody has some formal knowledge also of technology because everywhere we need to use it i think the bar council or the other education bodies need to examine that and second thing is that uh, the department also need to educate the professionals and the tax payers also wherever they are facing difficulty because the figures which were available online about their helpline and all that were not that encouraging if you see the tax base also the ssc's based or the filing of returns more than 6 crore there were few thousand i think the queries which were there on the helpline number so that also has to be robust maybe in courts when we introduced this technology we had opened e seva kendras in all courts up to the sub division level district level were there sub division also just to help the litigant and the lawyers during covid time also we had opened the vcs set up vc facilities in the bar room also so that the advocates are facilitated because many of them did not have the facility of vc so that should be the idea i think if the department does that probably technology will move faster and everybody will be able to use this <coughs> if we see our system i think we have four stakeholders in this taxation system one is the lawmakers then the executors are there these all government officers then the most important is the taxpayer and the bridge between the taxpayer and the tax collector is the professional so that coordination that effort because interpretation of law is with the assistance of the tax professional whatever they draft but drafting presently what we are seeing is little poor if you compare this with the laws which were there 30 40 50 years back we have old laws i think pre independence also some of them they were very well drafted well thought of now you see the problems in the newly drafted acts very fast because many issues are not taken care of one thing further regarding the tax professionals which need to be appreciated is a few years back they had introduced the system of awarding the tax payers online you get a certificate some bronze or some silver or something like that but they did forget that these certificates are achieved by the tax payer only with the advice of the tax professional but uh, one thing i was seeing in a some i think uh, 22 only may or june some circular of the income tax department where in the last paragraph paragraph they had accepted this that the tax professionals have also played a very good role these returns and all that but uh, they also need to be appreciated another problem which is being faced i think for the last 5 years is the tribunal has not been constituted that is the major area which is diverting litigation to the high courts and there also there are limitation for examination of facts and all that but this is creating problem so that is one thing which they have to take care i think very fast and another is amnesty scheme also they have brought normally in income tax we had seen this coming after a decade regular practice almost but in this this has come in 4 5 years only now one is that all right the state is interested in resolution of dispute because these figures also come that lakhs of crores are lying disputed because of the litigation pending in court as and in income tax they had withdrawn lot of cases because it was all in appeals filed by the department only and some of the issues well settled but in any case this is a positive part i think because they may have accepted that there are issues which need to be settled instead of prolonging the litigation the subjects which i have seen to is a one day conference yes well thought of because these are the fake invoices also and its relation with the income tax and works contracts had been the issue throughout i think under the sales tax law also then under the vat also chuhe ki billi ki daud hai chalti rahegi because some things many things are not settled ek mere ko 
I will conclude just by narrating you one joke only which I had in Delhi mein bhi sunaya tha maine Gandhi sahab ko yaad hoga they somebody had calculated if you give the donation you get a rebate of about one third out of that in income tax of 5000 aap denge to almost state ko mila usme wala donation mein gaye 3500 state only got 1500 1600 rupees as taxes the economic warrior jo hai usme 5000 ka consume karenge koi so i think 70 75% taxes hai वो तो डायरेक्ट है उससे पीछे कितना कुछ चलता है उसकी कितनी इंडस्ट्री चलती है वहाँ कहीं मैन्युफैक्चर भी हो रहा है कोई सप्लाई चेन भी है कोई और भी है ना वो डिफरेंट डिफरेंट लेवल के ऊपर वो जो जनरेट कर रहे हैं वो डिफरेंट है सो कहते हैं चैरिटी से ये बेटर है इससे ज़्यादा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन जो है वो स्टेट को होती है बट दिस इज़ वन पार्ट उसके साथ मेडिकल की जो वो साइड बाई साइड सपोर्ट करते हैं सारा हमारा सिस्टम and some of them said that covid ke time mein ki ji covid will not affect if you take this so there are many things for that so these were the issues i just wanted to discuss it was really good of federation mr gandhi mr goel that they had invited me had given me an opportunity to be at chandigarh and in this hall i think after a long time and uh, wish all the best to the conference thank you very much thank you sir i now request the distinguished guests on the dais to release the book called gst law manual by shri op hans advocate may i request mr sanjay aroda mr manoj mithal mr rakesh kautam and mr shiv kumar mithal to please come on the stage thank you sir the august gathering is informed that the same shall be made available to the registered delegates free of cost during lunch time at the registration desk <laughs> kindly get your i cards punched before collecting the same i am also pleased to announce that punjab and haryana high court bar association has associated with all india reporter to provide a special package to the members of the punjab and haryana high court bar association i would request honorable mr justice rajesh bindal to kindly unveil the same as per the package the members of the bar association will be able to use air mobile app on their mobile phone for merely rupees 900 for per, per annum also the online version will now be available to the members of the bar for merely rupees 9000 per year and in case they want to avail the combo offer of online as well as offline version the same shall be available for merely rupees 17700 for one year i am thankful to all india reporter for having associated with the bar association for providing this special offer to the bar
at this moment we would be failing in our duty if we don't pause in remembrance of Mr. Arvind Mehta, who was a member of AIFTP and also remained president of Panchkula Tax Bar. He passed away during COVID-19. He had been instrumental in organizing the conferences of AIFTP in Chandigarh in the past. We all miss his presence today. May I request Mr. Saurabh Goel to come on the dais as we offer our heartfelt tribute to the departed soul. I request Honorable Mr. Rajesh Bindal, Justice Rajesh Bindal, to please present a shawl on uh, on their behalf, to the entire on behalf of the entire tax fraternity. Mr. Saurabh Goel. Mrs. Monica Mehta is also there, the wife of the de uh, deceased mem advocate. I request her to accept the shawl. She would say a few words, ma'am, please. Good morning. This is for the first time when I am uh, I'm on the stage. First, I would love to pay tribute to my husband. This doesn't matter how many years you live together. This matter ki how you live together. And I think this is the best platform where I can say thanks to some of persons like Amit Sharma, Vineet Gandhi, Nikhil, and Vikas, uh, Tej Mohan, and uh, Sushil Ghai Bhaiya. They really helped me. Now I am doing my practice, and uh, I'm happy in that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very much. Unfortunately, we lost another member, Mr. Deepak Manas. May I request Mr. Sashil uh, Ghai to please accept a shawl on the behalf? I request Honorable Justice Bindal to please present a shawl. With this, it is time to conclude the inaugural session and I now request Mr. Sandeep Goel, Chairman Organizing Committee who has been instrumental in organizing today's conference to propose a formal vote of thanks. Good morning. My Lord Honorable Mr. Justice uh, Rajesh Pindal all the dignitaries on the dais. This conference was conceived under the guidance of All India Federation of Tax Practitioners, its president, Mr. D.K. Gandhi. And when it was conceived, I had something in mind that there is a huge fraternity in Punjab, Haryana and Chandigarh. When I talk about Chandigarh, I talk about Panchkula and Mahali as well. They are going to support me wholeheartedly, no questions asked. And here we stand today with the tremendous support given by all of them and this conference has turned out to be a successful one. Thank you everybody for that. I have been asked to give a formal vote of thanks, so I will read out something which I have written as the vote of thanks. So every morning has a new blessing, a new hope, a new beginning. But this morning has been an, an unparalleled one with a resounding thumping start. Amidst the ceremonials, amidst the colorful bouquets, and amidst the lighting notes of Saraswati Vandana, 
the esteemed presence of his lordship honorable mr justice rajesh bindal chief justice allahabad high court has somewhere unwaveringly convinced all of us that our endeavor to enhance our knowledge spread light and augment fellowship within the aisles and arcades of the legal fraternity stands endorsed and appreciated unequivocally without a doubt it is established that his lordship has always backed the legal fraternity whole heartedly in boosting their enthusiasm morale and will power he has never left any stone unturned to guide us and support us throughout words cannot express our deep appreciation for his lordship for making this conference reality a dream come true it is indeed a red letter day for us a feather in our cap an endeavor accomplished on this golden day of unprecedented world class symposium I on behalf of organizing team acknowledge the inspiration and encouragement provided at all levels by honorable judges present here khud karna badi baat hai dusron ko prerit karna usse bhi badi just as one lit candle can light another candle the highly acclaimed speakers mr n venkat raman dr grish huja who will be joining us very shortly mr kapil goel and mr vinith bhatia have taken up the daunting task to spread awareness and clarify the niceties of the subjects right from the day the idea of holding this conference was conceived to this day of grace and grandeur our team has gone an extra mile in removing all obstacles falling in the path of progress it is rightly said that talent wins the game but the team work wins the championships so here we are today with the team work i think we have achieved what we wanted i cannot conclude my vote of thanks without extending my gratitude to mr dk gandhi president of aftp and all other office bearers of aftp shri ss garewal we normally call him naba ji the president of punjab and haryana high court bar association shri vishal agarwal honorary secretary of the high court bar association and all the tax bar associations for steering the show ahead i also thank shri adarsh veer singh president of the chandigarh tax bar association shri atul gupta president of district tax bar association mohali and mr vinith gandhi district taxation bar association panchkula's president for being my pillars of strength support my rock and wind beneath my wings on lighter side they are all my partners in the crime i would fall in the my duty if i don't thank shri bk gupta president punjab tax bar association and shri arun yadav president of haryana tax bar association for synthesizing intelligence with diligence in making this a salient day last but not the least all my brothers and sisters delegates who have come all the way from far away corners of punjab and haryana and beyond that who have lent a mood of genuine fellowship cooperation coordination by dignified presence this is a moment of a beer hug to all of you an unforgettable moment a big thank you to you all <laughs> going further it is an opportunity for us to pay our gratitude to all those persons who have come present here now may i request mr ss naba president of punjab haryana high court bar association and shri vishal agarwal honorary secretary to present a memento to my lord honorable mr justice rajesh bindal I now request Shri B K Gupta, President of Punjab Tax Bar Association, and Shri Ram Narayan Yadav, President of Haryana Tax Bar Association, to please honour the contribution of our worthy President, Mr. Santosh Vinder Singh Nabha. Thank you, Mr. Nabha, for all the contribution you have made in holding this conference.
Now I'll request Mr. Adarsh Veer Singh, President of Chandigarh Tax Bar Association. Mr. Atul Gupta, President of Mohali Tax Bar Association. And Mr. Vineet Gandhi, President of Chandigarh uh, Panchkula Tax Bar Association. To kindly acknowledge the meticulous efforts of Shri Vishal Agarwal, Honorary Secretary of Punjab and Rana High Court Bar Association and materializing this event. Now it's, I'm turning to the president of our organization, Mr. D.K. Gandhi. He's the fountainhead of exceptionally bright ideas. We thank him for his persistent, consistent efforts in bringing forth what we all see today. I request my Lord Honorable Mr. Justice Bindal to please present a memento of our gratitude to Mr. D.K. Gandhi. <laughs> With this, we conclude our inaugural session. Please stand up for national anthem. Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravid Utta Kalabanga Vinde Himachal Yamuna Ganga Uchal Jaladhita Ranga Tab Shubh Nami Jage Tab Shubh Aashish Mange Dhaai Sab Jaya Gatha जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे भरत माता की वी कैन प्रोसीड फॉर टी नाउ वील बी असेंबलिंग हर इन नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन मिनट्स we have Mr. N. Venkat Raman, additional solicitor general of India with us. He, is, he has told me that we are going to storm this session. Thank you very much. <laughs>
in a relaxed atmosphere and had an opportunity to interact with each other. I request all the dignitaries and the uh, illustrious speakers and uh, the dais members to please embellish the dais so that we can start the session. Mr. Mr. Ranjit Sharma, Mr. Manoj Mittal, Mr. Sachin Sharma, Mr. Varinder Sharma, Mr. Sunish Bindlish, request everyone to be settled. Adar Abhar Abhinandan Adab. My heart fills with elation, exhilaration and exultation as I witness the glistening golden sun splashing its myriad rainbow colors across the azure blue yonder sky. Waves of energy are palpable, tangible. It is against this vibrating background against the scintillating ambience, against the multi-hued dimensions, against the magical appeal of the well-acclaimed dignitaries, the priceless jewels of the Indian legal crown, that I roll out the red carpet for all of them whose aura, charisma, and magnetism has added radiance and luster to this prestigious occasion. In a few hectic hours, they shall be drawing those nuances, making such cut-edge recommendations which will leave behind history and imprints on the sands of time. It is my utmost fortune, mashallah, as I share the same platform with the glittering star of the Indian legal firmament, Honorable Mr. Justice of Nish Chingan, Judge Punjab and Hiriana High Court. This truly, truly makes me tall than I am, and I'm sure you're gonna agree that I am tall this morning. His Lordship is greatly admired for his patient, detailed, and fair hearings. The quintessence of a man of ethics, epitome of conscientiousness, symbol of discernment. His Lordship's indefatigable, unflagging, unsurpassable professional journey evokes a few poetic lines in my mind. May I dedicate them to His Lordship. Is path ka uddesh nahi hai shrant bhavan mein tik paana. Kintu pahunchna us seema tak jiske aage raah nahi hai. It is with immense delight that I accord a winsome, a convivial, a rapturous welcome to Shri N. Venkat Raman, Senior Advocate and Additional Solicitor General of India. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to have amidst us that leading light whose journey in life is a heartwarming tale of patriotism, spirituality, toil, and last but not the least, a single-minded, impassioned, and zealous approach to his profession and legal assignments. The echo of his logical and undisputable arguments backed by his legal adroitness and comprehensive vision, pervades the sights and sounds of the Indian legal corridors. So suraj bhi kya chamkenge, to kya baat banegi? Aap yaha upastit hain, to lazmi hai is mauke ki shan badegi. I deem it an honor as I place on record my cheerful welcome to all the members on the dais, our rock, our pillars of continued support, who have tremendously succeeded in the teamwork to make our dream work. Aap, I, hamara maan hai, samman hai. And now as it is the tradition, we will welcome our revered guests by presenting little gifts of nature. May I call upon Mr. Amit Ghai and Mr. Anurag Sharma 
to present a token of respect and honor to Honorable Mr. Justice Avneer Chingan. Thank you, my Lord, for adding a panache to this event. Next, I request Mr. Jasjeet Singh Dhinsa and Mr. Gaurav Dumra from Jalalabad to present a token of affection to Mr. N. Venkatraman, Additional Solicitor General of India. Uh, it looks like the gentlemen are not around. So how can we forget your unflinching support for accepting our invitation and coming all the way for encouraging us. Now I request Mr. Ram Bansal from Chandigarh and Mr. Ankit Dhiman to please proceed towards the dais for welcoming Mr. Ranjit Sharma. May I request Mr. Rishabh to do the honors? Sir, we are so proud of you for holding the flags of AIFTP so high up. I would like to request Mr. Rishab Kapoor and Mr. Tejinder Joshi to please present this little green ornament to Mr. Manoj Mittal. Mr. Manoj Mittal is General Secretary of Haryana Tax Bar Association. Thank you, sir, for lending your shoulder so unconditionally. I would like to call upon Mr. Vaibhav Gupta and Mr. Umang Goyal for presenting a symbol of respect to Mr. Varinder Sharma. Mr. Sharma is the President of District Bar Association and Secretary of Punjab Tax Bar Association. I have very special respect for him because we belong to the same city of Ludhiana. La, uh, I request Mr. Vishal Sharma and Mr. Shantanu Gupta from Jammu to please welcome Mr. Sachin Sharma. Mr. Vishal Sharma and Mr. Shantanu Gupta. I don't see any one of them around. Uh, Mr. Ankit Dhiman, Mr. Dhinsa, please come on the dais. Thank you, sir. You command our absolute trust and faith. I request Mr. Deepak Bajaj, CA from Jalandhar, and Mr. Avneet Singh from Chandigarh to present this lovely plant to Mr. Sunish Bindlish. May I request Mr. Ankit Dhiman to please do the honors? Thank you, gentlemen, for doing the honors. This, promise, uh, this morning is promising, and this shall be one of the rare opportunities to gain from such dignitaries who have achieved resounding success. May we have the honor to request Mr. N. Venkatraman, Additional Solicitor General of India, to quench our thirst with his exceptional, phenomenal, immeasurable pool of expertise on top trends of GST.
ಶಾರದ ಶಾರದಾಂಬೋಜ ವದನಾ ವದನಾಂಬುಜ ಸರ್ವಥಾ ಸರ್ವಥಾ ಅಸ್ಮಕಂ ಸನ್ನಿಧಿ ಸನ್ನಿಧಿ ಕ್ರಿಯಾ ಆನರಬಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಅವನೀಶ್ ಗನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಡಾಯಸ್ ದಿ ಪಿತಾಮಹರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಂಜಾಬ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹರಿಯಾಣ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪಾರ್ ಕಾಶ್ಮೀರ ಲಾಲ್ ಗೋಯಲ್ ಹೂಮ್ ಐ ನೋ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಏಟ್ ಸಂದೀಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ವಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಅಂಜಲ್ ಸಂದೀಪ್ ಸೊ ಟಚ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಹಾಸ್ಪಿಟಾಲಿಟಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಈಚ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೂ ಐ ಶುಡ್ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಅಕ್ನಾಲೇಜ್ ದ ವೇ ವಿ ವೆರ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ ದ ವೇ ವಿ ವೆರ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಕೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಚೆರಿಷ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಫೆಡರೇಷನ್ GST is a dynamic growing law. <coughs> Practitioners have a lot to contribute to the <coughs> healthy growth of this law. Why we say as the healthy growth of this law is see if you see whether income tax or sales tax of those days 60 years back 70 years back the foundational jurisprudence had always evolved through high courts and the supreme court not that adjudicating authorities or uh, tribunals should not do it the perspective given by the high courts and supreme court on the basic foundation of law makes it makes it uh, very strong and endurable even though gst tribunal could not be could not get constituted for 5 years and it's now in the pipeline the initial foundational aspects of this law is now getting decided by high courts and the supreme court in a way we should welcome it for example the time we have spent in finally getting the verdict on mohit minerals was almost 4 and 1/2 weeks before the supreme court it took that much time VKC footwears was heard for almost 4 days Bharti Airtel for 2 and 1/2 days such elaborate hearings happen because judges are also equally very concerned and very cautious in their approach in laying down the law so we have a string of judgments coming from various high courts and supreme court on this branch of law and of course there will be divided views on on issues no doubt about it but definitely definitely the legal foundation appears to be going very strong this is as far as the judicial perspective of the gst law is concerned because i was asked to speak about the trends now as a foundational step what have we achieved through this law is something very important what we could not achieve for almost 70 years we have finally achieved it through an unanimous verdict both by the union states and also by the union territories in approving this law unanimously in their respective state houses and assemblies so remarkable see income tax from the origin was always a central tax whereas customs excise duty service tax they were all central levies whereas sales tax and auxiliary taxes to it were always with the states so prior to 2017 how did india manage its taxation system you had a uniform direct tax and an ununiform indirect tax this was the situation so for a global investor for somebody as a nation to go and promote and project yourself as an investment destination this divisive ununiform taxation which we called they called it always as the last mile taxation don't go to india last mile taxation is very confusing 25 states will have 25 rates on 25 different compliance methods 
So this was dissuading investments. It was it was giving a very blurred or a coloured picture about our taxation system. Remarkably, after 25 years of experiments and discussions and research, 1-7-2017 is certainly a triumphant day where union and states together agreed. This is a, this is a very, very important constitutional step which, which we have taken. And if we can replicate it in other fields, then India can certainly uh, be cherished as one of the greatest nations in a progressive way. The first progressive step we have taken is GST. What have we done? We have taken one common taxable element called supply, supply of goods and services, and allowing both the union and the states to tax on the same transaction. Unheard of. Virtually now one taxable event and two taxing partners. This is the foundation of GST. So this is one historic achievement. The second important limb, see as professionals, when you open the tool of, you need to have a tool to open the GST. It's, it's, a, it's a slightly different law, even though tax principles do apply there. But how to open the law and how to read it, it requires uh, some sort of an effort, an understanding. Otherwise, you put the wrong key and still break open the law, you will only breaking the law. You need to op open it with the right key because it had, it has several concepts embedded to it which has not been there earlier at all in tax regimes. Have you found, have you ever heard of time of supply, place of supply? These are all new concepts which has been embedded by the parliament in the IGST law, which is made applicable also for the CGST wherever required. So, the law has unfurled itself accommodating everybody's choices and we have arrived at a uniform rate. One. The second historic achievement of GST is in bringing forth a constitutional body called the GST council. The first unique constitutional body where the states and union representatives can sit together, decide and vote for a particular tax law provision or not. It has not happened. Even the interstate council doesn't have that much power as the GST constitutional body. So, this is again the second historic feat which we have achieved through this law, 279 year, harmonious taxation market. One nation, one market, one tax, all these theories emanate out of Article 279, sub clause 6. That's a commitment. And how does the voting pattern work? Neither union can exclude the states, nor states can exclude the union. Both have to be interlocked. So, one cannot take a decision behind the other's back. You need both partners to finally sail through your mo motion of bringing a notification or a rule or a provision or an amendment in the law. So this is the second historic uh, feature in this law. And the last one is the technology which has been employed. Transparency and technology has, see, before 2017, we just had 60 lakh registered SSEs. And today we have 1 crore 40 lakh registered SSEs. And today for the last 8 months we have been strike, our strike rate has been 1.5, above 1.5 lakh crore tax collection. Unheard of. So transparency and technology now is slowly weeding away the secondary market. Fake invoices are still there, no doubt about it. But from 40,000 crores it has come down drastically over a period of time. It will weed out at some point of time. So you need, if you want to pass ITC, you have to be in the system. So with these unique features, this law does certainly emanate a lot of interesting disputes. Very, very interesting disputes. Three or four I will just narrate in the next 20-25 minutes of my allotted time and then listen to, take questions if there is any. One is this famous Mohit Minerals case. 
see <coughs> what do we mean by composite supply. Let us remember GST law is a contract driven law. How your contract terms and agreements are, that will decide the basis on which how the law has to be applied to you. So, I am a recipient of a service, supply, you are the supplier. Now, I place an order for goods and I also request you to deliver the goods at my doorstep. So, what do you do? You produce the goods or you buy the goods and you arrange a transporter and then deliver it to me and I pay you for both the transportation and the goods. Between you and me, this is a composite supply because the transportation is inseparable from the supply of goods. But what do you do? You don't have your own transport. So you hire a transporter who is C. He will charge it on you, you will recharge it on me. He will charge 20,000 rupees on you, you will recharge 25,000 rupees on me. Let us assume it so. Now, neither in commerce nor in law can you say the contract between you and your transporter is a composite supply between you and us, you and me. That is one question which Mohit Mineral has decided it. Of course, in our very, very humble opinion, we, I mean, the government of India has a different view on that. It somehow says, your contract with the transporter is a composite contract between you and me also, which looks to be a long, large step. Because, your con we are, I am not privy to your contract between your transporter. Composite supply is always co the recipient. So, when I am not a party to your contract with your transporter, is it possible now to say that that contract will be also a composite contract between you and me? Because what was the challenge in Mohit Minerals was? See, Indian shipping lines, when they place orders with the Indian recipients, they have to charge GST and it was a cost to the transaction, of course they can take credit. But the same, in, when, when we talk about uh, cross-border uh, importation of goods, see when you cross-border importation, you can either engage a transport, a, ship, a shipping line in India or a shipping line elsewhere. Let us reverse the situation. Indian importer wants some goods in Bombay. He places an order with somebody in South Africa and that somebody sources the goods say from Germany and engages a, trans a shipper to ship the goods from Germany to Bombay airport, Bombay port. Now, the supplier to the Indian importer in Bombay is composite like local transport. But the contract between the South African supplier and his German partner, can you call that to be a composite supply between South African supplier and the Indian importer. The court has said that will also form part of composite supplies relying on a couple of English court judgments and therefore now government is contemplating because we want to bring a level playing field between the sh foreign shipping line and the Indian shipping line because we, if you say that the foreign shipping line need not pay GST then in terms of trade and business, the Indian shipping line will be on a highly disadvantageous position. So how to bring a level playing field is something which we are now contemplating and hopefully by budget there will be some, something for that to that effect is what we expect. At least we should attempt something in this lines is one important issue. Now the second important issue is this is a foundational principle which has evolved in VKC footsteps and has evolved in Mohit minerals and will keep evolving over a period of time. For the first time, we are bringing whether India is a federal, India, see our basic structure very clearly says we are a federal setup. So, whether it is a center centric federal setup, Bombay says it is center centric. Whether it is a state centric federal setup, 
Jindal Shipp says it is a state centric federal setup. So, two nine judges say one is center centric, another is state centric. Of course, the surrounding circumstances and the decision on facts revolved on a completely different basis. So, for the first time, Mohit Minerals has now evolved three important principles cooperative federalism, collaborative federalism and finally clinching on what is called the pooled sovereignty principle. See, today it is like a three legged horse. If one step union wants to take forward, state should also support by taking that step. If states wants to take one step forward, Union has to support by taking that one step forward. There cannot be a union state divide in this area of business. See, this is a very important philosophy which as professionals we should carry in our mind and as professionals when we argue in courts and for learned judges also. It is one area where we have now converged very well. Both the, see, we may have political differences because we are a big country. We will have political ideology, different governments and different points of time. All this is inevitable in a big setup, a big size, a nation of this bike, big size. But what has happened in five years of this experiment is very important. None of the political governance, irrespective of their irreconcilable differences, they have not bartered or staked on the trade and business interest of their respective states and the nation. That is a historic achievement. See, can any state today afford to say, I will tax car at 40%? Nobody will buy from that state. Simple. You will get isolated. So, this unification of, how did you arrive at, see, this uniform rate of taxation, income tax is easy, because parliament has to pass the legislation. Whereas a uniform taxation in GST, it is not possible. 31 states and territories have to approve it. And they will have to translate it in their law. And 99.9% .9 of GST council recommendations are unanimous. Even though the body comprises of political governance of different ideologies. It is historic. Why? Because... They understand we can fight politically, that's different, but we can't fight putting our trade and business at stake. The fourth value added ingredient to the GST council is this. So far, we have been taxing cross-border taxation, interstate taxation, origin based, <coughs> section 3, 4, 5 of the uh, Central Sales Tax Act. Kashmir Lal Goel G should have done sub thousand cases on three. Now, we have reversed the whole thing in GST. It is no longer origin based. It is destination based taxation. What do you mean by destination based taxation? Take for example a state like Sikkim, a state like Patna, uh, uh, Bihar. You may not have that much manufacturing facility as Karnataka has or Tamil Nadu has or Maharashtra has some other state has. So, if you have an origin based taxation, only 7 to 8 states actually contribute to the tax revenue of the country. Whereas if you have a destination based taxation, it is based on consumption. The tax is, so car is consumed across. Car is produced only in 7 states or 6 states or 5 states. But car is consumed by users all over the country. So, when you shift it to the destination based taxation, the tax spread goes to each state. Each state will charge 50 percent. So, car is taxed at 28 percent. 14 percent of, if, if five people buy it in, in, in Bihar and in Sikkim, 14 percent of the tax will go to Sikkim and Bihar and 14 percent to the union. So, this destination based taxation, now there is slow growth and progress because every state is now getting revenue in a distributed manner. Besides this, union gives you 41.5% from the central pool to the respective states. So together, together, now states which were not earning that much revenue in the past, 
is now growing well. So there is a spread. You don't have to necessarily have a manufacturing infrastructure. Necessarily have a huge infrastructure like service provision like bank by bank Karnataka. It's known for its service industry all over the world. The best of the back offices are still only in Bangalore. So you, know, you need not have to have anything as long as your people in your state are ready to consume all the services sitting in that state. That's good. Taxes will come to you. So these are the foundational promises and dimensions which has been seeded and embedded into this beautiful law. So Mohit Minerals, when we argued, I was representing the Union of India and I had to face 12 senior councils starting from Shihari Shalvi. <laughs> 12 senior councils on the other side. That's why it went on for four and a half weeks. One is to 12. But it's a challenging experience for every one of us. And uh, it's like, it's a very interesting outcome. Operation success, patient died. <laughs> We succeeded 9 out of the 10 points, but we finally lost on composite supply so that we couldn't tax the transaction ultimately. <laughs> but the law got laid very well. What is cross-border? What is extraterritorial? What is reverse charge? What is service recipient? Every important issue in GST got decided in that, in that uh, judgment. So well authored by the present Honorable Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice Chandrachur, along with Justice... Uh, uh, Suri Kant and Honorable Justice Vikram Nath. So, three bench. So, one of the important principles they have laid down is the concept of cooperative federalism and collaborative federalism or the pooled sovereignty. What do you mean by pooled sovereignty? As professionals, we should understand this. Very important. Pooling sovereignty is not surrendering sovereignty. That's the message which we should clearly know, understand and that's the philosophy of this GST law. Every state still retains the sovereign power to legislate. Legislative power is not taken away in any of, from any of the states. But the understanding under the GST council in 279A is when your finance minister represents your state, state into that body, he agrees to be part of the pooled body called GST council agreeing to go uniformly with the pooled sovereignty to, to take a decision in the larger interest of the picture. I hope I am clear. If you read 279A, you will derive, the derive, this is the derivative. And the judgment says so. So you step in, consider, plan and put your, and there you will see for hours together, people sit till 10, 30, 11, 12, that's what they say in the, in the GST council to discuss. Threadbare you discuss and enough committees are there to give you value add. State's participation is immense. The state officers give wonderful data bank from their respective states in terms of it's a, it's a highly intensive discussions. And finally a decision is taken. So once it is taken then you come back and then you legislate mirror See, today, any notification, any rule, any law, once it is recommended by the GST body, gets published simultaneously in the union and simultaneously by all the 31 states. It's a replica, mirror. You take any GST law, any state GST act, you will not see a difference. You take any say, GST law and compare it with CST law, don't, you will not find any difference. So this mirroring is one exercise which comes back. So, retaining your legislative power, but agreeing to be part of the common pool. And the formation of the idea gets only in the pool. Then you return back and then reflect it and then make it into a legislation. This is the beauty in which this GST body keeps functioning. So, this is the fourth, which is recognized now by Mohit Minerals. Of all these three important doctrines, on cooperative, collaborative and in pool sovereignty. Now the question that arose in that code, what is the power of recommendation? So first time, you will find the expression recommendation in 34 places in the constitution of India. But this is the only provision 279A, a recommendation is backed with the voting power. None of the recommendations anywhere in any part of the constitution is back to the voting power. 
GST is the only recommendatory body which has a voting power. And as I said, the voting will have to take the dependent on both the participation of union and states. One cannot exclude the other. It is interlocked. So, this body when it votes and recommends, the Supreme Court says secondary legislations are binding and plenary legislations though not binding is certainly persuasive in nature. So, this is one important issue which has progressed well in, in this taking shape. Two other I, I, by 1225 I need to close I understand. So, two more issues I will just deal with it and then leave it there. The recent judgment on hero cop. That was again an issue. Prior to GST, excise exemptions were granted in certain states, specific states, Northeast, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Kutch, which all went on an earthquake. Now, post 2017, excise duty is vanished. It has all now become GST. So the GST council said, we should continue this tax holiday of 10 years for the balance period but center will give a financial disbursement support of say 42, 50, 58 percent, balance 42 should come only from the states. That was challenged in the Supreme Court. It, it came from Sikkim Court, it came from the Delhi High Court and it came before the Honorable Supreme Court. Whether when union has promised to give central excise exemption, whether states should take the burden of 42 percent post 2017. The Honorable Supreme Court said, you should take part. It's your role and responsibility because you have become one partners. And you are now sharing the common revenue. It's no longer, see when we had excise duty, every 100 rupees was only going to the union. Today our entire 100 rupees do not go to the union. It's split 50-50 to the respective states. So when money is shared, the burden of incentive should also be shared. So Union of India is entitled to restrict its burden to 58%. States have to support for the balance 42%. These are all foundational uh, important uh, uh, points. Of course, the third one, which I will spend a few minutes, all of you might be, those who read Tax Sutra and other reports might be knowing, we have now uh, into a thick of a biggest legal battle in GST law or or for that matter, biggest tax litigation in the country, taxing online gaming to GST. What should be the rate of tax? We have now proposed a show cast notice for one entity in Karnataka to the tune of 21,000 crores for four years, just for one unit. And uh, there are about 33 units of that being getting investigated. The liability could be close to two, two and a half lakh crores in case it goes one way or the other. So this matter is being heard by the Karnataka High Court, therefore because matter is subjudice, I cannot say what this issue is in detail, I will broadly give you the picture. The question is, today this industry is paying GST only on the profits minus expenses, they are paying like income tax on the net income, which they call it as commission. Whereas the law under Rule 31A contemplates you to pay the tax on the gross value of the bet. So the dividing line is whether you conduct an online rummy, whether it is a game of skill or a game of chance. You have one judgment from your own high court on this. So we have been now this matter has been heard for about seven days in the Karnataka high court and the rejoinder is getting close on 17. Both what, what union has now trying to make out a case before the court is, irrespective of whether a game is a game of skill or a game of chance, three cards is a game of chance, cricket is a game of skill. Now the question is, when you bet on a three card or bet on the outcome of a cricket match, should you call it a game of skill or a game of chance? Betting, not playing. Whereas, one constitutional bench and three Supreme Court judgments, in our view, has very clearly say, betting on an outcome is nothing but a chance. And there are 14 high court judgments to the contrary. <laughs> 
so a judge is now pitted with the with the uh, option or a situation where you have supreme court judgment speaking one view and high court's judgment speaking a different view so it has to be reconciled when it's our view they fight it in a different way it's in it's it's all under litigation now but in so now the second question is if kohli plays cricket it's a game of skill if kohli bets on his own game if i hit 500 uh, 100 or 50 i'm going to get this and if he bets on himself whether he is betting on his skill or he is gambling it's interesting no it's a very fine nuanced legal principle so you have so what what, what do the the, uh, the assessee the registered assessee cases kohli is only one transaction cannot be disintegrated is one view which they are arguing whereas we are saying this is a dual capacity yaar when you play you play for your skill but when you bet then you are virtually trying to gamble on the outcome because can anybody predict including kohli how much is going to score well before hand in spite of the best of data you have so these are interesting formations happening now is growing law as i said plethora of case law 70 years of jurisprudence and more than 300 years of law all over the world from 16th century 17th century you have opinions and views and decisions on what is betting and gambling so when do you when you decide whether a game is a skill in terms of the quality of the play and when you can you stretch it when you bet on that game is the question so whether kohli bets or you bet sitting on the cricketing stadium or sitting in your house if you bet how does it matter Kohli betting is superior than your betting. Is it so in law? So these are the questions which are now under contemplation and uh, discussions. So we have, as I said, now most of which what we have been discussing now, you will not have a jurisprudence already laid down. That's the beauty of this GST law. Every day it is under. the recent one which we are now fighting is coming from in the ahma gujarat high court division bench the court is yet to hear us see now you you tend to get judgments we all know in tax law people there are all uh, pitamahar is there he will agree no estoppel in tax law it's a settled principle no res judicata in tax law settled principle no interference in the economic policy matters of taxation law even learner chief justice was saying in the morning now one high court decides see look at this this exemption looks to be burdensome why are you asking the assessees to pay and then take a refund so why don't you grant it as a exemption itself it virtually rewrites the notification why should the money be with treasury why not it be with the assessee after all he will be able to benefit much in terms of cash circulation pure economics and says the notification asking you to pay and take the money back is ultra virus it is unreasonable this venusberry's principle of proportionality all these theories have been put so now we are now arguing see this proportionality the doctrine of proportionality is like a dinosaur you should know when to apply and where to apply it if you start applying uh, this venusberry principles across every field of law there will be now nothing left out the dinosaur will kill everybody in the process so for an economic law there are stringent measures and standards and threshold filters for testing the law on its virus some starting from 1940 50 some several some 17 16 of which eight or nine are constitutional bench judgments itself we are now doing a huge research on the demonetization which is getting going to be heard next week so on that when we worked on it we found out several including 11 judges in rc cooper whether economic policies can be touched with our little finger so when this is the situation now to say no no you should have been more reasonable you should have granted the exemption this way you should not have granted the exemption that way completely is it not going against dilip kumar constitutional bench judgment so please understand 
churning is happening everywhere. Judges no longer are uh, very, very uh, 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 revenue centric. No. Courts are no longer revenue centric. They are very balanced. They are very neutral. They want to understand if revenue is wrong, revenue is wrong. Merely because revenue is wrong, we will not support you. Those eras are all changing. As, as therefore, if assessees fight a genuine case, you normally succeed. Irrespective of what the stakes are. These are all very assuring uh, periods for tax practitioners. You don't have to fear. See, there are two cases which the law actually, criminal law says uh, innocence should be presumed. Tax law says don't uh, take adverse uh, views on the assessee. When I was an assessee lawyer, I had miserably failed on both because they will always presume that he is a, cr he is a criminal and they will always presume he is an evader. But times have changed. Times have changed. So you are in for, especially young professionals, you are in for a very good time and this is a very promising branch of law and there is enough room and as professionals, please stay as professionals. There is no need to become a partner in the trade, partner in the crime. So many professionals are caught in this five years on fake invoice issues. It's very unfortunate. Practicing professionals along with assessees are booked and charged. So stay away, be a professional and never try to be a businessman in GST law. Don't manage your professional acumen and convert it into a business acumen. That's my request to all of you. It's a, such a deep pleasure to have presented uh, this 2025 minutes in presence of all of you. That was a captivating speech and I could uh, comprehend quite a bit of it. So I, I think I should also raise my callers up for that. So once again, a thunderous applause for the uh, walking encyclopedia in law, I must say. Sir, your copious notes have touched on highly intricate issues of GST and the nuances and subtleties proffered today in this world-class symposium will, I'm sure, go a long way in exploring future possibilities and opening up new vistas uh, for better interpretation and implementation of GST, I guess. Thank you once again for all the painstaking efforts in coming, meeting, and moving together. May I request our beacon of light, His Lordship Honorable Mr. Avneer Shingen, to please enunciate and elucidate the intricacies of the varied shades of law. Shiri N. Venkata Raman, additional solicitor general. And I can take liberty being a member of the Federation to say, my friends on the dice and off the dice, I'm taken by surprise. I was never told that I have to say something. I came here with a mental setup that I would be hearing the experts and upgrading my knowledge. But be that as it may, uh, since I'm seeing number of young faces, I can share that I am from that generation. I am not telling myself to be an old person, but I am from the generation who has seen three regimes of taxation, especially the indirect taxation. <clears throat> and as a youngster, started with the General Sales Tax Act, moved on to VAT, touched GST and then changed the side. <clears throat> but uh, Mr. Venkataraman, one thing was common when I joined the profession and till I changed the side, that we were still fighting with these invoice and fake invoices. When it was GST, it was that the first seller has not paid or the last dealer is not registered. Correct me if I am wrong, I am going by memory. Then came the VAT. The, again, the problem was bogus ITC. And something similar going in GST. Only thing is that the figures have increased. And... Uh, being a taxation practitioner, I can assure you that zeros don't matter so far as deciding the law is concerned. It may be relevant for the professional while charging the fee. <laughs> and that I must say with my past experience in the practice that these 
lot of law was laid by high court, supreme court, tribunals contributed. What's the effect if the first seller has not paid or if the ITC is bogus, the invoice is bogus, whether it's the seller's liability or it's the purchaser's liability. The cure actually is even under GST lies in implementation. It's not much of a legal proposition. We are trying to cure it by giving legal interpretations, but it's the implementing authorities. There's no good law or bad law. It's how it is implemented. The compliance and implementation of the GST is all IT derived. But it has to be implemented in a manner that you have to spot out the black sheep and the bad fishes from it. We have changed, as discussed earlier, from incident of taxation from sale or purchase to now supply. The issues to an extent in the taxation fields, I think, has an exception that they are generally pure legal issues, substantial questions of law. I won't be making any much comment upon the issue with regard to online taxation, but it reminds me, may not be a parallel can be drawn. An issue arose in the Australian taxation era, whether lottery is good or an actionable claim. There was no law on the issue, ultimately decided by Supreme Court, even if I am correct in Nirmala agencies. Sunrise and then Thereafter, and another similar issue was argued. I got a chance to contribute to it. Whether, what's the effect of VAT on catering services? So that's how the law evolves, how the GST will evolve. It's a big leap we can't deny for implementing GST in India. And we all heard of one nation, one taxation. And those stories that I visited such and such country, there was a GST or a VAT single taxation. I made certain purchases for my family. When I was at the airport, I was given the refund. That's what the background is that the GST will come and probably everything will change. And those perfectionists will still have a contention to say that this is not the purest form of GST we have implemented and correct to an extent. But at the same time, we can't forget that with the size of our nation, the diversity and the numbers we are dealing with, probably the perfectionist theory may not work. Tax collector's job is never admired or cherished. And I've used this phrase in one of the, my judgments and I will use it again. But he has to be very careful. He's like a beekeeper who collects the honey without destroying the hive. A single penny of tax to be collected legitimately should be collected and not a penny be delayed for a day of a businessman. That should be the basic principle because without trade and commerce, the taxation is of no use. And this is the bloodline for the country. The scenario has changed with GST. As you have said that uh, number of professionals have been booked under the GST for f invoices and uh, fake invoices and etc. That's why they say the lawyer doing other branches never know the taxation. The taxation lawyers know all the branches. But that's a adding a totally different aspect and I don't know whether a word tangent should be used. It's a disturbing, I will say with some utmost responsibility, it's a disturbing trend that the implementing authorities who have been specifically trained, having technical minds to implement the taxation laws, are passing the back end to the police. 
before a show cause notice is issued, before anything is done, an FIR is registered, meaning thereby you are shifting the onus to the persons who don't know that GST starts from G. And they start their investigation to some other directions. It's something which needs to be taken care of because it is ultimately, again, I will say at the cost of repetition, that we can't say GST is a good or bad law, but it is the implementing authorities will, which will show the end, at the end of the day's result that whether it was well implemented, achieved what it was for or not. And uh, this line I would be saying from on their behalf, Criticism, especially constructive criticism, should always be welcomed. But that's the only way to improve. <laughs> and uh, from the other side, I will like to say, I will modify two borrowed lines of someone with regard to criticism only, that hangame ki arzu nahi honi chahi, tasveer badalni chahi. That should be the basis of criticism and nobody can undermine the role to be played by the professionals which had been played and will be played by the taxation professionals. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you my lord for voicing the concerns of this conference. Uh, let us reaffirm that there is no good law and there is no bad law. It is how you implement it. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we need to convey our gratefulness to the venerable guests by presenting mementos. May I request Mr. Ranjit Sharma to please come on the stage and present a token of gratitude to Honorable Mr. Justice Avni Shingan. May I request Thank you so much for your generosity, my lord. Next, I request Mr. Manoj Mittal to kindly proceed towards the dais for extending our thankfulness to Mr. N. Venkatraman. Thank you, sir, for throwing light on the details of the subject. Thank you, gentlemen, for doing the honors. As this session draws to a close, we sincerely appreciate the contribution of all the gems adorning the dais, with whose input this platform will not remain just an ad hoc assemblage of bricks, stones, or masonry. It will become much more. It will become an edifice of inspiration, a prayer now for all the sparkling galaxy of delegates who want to soar higher and higher in the realms of success. Once again, a thank you from the core of my heart. Shukriya, dhanyavad, till we meet again. And now I would like to pass on the baton to Mr. Vineet, Sharma, uh, Mr. Vineet Gandhi. Please be seated.
गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन प्लीज बी सीटेड आदर्श सर अतुल सर प्लीज बाहर से जितने भी हमारे डेलीगेट आए उनको प्लीज बुला लें एक बार मे आई रिक्वेस्ट मैडम प्रेमलता बंसल श्री कपिल गोयल श्री शिवरतन श्री अमित गोयंका जी श्री जे पी धीमन श्री संजय अरोड़ा श्री ईशान मल्होत्रा तो प्लीज कम ऑन द डायस Please give a round of applause for the dignitaries. Very good afternoon to everyone. I hope uh, the previous session was very informative. Hope you like it. Uh, I welcome you all on the second technical session on section 148 with penalty. of section 270a and reassessment of the case due to fake invoicing and it's my honor to introduce to you all chairman of this session shrimati premlata bansal <laughs> ma'am is a senior advocate in supreme court and high court and a qualified chartered accountant and the speaker for today's session is shri kapil goel advocate at delhi high court who masters in income tax matters he came specially from delhi to share his valuable knowledge on the burning issue of section 148 and fake invoicing i guarantee you next one hour will be delightful and memorable for all of us i also welcome abhit goenka ji sanjay arora ji jp dimon ji ishan malhotra ji and our veteran lawyer shiv ratan ji so without wasting the time i just want amit sharma ji and ravinder sharma ji to please come on the dais and present a bouquet to prem lata ji May I now request uh, Navdeep Monga ji and Vikas Goel ji to please come and honour Shri Kapil Goel ji. Now may I please request Chetan Sood ji and Sushil Ghai ji to please come on the dais and give a bouquet to Shiv Ratan ji. I think they are not around. May I request Dinsha ji to please come. May I request Vinay Thakral ji and Ajay Kohli ji to please come on the dais and give a bouquet to Amit Gyanka ji.
May I request uh, CA Alok Krishan ji and Advocate Ajay Jagha ji to please come on the dais. Please present book it to Shri J.P. Diman ji. May I please request Paramjit Singh and Amit Ghai ji to please come on the dais and give bouquet to Sanjay Arora ji. May I please request uh, Shri Chandar Segal and Lavish Dhingra ji to please come on the stage and give a bouquet to Ishan Malhotra ji. So, without wasting the time, I would like to invite Shri Kapil Goelji to share his views on the topic. Please give a big hand. My dear, very learned professional colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Adorning the dais, I can say Ma'am Premlata Bansal is always like a motherly figure to me <coughs> and I have always learnt a lot of very positive and sir, I can remember sir, one of my first appearance in Delhi High Court when I was appearing before Justice Sikri, opposite me Ma'am was there. So there is a, another special bond Ma'am and I always feel enriched when I see the abundant blessings coming from your side to me and all other my good friends who are sitting here and each one of you although I have been coming to Chandigarh in the past also and you have all of you have been very kind enough to bless me in person I'm sorry and today I have special blessings of one of those personality which I really had very high regard Honorable Shri Penkatraman Saab, what I say sir about you, when I read your arguments, when I read the way you address the court, I believe any one of me like person can even take one percent of you. I will feel satiated and I feel blessed that you are here in this gathering. Today the duty which is and the person who has brought me here, my Goel Bhai, Sandeep Bhai. My real younger brother's name is also Sandeep and that sense my Mota Bhai's name I can say. Mota Bhai you understand, Sandeep Goel. So, so, today the duty which is given to me is sir to speak on section 148 and 270A and the issues relating to fake invoicing. When Sandeep Bhai gave me this topic, I thought that he is talking about ma'am GST part. So he clarified, no, I have to speak on income tax only. As far as 
my humble understanding and limited understanding goes sir and little understanding i believe that as far as this subject is concerned sir income tax law and this two topics which is uh, subject which is given to me about reassessment and penalty one thing is very clear that the legislature wants to really make the things simple there is no doubt about it sir there is no cent law of doubt but there is another thing which creates some sort of uh, what do you say sir anxiety or uh, uncertainty in the mind of all the taxpayers i can say in humble sense sir due to very very uh, discriminatory type of sir i'm sorry type of sometimes uh, stands taken among successes by the revenue department maybe in some cases they are absolutely okay but in majority of the cases sir our experience has been the cases which has come to our chambers we find that one assessing officer ma'am is dropping the proceedings on the same set of cases and this is a classical case sir where section 148 two assessment years were reopened let us say year assessment year 15 16 and assessment year 16 17 ma'am and for assessment year 15 16, 16 sir uh, approval lena tha chief commissioner saab se ma'am aur 16 17 assessment year ke liye sir approval lena tha commissioner saab se and the same assessees same facts one case is dropped and other is not dropped and the case is reaches to the high court in the writ jurisdiction sir which is not dropped obviously the question which is begging answer loom laz here is sir ki what is the fault of that assessee that and what is this left hand do not know what right hand is doing and there are hundreds of cases where i again say at the cost of repetition 148 capital a has been one of the epochal and a mind blowing provision there there could not have been a better way to uh, resurrect sir gk and drive shaft into the law but the way it is implemented sir and i was saying to asg sir also the experience which we are carrying is absolutely sir not very good because majority of the cases one senior uh, professional was here he gave me a query also mr mittal and the point which again comes here, here or is sir that 148 capital a was for the purpose that only deserving cases should go to next stage of 148 stage but is it really happening the question is this that are we doing 148 in that manner with application of mind that kind of that 148 a is done in only in those cases and the case is treated as fit case ma'am in only those cases where it is really fit or or in another sense if i am done on a 148a when i see sir department taking this argument in the high court that sir is very difficult argument peculiar ma'am argument and ma'am must be knowing because she is our senior advocate appearing in delhi high court i also have chance to argue there and there ma'am we have seen department taking a stand sir that 148 capital a proceedings are summary proceedings and so assessee files detailed documents then assessing officer should not be burdened to see all those documents because he has limited time and this is 148 a proceedings are summary in nature and only they can be checked in 148 i am sorry i ask a question to myself whether this was the intent of 148a and this excuse and reuse can be taken is that detailed documents cannot be seen at at 148a stage and they can only be looked at 148 stage and 148 is a positive hona hi hai sir wo positive test aur covid negative test aisa kuch lag raha hai i'm sorry and sir I, i have seen those orders where they have written ki sir you may have a very good case bhatia ji and in the next stage they say you you satisfy the, uh, the revenue authorities in the next stage when assessment will be done but 148 a will be done no? is it not going against the legislative edict is it not going against the legislative mandate and legislative intent in my humble opinion yes it is going against the legislative intent and varieties of cases are there where 148 capital a has been done in those cases where the facts absolutely did not deserve it was totally a close and shut case sir or or in other sense it is a non starter and as 
as I have read as a student, learned as a student of law, sir, that definitely 148 is a power, remedial power. But is it that remedial power that it should be used in every case wherever some financial transaction is done and the amount is high? We have seen a, a, a hundreds of cases, ma'am, where the excuse given in the 148 is this, this taxpayer has purchased this property or has deposited this much amount in the bank account to verify it, we are doing 148A. And that not in 148 capital A also, my friends will be aware there are four different stages. So clause A, Clause B, Clause C, Clause D. There are 148 a maybe char stages. Hai. Clause A ke andar prior inquiry ki baat ki hai, Clause B mein show cause notice ki baat ki hai, Clause C mein reply ki baat ki hai, Clause D mein order ki baat ki hai. I am, I am no authority, but I can say with all humility, sir, what is happening here, Sandeep bhai? This, sir, ye jo chronology hai na, A mein inquiry prior, B mein show cause, aur C mein reply, aur D mein order. जो 148 के ऐतिहासिक प्रोविजन में लिखी हुई मुझे ऐसा लगता है बड़ी विनम्रता से मैं कह रहा हूं कि ये अपसाइड डाउन हो गया रोल कि इंक्वायरी करने के लिए मैडम 148 डी हो रहा है एंड आई हैव सपोर्ट ऑफ वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वर्थ रीडिंग ऑर्डर बाय कलकत्ता हाई कोर्ट ऑन दिस पॉइंट बाय द पेन ऑफ जस्टिस टी एस सिवंगनम वेयर मैम द रेवेन्यू वॉज आस्किंग इन वन फोर्टी डी ऑर्डर एंड बी शो कॉज नोटिस that you give us this uh, details and information. The court asked whether, why not you did 148 capital A clause A inquiry? Why, why you straightway jump to B and D stage? Department had no answer, sir. And the court quashed the 148 AD order only on the premise that 148 capital A clause A inquiry is not done and uh, department has straightway jumped to 148 A B stage and D stage. There is a question that if you are asking, still inquisitorial, you are inquisitive, can you be within, go with the inquisitive mind in 148AD stage, ma'am? And that is happening in lot of orders. They are going in 148AD orders sir, with inquisitorial sense. They are not saying ki that we have some prima facie satisfaction that income has escaped assessment. They say we will still ferret out the things. So, in my understanding, as we have seen, First time Supreme Court has used, sir, in Malab, one of the only occasion or rare occasion where the Supreme Court has used Article 142 in the tax jurisprudence. Where, sir, was there in Ashish Agrawal's case. It has both the khatta meters taste. 444 ITR, page number 1, by the pen of Justice Amar Shah. Sir, assisted the Honorable Supreme Court from the department side. And that was, that is one epochal order where the Supreme Court happens to use Article 142 to save various 90,000 or 9,000, 90, I say, 90,000 notices issued by the Income Tax Department. So, after that, there has been two types of litigation in MAM 148. One, those cases which are converted cases and which are direct cases. And the dilemma and enigma which comes in every person's mind is that whether we should go in the writ petition against the D order, or whether we should uh, go and face the assessment. Uh, Ma'am, I leave it at you to conclude it. But my humble submission is this, that it only in those cases you should go in rate, where the facts are very, 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 very strong. Because it is our experience, the writ courts, I have at least learned from Delhi High Court Justice Manmohan's court, that ideal cases should go to writ petition, that's right point. And secondly, the purpose of 148A is definitely to weed out and ma'am to iron out those cases which are not deserving cases. Criteria which was earlier there Sandeep in the law has been reason to believe. But now we have a different criteria information suggesting escapement of income. And now this, this phrase itself, catch phrase information suggesting escapement of income. And the caterpillar and catalyst is suggest, which is between, which is uh, after information and before uh, in, as escapement of income. And that is defined, information suggesting escapement of income is defined in explanation 1 to section 148, which is any information uploaded on the system by the department. Sir, there also we are facing a lot of issues that if any information comes to the income tax department, any, any information, any raw information, any tenuous information, 
whether it can be the starting point of 148 day or not in my humble opinion answer should be no information should be at least that actionable information which could be the basis to say that yes prima facie some income has escaped assessment prima facie but this is this law has to evolve definitely it is in evolution stage we have not too many judgments which have interpreted the word suggest between the information and an escapement of income one decision which my learned audience can note which is worth reading which has just come very recent order from honorable madras high court 50 60 petitions were there madam under 140 ed orders sir this is the order of madras high court by dr anita sumant honorable dr anita justice anita sumant the key name of the case is dr matthew cherian the date of the order is 1st september 2022 dr matthew cherian 1st september 2022 her lordship has taken lot of pain sir to uh, to uh, to go in a very layman style what is the word information what is the word suggest and what is what is expected in the new law as just opposed to my previous law when it they when they say that there is information which is suggesting escapement of income what is required by the by, by the ao to be done there they say ki aisa information to kuch hona hi hoga sir jisse kuch na kuch income escaping assessment ke gun nikal rahe hain koi bhi raw information ke base pe nahi kar sakte she has uh, made the order very good by elaborating her reasoning ki why the word suggest is very critical word here sir and she has quashed the uh, at least these charges written hongi ma'am isme isi cases mein and they were cases of all doctors and there was some issue ki sir ye professional hai ya ye salaried mein assess hona chahiye there was that old controversy ki they were doctor engaged with some hospitals ki inki income kis side mein assessable hai so the judge also said ki if department is using 148 ad against the settled judicial principles then red court can interfere and should interfere ऑलो इस पे भी अभी सर अभी आर्ग्यूमेंट्स चल ही रहे हैं बहुत सारा हाईकोर्ट तो ये भी कह रहा है जैसे मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट का भी जजमेंट एक एक सितंबर का ही ऑर्डर है वो भी सर मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट हैज टेकन ए व्यू दैट नो रिट शुड बी एंटरटेन अगेंस्ट वन फोर्टी एट ईडी ऑर्डर बिकॉज मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट बिलीव ऑनरेबल मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट दैट दिस इज ए प्री दिस इज ए टेंटेरी प्री लेमिनरी ऑर्डर इंटरलॉक्टरी ऑर्डर एंड नो रिट शुड बी एडमिसिबल दिस इज ऑल्सो वन स्कूल ऑफ थॉट कमिंग फ्रॉम एटलीस्ट माई नॉलेज सेज कि मध्य मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट एंड तेलंगाना हाईकोर्ट अगेन विद ऑल ह्यूमिलिटी ऑल दो आई एम नो अथॉरिटी टू से बट दिस इज डेफिनेटली ए पॉइंट विच नीड्स फर्दर पॉन्डरिंग की सर वेदर ऑर्डर पास अंडर सेक्शन वन फोर्टी एट ए क्लॉज डी इज एन इंटरलॉक्टरी ऑर्डर और इट डिटरमाइंस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइट एंड लाइबिलिटीज ऑफ द टैक्स पेयर एक सौ अड़तालीस एक डी के ऑर्डर से मुझे तो सर मेरा हम्बल ओपिनियन है कि उसमें तो बहुत सारे अधिकार और लाइबिलिटीज एस एससी के सुनिश्चित हो जाते हैं मुझे एक सौ अड़तालीस रिटर्न भरने पड़ेगी असेसिंग ऑफिसर के सामने जाकर अपना करने निर्धारण कराना पड़ेगा और अपने ये खुद मेरे पे ऑनस भी आ जाएगा कि मैं साबित करूं कि इनकम स्केपिंग असेसमेंट नहीं है तो मैंने जस्टिस चंद्रचूड़ साहब का ऑनरेबल जस्टिस चंद्रचूड़ साहब के सर दो ऑर्डर आई फाउंड फ्रॉम द लेटेस्ट ऑर्डर विच यू ऑल कैन नोट वेयर दिस इश्यू की हाउ एंड वेन यू से एन ऑर्डर इज एन इंटरलॉक्टरी ऑर्डर दिस इज नो लॉन्ग दिस शुड बी ए नो लॉन्गर इन एंड देयर दे हैव सेड इन दिस ऑर्डर ऑफ where i have noted just a minute this is the name of the case is manjeet singh sodha versus custodian this is the order by justice chandrachud honorable supreme court order sir latest order of september and october 2022 and ma'am the test which is given by the supreme court justice chandrachud sahab is ki that whether that order is determining the important rights and liabilities of the assessee in my humble opinion 148d order is definitely having determination on the assessee's important rights and liabilities in so far as my liability to file return in so far as my liability to face the tax assessment in so far as my owners to say that there is no income escaping assessment so the view of madhya pradesh high court and telangana high court that these these are tentative orders or interlocutory orders or preliminary orders in my respectful submission is not correct and requires reconsideration another part which is sir i say ma'am now lot of cases where 140 ed order was passed jinme bahut sare cases mein 148 ed ho gaya sir aur abhi 148 ka assessment hona hai ek badi vichitra cheez sir samne aayi badi peculiar cheez ki wah department ke sare officers zyada tar officers ka opinion ye hai ki 148 ed agar ek bar ho gaya sir aur usme department has treated my case as a fit case for 148 
दे से हु विल नॉट हैव एनी रूल री लुक एट दैट पॉइंट की जो अगर If I can say, ma'am, let us say 148 ADD is passed on some ground that my income has escaped assessment because I have deposited cash in my bank account. And supposingly, I satisfy now in the assessment also that there is no cash, uh, there is no escapement of income qua that point. Whether he can go on to other issues or not, or whether he can give me general questionnaire which they are giving, ma'am. In all the cases, they are giving general questionnaire as if 148 ADD ke baad to wo chiz khatam ho gaya. I repeat my question. It's a very serious question. I have to wrote right to so many points sir to understand it. Ki what is that going? One forty eight eighty ka order was assessed sir, and usme department bolta hai ki sab income escaping assessment hai sir. Aur abhi mere ko one forty eight ma'am chalu ho gaya mere assessment. Is not the assessee allowed to say that one forty eight eighty itself is wrong, and so proceeding should be dropped? Or just because one forty eight eighty order is passed, that stage is gone and assessee is right to challenge one forty eight eighty in the assessment goes away? Sir, I recall one one doctrine which we read when we were students: subletto fundamento carit opus. That is when foundation fails, superstructure falls. There is a decision of the Supreme Court, a locus classicus, Devendra Singh Bhullar versus State of Punjab. Devendra Singh Bhullar versus State of Punjab, a leading citation, 2011, 14 SCC 770. 2011, 14 SCC 770. The lordships have held if initial action is wrong, then all subsequent actions goes. So I I don't know, sir. How I ask a question to myself again? The foundational facts are wrong in 148 AD, and I'm I can prove it in the 148 trial and adjudication. Can they say no? We will still go on to the general issues and uh, general questionnaire. In the guard that it is a de novo assessment. I'm sorry. In my respectful submission, it is not, ma'am, de novo assessment. Section 147 explanation they might go that the the law permits them to go into the other issues also, but that is in a very limited circumstance. That explanation is not like this. That makes 148 as a de novo and a fresh assessment. It is it is it has to be quay that 148 AD order first. If foundation of 148 AD goes, ma'am, in my respectful submission, then entire 148. And nobody can say. Somebody asked me, sir, a senior chartered accountant, that Mr. Goel 148 AD ka order to approval se pass hua hai her authority ke. चीफ कमिश्नर साहब के कमिश्नर साहब के उसको कौन 148 के ऑर्डर में छोड़ेगा आई एम सॉरी दिस इज नॉट द वे आई एन लुक एट इट आई बिलीव 148 फोर्टी डी का ऑर्डर मैडम अगर डिपार्टमेंट खुद बोलता है कई जगह रिट में टेंटेटिव है तो व्हाट कैन प्रोहिबिट द सेसी टू शो दैट 148 फोर्टी एट डी ऑर्डर हैज नो लेक्स एंड लीगल लेक्स टू स्टैंड आई बिलीव सर आई कैन इवन चैलेंज इन द आई आई टी एटी एन सी आई टी पी विल गो वन डी ऑर्डर If it is passed on wrong facts, if it has having no legal foundation and proper foundation, then it can be agitated and repudiated in the assessment also. Definitely, these are the points which will be further evolved in that in the course of the litigation which we are having, sir. One thing, another practical thing, ma'am, which I found in at least my chamber, me, me, I have three, four litigations, sir, such as this, where permanent account number became the basis of one forty eight. And I will make my point good. Assessee ne kisi zamane mein ek pen number le liya sir, galti se. Aur usko baad mein samajh lagi madam sudhai hua, jaise bodh hua ki nahi, maine galat kiya hai. I should not have two pen numbers. This is wrong. Usne apne aap pen number surrender bhi kar diya sir, aur deactivate bhi kara liya. Jin adhikari se ke ko jinke pas assess hote hain, unko letter likh diya ki maine pen surrender kar raha hu. Mere pas do pen the, aap isko deactivate kar dijiye aur vibhag ne assessee ko chitti likh di, haan aapka ye pen number. डीएक्टिवेट हो गया और ये चार पांच साल पहले हो चुका मैम और आज उसी पेन नंबर के ऊपर डी का ऑर्डर एस्केपमेंट का पंद्रह बीस करोड़ का पास हो जाता है सब कुछ उसी पेन नंबर पे जो सरेंडर और डीएक्टिवेटेड है डेफिनेटली आई गॉट द रिलीफ सर इस केस पे मुझे जस्टिस मनमोहन साहब ने दिल्ली हाईकोर्ट ने रिलीफ दे दिया हालांकि सेटिसाइड किया उन्होंने केस को बट उन्होंने कहा यस इट्स रॉन्ग अल्टीमेटली सर एस के पास जो करेक्ट पेन था उस पर वो सारा कंप्लाइंस कर रहा था देर वॉज नो फैक्चुअल एस्केपमेंट सर डिपार्टमेंट के पास जब एस गया सर Can you imagine what they say? They say कि नहीं भैया हमारे यहां तो wrong pen number अभी भी है हम इसको migrate ऐसा नहीं कर सकते वो सी ने बोला सर कि मैं तो return भर रहा हूं साहब और मेरा सब कुछ return में दिखाया हुआ और एक correct pen number है आप मेरे से दो बार tax सुना लेंगे वो कह रहे नथिंग डूइंग हमारा चीफ कमिश्नर साहब ने बोला केस खोल दो फिर ऐसा होगा तो मैम फिर देन आई कैन आई एम नो वर्ड टू से सो इफ इट इज आई एम सॉरी विद ऑल द रिस्पेक्ट और ये और ये सब बातें जब हमें पता चलती हैं कि सर जब हम ऑर्डर शीट मांगने डिपार्टमेंट के पास 
सर इसके अंदर जब हमने डिपार्टमेंट से ऑर्डर शीट मांगा इन प्रोसीडिंग का सर उन्होंने हमारे को ऑर्डर शीट मैडम पहले देने से मना कर दिया कि हम प्रोसीडिंग शीट नहीं देंगे कि 148 फोर्टी एट का प्रोसीडिंग शीट कहा लिखा है देना लिखा है बट आई आई बिलीव वी हैव बीन टॉट फ्रॉम क्लास वन नर्सरी कि दैट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ फेयरनेस एंड ट्रांसपेरेंसी ऑर्डर शीट ऑफ वन फोर्टी एट आर नॉट कॉन्फिडेंशियल डॉक्यूमेंट एंड आई एम नॉट वेस्टिंग योर टाइम यू कैन नोट दिस सजेशन इफ यू लाइक in all those cases where 148a you find it is done in wrong circumstances the assessee is right to get the copy of the order sheet of 148a must be done and 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 one more thing here the the recommendation of the ao and the approval of the cit should also be seen in what manner they have done the proceedings i was telling sir when sir we were, i came with him only one classical case That's, that came out from order sheet only sir agar wo mujhe order sheet nahi milta to mujhe pata hi nahi chalta ki aisa bhi hua hai ya ho sakta hai ki jahan assessing officer madam three times wrote in the order sheet that it is not a fit case and commissioner sahab believe ki no it is a fit case you take the case for 148 it is another legal question ki whether this can be legally valid or not but my point is this ki how the proceedings have been conducted madam has to be at least fairly and transparently told to the taxpayer because you can't say that it is matter of internal com communication it is internal document assessee has no right on these documents i'm sorry sir will appreciate sir justice chandrachud written an epocal order and this order is my favorite order sir and and this order he has applied i believe latestly also in a sealed cover matter this is an order by justice chandrachud in the case of t tikanu versus securities exchange board of india t tikanu ma'am worth on reading it's a magnum opus t tikanu versus securities exchange board of india Is that what is the relevance of principle of fairness and transparency when it comes to sharing of the some kind of information? And it applies, in my humble opinion, to income tax also and 148A also. And sir, some South High Courts. I read the order of Justice C. Parvin Kumar of Andhra Pradesh High Court, where he has applied his lordship this T T Kanu order in some of the matters to quash the proceedings in the tax laws. So this and this T T Kanu order. Uh, if supreme court itself sir four five orders they have uh, reapplied so it simply says ki that whatever is relevant must be given to the affected person so that he can revert it if he so wants so and other i will i should always admit as my good seniors always say me ki that mr goel while while criticizing 148a why not you appreciate that you are get, getting so much of work from 148 i always appreciate it but there is a academic hurt ma'am always going on that when we see from academic sense our that thing come from our mind howsoever we want to stop it that it is right or and when we say it is right or wrong we, we see sir it is as a constitution student it, whether it is as per principles of those article 14 and article 265 and whether or not they are arbitrary and in principle with law sir everything cannot be under 148 everything cannot be income escaping assessment every financial transaction contra transaction bank transactions cannot be 148 and at, and even today it is not roving inquiry and fishing inquiry nobody can say sir at least it is reopening my settled assessment and those words of justice hr khanna i always uh, my seniors have told me sir that justice uh, khanna's order in parshuram potter is 106 itr page 1 last paragraph there should be some point of finality in all the proceedings i wish that happens in 148 those chaste words of justice hr khanna his lordships in parshuram potteries that epocal order 106 itr page 1 last paragraph there must be some point of finality in all the proceedings and stale issues must not be reopened beyond a point in time that dictum in my humble opinion still holds good ma'am so 148 a when disturbing the finality of a concluded assessment so it should be seen in that light sir it should not be seen in that light as if what is the problem to the taxpayer to have the assessment for that 143 2 is there 148 is not security assessment in my humble understanding 148 and 143 2 are not analogous and parametria so as far as 148 capital a is concerned sir as i have already told some high courts have sir dismiss the writs in limine some high courts have admitted it some high courts are going case to case our delhi high court is going on case to case basis ki in deserving cases they are admitting the writ and in not they are not following they are not allowing so call has to be taken by the assessee sir and in the converted cases sir that post ashish agrawal there is a special problem now 
due to that मतलब sir due respect to CBDT and that instruction. That assessment year 1314, assessment year 1415, and assessment year 1516 are time barred or not into the. According to sir, it is. Sir, I would have gone by your sage advice, but I am doubtful my other friends will go like that because, because humbly sir, humbly put because. Now what has happened? Although our Delhi High Court has confirmed the position that Interstone Limited case and Salil Gulati's case, ki that these are not time barred. But Rajasthan High Court Justice M M Shrivastava has passed a very detailed order in Geeta Rani Agarwal. That is 11th October 2022, where Rajasthan High Court has taken such stand and a very detailed interim order of 10 pages. It's interim order, but it's very detailed order after Ashish Agarwal. They say that what is time barred under 149 1B first proviso cannot be reincarnated due to this. Any other sir, sir is saying ki that it is not, it is ti not time barred. But yes, definitely, sir, 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 sir. For me, you are saying it is very important, sir. <laughs> sir. No, but Bhatia ji, definitely that is for the court only. That when this co already, you know, I in my humble opinion, Justice Dheera Singh Thakur in Bombay High Court has admitted 1,000 writ petitions, giving an block stay, sir. In all these cases, I am saying on record. Just. Punjab has put the scale of Sandeep Bhai in the Bombay High Court, sir, Justice Dheera Singh Thakur's court. I'm sorry, I'm in one India point, sir. See, ma'am, the point is this, ki there the Bombay High Court has take, uh, has preliminary also taken the point ki that this assessment year 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, subject to what sir is saying, ki that they are time barred and they have granted stays, although the final hearing, sir, is yet to take place. There is a another, and uh, with due all humility at my command, sir, I would back to differ from, sir, that in my plain reading uh, as per the legislative intent behind this new law 149.1b, sir, there was no where it was in the mind that these proceedings, madam, has to be saved. As Justice Akhil Qureshi, sir, wrote one decision in Rajasthan High Court, sir, I am speaking from there, para 37, para 38 of Sudesh Tanejas. He has written, and my statement is supported by Sudesh, Sudesh Taneja, ma'am, Rajasthan High Court decision of Justice Akhil Qureshi. Where the interpretation given to 149.1b first proviso uh, tallies with the assessee's opinion and submission that this AY 13, 14, 14, 15, and even 15, 16 are time barred. But yes, as Bhatia Sahib has rightly said, and my good other good friend Sandeep Bhai, ki that this is a matter now have to be resolved. Because again, this is a second round of litigation, and various courts are already constitutional courts are of seized of it. Isi me ek aur sir point hai, aap sab ne dekha bhi hoga, assessment year 16, 17 ka aur assessment year 17, 18 ka sir. Sir, isme bhi ek catch hai sir. डिपार्टमेंट बोलता है 16 सत्रह का केस हम आज रिओपन करेंगे मैम तीन साल के बाद तो अप्रूवल लेंगे कमिश्नर का हाउ इज इट हैपनिंग हाउ असेसमेंट इयर 16 17 रिओपन टुडे इन 2022 इट इज विद इन थ्री इयर्स मे आई रिकॉल ऑल ऑफ यू कि अभी नया का लॉ में क्या लिखा है सर कि तीन साल के अंदर केस रिओपन होगा तो अप्रूवल चाहिए सी का और तीन साल के बाद मैम चीफ कमिश्नर का तो आज मेरा आप नए लॉ में जब नोटिस दे रहे हैं और असेसमेंट इयर इन्वॉल्व सोलह सत्रह है आज का मतलब जुलाई टू में तो इट इज इनवेरियबली आफ्टर थ्री ईयर्स and approval is not taken from chief commissioner approval is taken from commissioner so various high courts in my understanding especially bombay high court and allahabad high court have taken uh, again very serious note of this point ki that whether tola and all these things can extend the change the status of the authority also or they can alter who is the competent authority under 151 section 151 sir the competent authority to give the approval after three years. In my respectful submission, it should be chief commissioner. But yes, this issue is also very much hotly debated, contested, very widely argued. And as those are GM financial wala case, can the sir is Bombay High Court wala assessment year 15, 16 case. One SLP notice, sir. Yes, you are right. GM financials case, sir. That Justice K R Shriram in Bombay High Court wrote. But again, I have my own under, humble understanding, ma'am. That 151 is very plain. If within three years reopening is made, the approving authority has to be CIT, and after three years, the approving authority has to be Chief Commissioner, and it has to be plainly applied. It cannot be mixed and coalesced with to line it in my humble submission. So I believe I have covered 148 part. Finally, there are two judgments or two important landmark orders which have been favoring us, sir, and that is and. They have become very favorite with the taxpayers, ma'am. There is Allahabad High Court decision where 50 lakh cost was justification one he imposed 
in the case of SR cold storage. That citation is 448 ITR, page number 37. 448 ITR, panna number 37. The issue there was the reopening made on non-existing and wrong facts. An assessment was reopened, sir, saying SSC ka is bank mein itna paisa jama hua hai. Baad mein, madam, department ne maan liya ki wo paisa us bank mein SSC ka account bhi nahi hai aur utna paisa jama bhi nahi hua. Aur uska assessment bhi ho gaya, Gul sahab, sir, uska addition bhi kar diya. To wo assessment honne ke baad rit mein gaya. Pahle to department ka objection ya hai ki sahab, ye assessment ke baad rit mein kiwa hai, to alternate remedy mein jaye. तो जज साहब ने डिपार्टमेंट से ही पूछा कि साहब आपको इस फैक्ट्स पे डिस्प्यूट है क्या कि ये जो बोल रहे हैं कि ये आपका जो रीओपनिंग का फैक्ट्स था वो सब फाउंडेशनल फैक्ट्स ही गलत था नॉन रॉन्ग फैक्ट्स था नॉन एग्जिस्टिंग फैक्ट्स था डिपार्टमेंट ने कहा नहीं ये फैक्ट सही है तो देन जस्टिस केशर मानी मैम रोड वन पैराग्राफ की दैट आर्ग्यूमेंट ऑफ ऑल्टरनेट रेमेडी कैन नॉट कम इन द वे ऑफ द सेसी बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट ए क्वेश्चन ऑफ डिस्प्यूटेड फैक्ट एंड रेवेन्यू एडमिट्स दैट द रीओपनिंग हैज बीन मेड ऑन Wrong facts, erroneous facts, non-existing facts, and I believe it's a, it's a what an order which we cherish, and zero. What an order, sir! They quashed it and must be quashed. And that part is definitely an accountability part, and all those things which he has written. I was otherwise comparing this judgment with the judgment of Justice Arvind Kumar, the Chief Justice of Gujarat High Court, a very latest order argued by Sir Parker Sahab. Where the again the foundational facts were proven to be wrong by the assessor. sir. Ki that just base pe aap reopen kar rahe ho, to facts hi aapne galat likha hai. To aisa bahut saara madam cases hain, jahan par hamare paas ho 148D bhi aaya hai, uske foundational facts, galat hai. To maa aisa ar cold storage 448 ITR, 37, you can note, I will not bore you more than that. Second, there is a, another decision sir, maybe it will reach to Supreme Court very very easy, uh, early, aur ho sata hai, paunchi bhi gaya ho sir. That is the case of Vikas Gupta. And please note the citation of it, 448 ITR page 1, sir. 448 ITR page 1. And ma'am, this case, I thought that this was the writ I made. I didn't argue, but this writ I had drafted. And this was so interesting. And our friends in Delhi and others will appreciate this. That the Bhatia Ji, an assessing officer, gave 148 and recorded reasons for it. Let us say, 30 मार्च 31 को मैम या 148 का नोटिस 31 मार्च 31 को दिया शाम को 5 बजे का उसपे डिजिटल सिग्नेचर लगा हुआ है और जो अप्रूविंग अथॉरिटी है जिसने अप्रूवल दी सेक्शन 151 की जो पहले होनी है नोटिस है गोसंदीप जी उसपे जो डिजिटल सिग्नेचर लगा हुआ है वो नोटिस के बाद का है 31 तारीख का ही है अब क्वेश्चन ये कि जो नोटिस 148 का नए जमाने में सर मैम आज के जमाने में इशू हो रहा है जिस पे डिजिटल सिग्नेचर एक पर्टिकुलर टाइम लिखा हुआ है और कंपैरेटिवली जो अप्रूवल 151 में आ रही है उसके ऊपर टाइम बाद का लिखा हुआ है इज इट इन अकॉर्डेंस विद लॉ और नॉट डिपार्टमेंट से सर वहां पर भी जो एसडी साहब हैं सिंह साहब उन्होंने वो अपीयर हुए उन्होंने कहा नहीं हमारा ये गवर्नमेंट का आर्गुमेंट ये था मैम कि जो हमने अपने इंटरनल सिस्टम में कमिश्नर साहब ने अप्रूवल पहले दे दिया था नोटिस से ये जो फाइनल अप्रूवल साइन हुआ है ये बाद में और साइन करने का अलग से कोई जरूरत नहीं है एस पर लॉ ऑफ सेक्शन 282 ए द प्रोविजन व्हिच डिपार्टमेंट टुक शेल्टर वाज 282 कैपिटल ए यू मे गेट नोट दिस प्रोविजन इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्शन व्हिच डिपार्टमेंट इज यूजिंग इन सम ऑफ द लिटिगेशंस नाउ एंड नाउ व्हाट जस्टिस केशरवानी सेड कि नो साइन इज मस्ट इवन आफ्टर 282 ए मैम एंड इफ साइन इज बाय द कमिश्नर आफ्टर द डेट एंड टाइम ऑफ द नोटिस एंड प्रोसीडिंग्स आर वॉइड हैव in issue. So, maybe as uh, ASG Sahib is sitting here in this Vikas Gupta's case on 282A has a sir, very, very fine uh, well, uh, implication. I believe the time. Yes, sir. I will just wind up. No, no, sir, I will, I'm just finding a five minute, sir. <laughs> Ma'am, five, ten minutes, should I take more? How much is the time? Yes, just five minutes more, I will wind up. Because my second, I, I knew, ma'am, I already tell, told me ki that both the topics could not. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, 
as our uh, as our uh, what i say septu generation and very respected goal sahab has asked me ki that yes sir punjab and high court recently uh, in some of the matters decided under section 148a by the bench of justice jinsa sahab has taken a view that writ should not be admitted against the order passed under 148d but as i say sir there are there are two things two scholastic principles sir one is this that if there is a central legislation and there is a particular cbdt even cbdt believes that 148a should not be done in a light hearted way now cbdt also recognizes after sr cold storage so to throw the writ in limine is not the right thing especially when there are gross irregularities and illegalities in the decision making process as we have learned in judicial review is defined as when there are serious uh, errors in the decision making process may it be irrationality may it be illegality may it be impropriety etc so if there are apparent glaring patent illegalities and irregularities in the decision making process under 148a then in my respectful submission sir it should be entertained and that is what delhi high court and bombay high court allahabad high court other high courts are doing sir as far as that point is concerned that what your good self is mentioning ansul jain's case where justice mr shah in one of the cases coming from punjab and high court has dismissed the slp but i will again humbly submit one thing there sir the only three lines are written by justice shah sir that this reply was considered and there is otherwise no error so in as limited i know sir it cannot be treated as a universal law that howsoever glaring patent errors are there then it should be thrown let let me take a classical case sir if my ssc has already been assessed under 143 subsection 3 and now department is doing 148 in the new law and that too without any fresh material and on basis of change of opinion can it be permitted after calvinator 320 itr 561 The answer is no, and and Supreme Court itself has said it uh, it can be entertained in those cases where there is change of opinion, where already there is one forty three three. I am telling you another glaring case, sir, because अभी जो एक सौ तालीस से हो रहे हैं, sir, उसमें बहुत सारे cases में पुराना एक सौ तालीस तीन भी कुछ cases में हुआ हुआ है, और जहाँ department के पास कोई नया material नहीं आया, फिर भी उन्होंने हमारा one forty three का adverse order pass कर दिया. वहाँ there cannot be one cannot say in all my humble submission that you it should not be entertained, and again there has to be case to case filtration. as justice laout is in a one judgment i remember on article 226 a landmark order i wrote, i i learned this sentence from this uh, phrase a stitch in time could save nine a stitch in time could save nine ki agar aap time pe stitch kar do to usse bahut sari samasya hai no problem ko bolte ho solve ho jayengi that is justice laout is order on article 226 in supreme court sir so in my respectful submission 148d order cannot be treated as such a Uh, light heart order ki that usme written entertain ho sir that is why delhi high court has admitted so many writs sir he is now admitting he has admitted after 2 6 2000 that was uh, yes sir ek minute mukhi ji mukhi ji wo wo main winding up kar raha hu sir meri flight nikal jayegi that that mukhi ji that issue has been liquidated mukhi ji सर आप मेरे से तो मैं बात मैं बस वाइंड अप कर रहा हूँ आपसे ज्यादा मांग रहा हूँ हाँ यस यस नॉट वेस्ट टाइम ऑन तो अच्छा ठीक है बढ़िया है सर अच्छी बात है वाइजर विजडम प्रिवेल्स सो आई वुड एंड मैम विद ए पॉइंट विच आई वाज रीडिंग फ्रॉम जस्टिस ऋषिकेश रॉयज ऑर्डर अगेन यू नो आई लव जजमेंट एंड जूर स्टूडेंट्स वेरी मच सर देर इज ए जजमेंट ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन केस ऑफ साउथ इंडियन बैंक फोर थर्टी फोर आई टी आर पेज वन ऑन सेक्शन फोर्टी नाइन बाई जस्टिस ऋषिकेश रॉय and he has cited in the last paragraph ma'am the adam on wealth of nations and what adam on wealth of nations says there should be in all circumstances certainty from day one ki assessee ko kitna tax dena hai kab dena hai aur kis matra mein dena hai agar tax system ko flop karna hai to ye mujhe samajh mein aaya ki jo justice rishikesh roy ke shabd hai south indian bank aur ye section 14 hai to sir ek aisa section raha hai jis pe to kabhi certainty rahi nahi aur ye 148a bhi kam nahi hai ma'am usse और 270 ए भी मुझे लगता है कम नहीं होने वाला है और संदीप भाई ने मुझे बोला था मैं टॉपिक नहीं डिस्कस कर पाया संदीप भाई 69 सी 115 बीबी बोगस परचेजेस बट ये है कि ये सारी चीजें सर लॉ इवॉल्यूशन के फ्रेस में रहता है तो मैं एक रामचरित मानस मुझे थोड़ा अच्छा लगता है मैं एक लाइन रामचरित मानस की बोल के मैडम एंड करूंगा अपनी बात को जाहे विधि हो नाथ हित मोड़ा करूं सुबह की दास मोतोरा थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू Thank you, Kapil sir. Hats off to your energy, sir. Thank you very much. Now I would like to call Ma'am Premlata ji to say few words.
when time is overrunning and I cannot take. It doesn't effort to take much time of yours because lunch is also ready and waiting for you. But still, I have to fulfill my duty. And therefore, I will discuss. But first of all, I congratulate the organizers and also thank them for giving me this opportunity. Friends, Kapil has raised so many issues. The law relating to reassessment was amended only due to the reasons that whether income escaped assessment has raised so many litigation and even in search cases whether satisfaction has been recorded by the assessing officer or not. So these two issues have raised so many tremendous litigation and therefore this law relating to assessment, reassessment was amended including the search cases as well. Now I am speaking only on the issues which have been raised by Mr. Kapil Goyal. Kapil has raised the first issue as to whether 148A is a summary proceeding or not. So far as summary proceeding in one of the judgment under the amended law, one of the judgment is that in view of Raymond Woolen 236 ITR page 34, it is a prima facie opinion of the assessing officer and it is not conclusive as to whether this is a fit case for issuing reassessment notice or not. But Raymond Woolen was decided under the unamended law. At that point of time, initiation of proceeding triggered only on the opinion that income has escaped assessment. But now it is not so because under the un under the unamended law, GK and drive shaft was there. But now the proceeding under GK and drive shaft has been incorporated in the, into the procedure, procedure, procedural aspect itself. Because under 148A, A, subclause A, assessing officer has to make the inquiry and that too with the approval of the principal chief commissioner of the income tax act, thereafter B notice thereafter reply of the SSE and thereafter D order. So it cannot be said that it is the prima facie opinion only in his opinion that uh, I mean income has been escaped assessment. Now there is a procedural law and therefore Raymond Woolen cannot be to the excuse of the department. The second issue is with respect to risk management strategy. Nobody knows as to what is the risk management strategy formulated by the civility. Number of times it has been requested to the department that, that what is the strategy. In all the 148A, B notices, they are saying that due to high risk transaction or high value transaction. To my mind, that cannot be the strategy of the department. If this, uh, say the transactions are 1 crore or 2 crore or 10 crore, then in all those cases, whether 148AB notices is to be issued, what is the high value transaction? That cannot be that on in all these cases. Uh, it appears that they have fed the limit of the transactions, maybe 1 crore or 10 crore. Then in all those cases, notice is issued under subclause B. Whether deposits in the bank, can it be said that income has escaped assessment? So primary inquiry has to be made by the assessing officer before issuing the notice. So next issue raised by the Kapil is whether 148AD is challengeable. Of course, in my mind, that is the challengeable in the writ petition because it affects the rights and liabilities of the SSE. That cannot be said that it is the interlocutory order and therefore it cannot be challenged. 148AD proceeding, that is after the inquiry made by the assessing officer, after considering the reply of the SSE, when SSE is objecting to that proceeding, then of course it is challengeable in the writ petition as well. Then thirdly, uh, Kapil has said, uh, to my mind, where initiation itself is bad in law, then everything is, everything goes. Thirdly, what I want to point out as to whether income escaped assessment that will trigger 148A proceeding 
or that will trigger 147 as and when the notice is issued to the SSE. I think that in 99.9% .9 cases they have not dropped the proceeding. In all the cases, 148A D order has been passed stating that income has escaped assessment and they are simultaneously issuing the notice. So what is the use of this proceeding under 148A? When in all the cases, once the notice has been issued, then 148A D is there. In so many cases, SSE is objecting that de these deposits may be loaned. These deposits are my sale consideration. I have disclosed in my GST return. I have disclosed in my income tax return in profit and loss account. Then where is the question of income escaping assessment? That means that for the reason of ro making roving inquiry, they are issuing the notice. And that cannot be the intent of the legislature. The next is issue is whether 148AD proceeding is confidential. To my mind, it is not confidential because SSE is also participating in that proceeding. So how can it be confidential? And therefore, that order sheet has to be made available to the SSE. Then, to my mind, that what Kapil was saying, that approval is taken before, uh, after, uh, this notice. So to my mind first uh, that what he has said that notice was uh, assessing officer is saying that this is not the fit case for issuing the notice under 148. But the CIT is imposing that no no you issue the notice. So to my mind this is the borrowed satisfaction. Under section 147 it is the opinion of the assessing officer that in this case income has escaped assessment and therefore notice is to be issued. So at this place all the judgment where it is said that on the basis of borrowed satisfaction no notice can be issued. If commissioner will not give approval then no notice can be issued. It is subject to approval and but where where assessing officer is saying that this is not the fit case and CIT is saying so that is the borrowed satisfaction. Where is the satisfaction of assessing officer? To my mind, it's my opinion that on the basis of merely saying by CIT that you issue the notice that cannot be done and for that we can challenge it in the writ petition. Now in one of the cases what have been happened that in two years the transaction were below 50 lakhs. But assessing officer clubbed the transaction of two years, making it above 50 lakhs and issued notices, notices in both the years. So that is the arbitrariness on the part of department. How can the, I mean each year is the independent year. That is the settled law. Then again department is doing so many mistakes. So in order to curb the litigation, this law had been amended. But I think that much more litigation has been created. Of course, that is beneficial to the advocate community. I know that. But for the taxpayers, it is not a <laughs> nightmare. So these are the issues and I am seeing the watch as well. You all are looking for the next item. So I conclude my speech here. Thank you, friends. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Now may I please request uh, Shri J.P. Dimanji. May I request Shri J.P. Dimanji, Ishan Malhotra ji, and Paramjit Singh ji to please uh, give a memento and token of appreciation to Shri Kapil Goenji. May I request uh, everyone to please be seated. I have an announcement to make, please.
May I please uh, request Shivratan ji, Sanjay Arora ji, and Amit Goenka ji to please uh, give a token of appreciation to Premlata ma'am. Thank you very much. The GST books uh, will be provided after the fourth technical session to each and every registered delegate. So please do collect that. It's a very good book. Please do collect that. And uh, join us for a lunch. And at 2.15, we should all be back because Justice Pankaj is going to be there. Please do 215 sharp. Thank you very much, everyone.
सौरभ से तो मिल गया शर्मा तो वो नहीं दिल्ली टैक्स वार के प्रेसिडेंट हैं वो संजय शर्मा संजय शर्मा सॉरी सॉरी
good afternoon everyone it's a kind request to all esteemed delegates to kindly please take your seats we are about to start our next technical session so it's a kind request if you could please take your seats kind request to all members kindly take your seats we are just about to begin the next technical session It's a kind request to all our esteemed panelists to kindly join us on stage. Kind request to all panelists to kindly join us on stage. We request our panelists, Honorable Mr. Justice Pankaj Jain from Punjab Nirnaya High Court. I request our panelists to kindly join us on stage. Honorable Mr. Justice Pankaj Jain, Punjab Arunana High Court, CA Dr. Girish Ahuja, Member High Level Committee on Direct Tax Matters, Sri Sanjay Sharma Ji, President, Sales Tax Bar Association, Delhi. We take pride in telling it's the largest tax bar association of Asia. 
श्री के के सिंगला जी प्रेसिडेंट टैक्स बार एसोसिएशन पटियाला श्री राजेश मल्होत्रा जी सीनियर मेंबर एंड एडवाइजर टू द टैक्स बार एसोसिएशन पटियाला श्री विनोद मित्तल जी प्रेसिडेंट डी टी बी ए बटिंडा एंड श्री सुरेश भूरिया जी सेक्रेटरी ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट बार एसोसिएशन मोहाली now be starting the technical session and before starting any uh, knowledge sharing session it's best to start with a gift of gratitude to all our esteemed guests for that i would now like to call upon stage shri anshuman chopra ji advocate and shri ashok goel ca to kindly come on stage and fel felicitate shri honorable mr justice pankaj jain next i would like to call upon shri manoj sabarwal from delhi and shri tajinder doshi advocate on stage to felicitate our key keynote speaker shri dr girish ahuja ji I would now like to invite on stage Shri Rana Gurtej and Shri Shan Lumba ji to felicitate Shri Sanjay Sharma ji, President of the Sales Tax Bar Association, Delhi. I would now like to invite on stage Sri Ajay Kohli ji and Sri Anil Mittal ji from Fatehabad to kindly come up on stage and felicitate Sri K K Singla ji, the president of Tax Bar Association, Patiala. request ravish agarwal ji and vinit thakral ji to kindly come up on stage and felicitate shri rajesh malhotra senior member and advisor to the tax bar association patiala Now I would like to invite Nazuk Gupta and Abhay Sharma ji to kindly come and felicitate Shri Suresh Bhuria ji, the Secretary of the District Bar Association, Mohali. In our field and profession, I think uh, one of the most pivotal stages when clients need our assistance is the advisory stage and then comes the litigation stage when things go south. So one of the most important aspects as professionals is to understand the nuances and the changes in law in order to better prepare our clients to understand how the law works, 
and how we can better plan around our taxation. Today I've been given a very difficult task to give an introduction to somebody who certainly does not need any introduction because he stands as an authority on direct taxation due to his vast experience and his contribution towards the field. Without any further ado, I would now like to call upon stage our keynote speaker, CA Dr. Girish Ahuja ji, to kindly give us deliberation on today's topic, gifts and planning of HUFs under the Income Tax Act. Justice Pankaj Jain, Honorable Judge of the Punjab and Haryana Court, Advocate Rajesh Malhotra Ji, Senior Member from Patiala, Tax Bar Association, of course, K.K. Singla Ji, President, Tax Bar Association, Sanjay Sharma Ji, President, uh, GST, Tax Bar Association, Delhi, and of course, Suresh Buriya Ji, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, uh, convener of the program, of course, the master of ceremony, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> well, Prince, I have been given two topics. One is regarding gift, the another is structure of HUF. I'll have to take you to the history before I talk to you about gift. You remember from 1st of October 1998, gift tax was removed from this country. When the gift tax was removed or it was abolished, many people took advantage of that. And great leaders of our country took a lot of advantages during their birthdays or anniversaries or all that, they used to take gift. And Char crore rupee ki gift li on the date of, on their, I mean, on the birthday. Income tax people ask from where you got this gift. He says, I have my parents, I have my friends, I have my relative, they have given a gift and there is no tax on that gift. Give us the list of that, who had given you that gift. The list was, he said, I to see, knows, I don't know, or my advocate knows, I don't know, I, I'll give you the list the during course of time. A list was prepared. Everybody was told that what you have to say when any survey comes or anybody comes to you or information. They went to the various person who had given those uh, gifts. Have you given the gift? Yes, sir. From where you have given the gift? What is your income? Sir, agriculture income. And have given the gift from agriculture income? So where is the need of source? Statement daily gay. They went to the another paper, uh, team of persons. You have made a gift, yes sir. From where? Agriculture income. But you don't have a land. So how do agriculture income? Kaise ho Kaise, sir, pate mein likhwa rakha hai. Ye lease mein le rakhi hai. Usse di. Thik hai. Third person said, Aapne gift di hai. Yes, I have given a gift. Kyaan se di hai? Loan like a gift. <laughs> this is a case which has been won in the court. That loan like a gift. What can you do? The law was changed. I remember from 1st of September 2004, it was written that if you receive a sum of money from any person, from individual or HUF, if an individual or HUF receives any money exceeding 25,000. Earlier it was 25,000. Later on it became 50 or whatever is it. The whole amount will be taxable. Birthday Aya, the announcement was made. Don't give me gift for more than 25,000. I will not accept more than 25,000 rupees. Three crore collected on the birthday. Koi leader change nahi kar saka. Law ko badal na pada. And the law was again changed from 1st April 2007, rather 2006, it was changed. What was said? That if you receive a sum of money, aggregate amount exceed rupees 50,000, whether 
fifty thousand rupees in aggregate, whether from one person or more than one person, the whole amount will be taxable. Birdie again came, announcement made. I will not accept any cash. You can give me anything other than cash, be it cash, be it check or whatever. You can give me your property. You can give me your jewelry. You can give me anything, shares or anything, but don't give any money to me. चार करोड़ रुपए का मुकट पहना दिया गया. Huh? This is a gift from the various relatives, friends and well. Again, the law changed. First April 2009, again the law changed that you cannot receive a gift. You cannot receive a gift of sum of money more than fifty thousand, whether from one person or more than one person, or immobile property whose value is more than fifty thousand, or or whose there is an inadequate consideration exceeding rupees fifty thousand, or there is a movable property names were given. Exceeding rupees are a gift without consideration or inadequate consideration. Aggregate amount fifty thousand. Advocate se pucha ya CA se pucha. Ab kya kare? Ye to sab kuch chala gaya. Ab to mobile mobile property mein likha gaya shares and security, jewelry or jewelry you know what you call archaeological collection, drawings, paintings, sculpture, work of art. मैंने कहा सर लॉ पढ़ता हूँ मुझे तो पता नहीं अब तो रिमूवल प्रॉपर्टी यू कैन टेक इट मूवल प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ दिस नेचर यू कैन नॉट टेक इट मनी फॉर मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड यू कैन नॉट टेक इट उन्होंने कहा सर एक वर्ड मिसिंग है बुलियन ज्वेलरी की डेफिनेशन लॉ में अलग है ज्वेलरी इंक्लूड्स ऑर्नामेंट मेड ऑफ गोल्ड सिल्वर प्लेटिनम और एनी द रॉय कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ वन और मोर देन दीज मेटल और एनी प्रेशर्स और सेमी प्रेशर स्टोन वेदर सेट इन फर्नीचर और नॉट बुलियन नहीं लिखा है आप बुलियन की गिफ्ट ले सकते हैं फिर लॉ बदला छह महीने के अंदर बुलियन भी ऐड कर दिया गया अब पूछा गया अब क्या करें अब गिफ्ट तो ले ही नहीं सकते सारी आइटम आ गई कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है टेक ए गिफ्ट इन द नेम ऑफ व्हाट यू कॉल ट्रस्ट बिकॉज ओनली इंडिविजुअल रेच ये वर्क कवर्ड ट्रस्ट इज नॉट कवर्ड सो यू कैन टेक ए गिफ्ट इन द नेम ऑफ द ट्रस्ट फिर लॉ बदला सर उसमें अब आया न्यू लॉ सेक्शन 56 सिक्स सब सेक्शन टू क्लॉज टेन वॉट इट सेस वेर एनी पर्सन रिसीव ड्यू एनी ईयर फ्रॉम एनी अदर पर्सन और पर्सन एनी इनकम एनी फॉलोइंग इनकम ऑन और आफ्टर फर्स्ट अप्रिल टू थाउजेंड विच इनकम नंबर वन Sum of money exceeding five fifty thousand in aggregate, whether from one person or more than one person, it is income. Next, well, let's listen to the answer. Immovable property, immovable property, without consideration, whose value is more than fifty thousand per property, of course, or for inadequate consideration, the difference between the stamp duty value and the way, a price at which it is acquired is more than what you call. 50,000 बाद में चेंज किया 10% परसेंट मार्जिन इज अलाउड दैट इज सेफ हार्बर टेन परसेंट बस अलाउड फाइव से फिर टेन कर दिया मूव अगला वर्ड क्या सुना है प्रॉपर्टी अदर देन इमोबल प्रॉपर्टी ये जरा प्लीज इसके ऊपर कंसेंट्रेट करना प्रॉपर्टी अदर देन इमोबल प्रॉपर्टी विदाउट कंसिडरेशन हु वैल्यू इज मोर देन फेयर मार्केट वैल्यू इज मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड और फॉर इन एडिक्यूट कंसिडरेशन हुयर मार्केट वैल्यू इन एग्रीगेट इज मोर देन Fifty thousand. But the difference between the fair market value and the price which is acquired is more than fifty thousand. अब क्या हुआ? Any person who receives that money. हमारी कंट्री में तो क्या प्यार बाबत था? सुलेमान राम कृष्ण को गिफ्ट दे रहा है और राम कृष्ण सलमा बी को गिफ्ट दे रही थी. कितना नेशनल इंटेग्रिटी था हमारे यहाँ. तोड़ दिया गया. और अब तो वॉर बदल दिया गया एनी पर्सन हु रिसीव फ्रॉम एनी अदर पर्सन यू कैन बी एनी पर्सन इंडिविजुअल एच ओ फर्म कंपनी एओपी बी ओआई यू रिसीव सम ऑफ मनी मोर देन 50000 फ्रॉम होम फ्रॉम एनी अदर पर्सन और पर्सनस एग्रीगेट एक्सीडिंग 50000 नाउ यू विल एट ट्रस्ट इफ आई रिसीव आई एम इंडिविजुअल और एच ओ एफ फॉर ए फर्म और ए कंपनी और एनी अदर पर्सन एओपी बी ओआई इफ आई रिसीव अ गिफ्ट Without consideration, 
amounting to rupees in aggregate 50,000 or more in a year, the whole amount will become taxable. Whole amount will become taxable. If somebody gives me a gift, I am ready to pay. These days, everybody is interested for a gift. क्या टैक्स ले लेंगे थर्टी थाउजेंड ले लेंगे थर्टी परसेंट ले लेंगे ना इससे ज्यादा तो नहीं लेंगे ना लेकिन गिफ्ट शुड बी जेनविन अगर गिफ्ट इन जेनविन हुई तो सेक्शन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन बी बी ई विल बी लाइबल टू पे टैक्स एट द रेट ऑफ सेवेंटी एट परसेंट प्लस सरचार प्लस पेनल्टी ऑल्सो इफ यू हैव नॉट शोन इट इज एन इनकम दैट इज टेन परसेंट एटी फोर परसेंट सी दी चेंज फ्रॉम ईयर टू ईयर now coming to the second point immovable property whose stamp duty value is more than 50000 and you have received without any consideration yes it is going to be taxed because in case of immovable property you know that when you take a gift you also have to pay stamp duty and now it is a different thing in haryana in punjab and now lately in up also you can make a gift to your blood relative only by paying only 2,000 or something in a small amount. Only blood donation in Haryana, in Punjab, and now recently started in uh, what you call in UP where it is only 5,000. If you in Delhi take a gift, you may take a gift. But there's a second thing, but you have to pay stamp duty also. Stamp duty also because immovable property gift cannot be uh, completed unless and until it is registered. And the stamp duty in Delhi may be 6%, 7%, 8%, whatever is the figure. But in Punjab, if you make a gift to your blood relation, absolutely no tax, about 2,000 registration fee or something like that. Maybe less than that. You may be better knowing that. But this is the position at the point. Wait a minute. I'll have to tell you many things. Yes, second thing is, it, uh, if it is for inadequate consideration, difference between the stamp duty value and the uh, purchase price is more than 50,000. Or the safe harbor 10 percent consideration up to the, the the consideration the stamp duty value is more than consideration plus 10 percent thereof more than actual consideration plus 10 percent of then of course it is liable to be taxed otherwise it is not liable. clear sir now movable property sorry not movable property property other than immovable property i have not used the word immovable property i have used the word property other than immovable property. I am taking you to the definition of property given in the explanation. Very important. Property means any capital asset. Please note the word capital asset. Capital asset being number one, immovable property. Number two, jewelry. Number three, archaeological, uh, sorry, shares and securities are left it. Shares and securities, jewelry, archaeological collections, drawings, painting, sculpture, work of art, and the last is bullion. These are the items. If you take it, you are liable to give tax on that. It is treated as income under the head, other sources. That is the second thing you have to prove that it is a genuine gift. Nobody gives gifts genuine. It's only you can give to your children that may be genuine, your wife, it could be genuine. If you give it to your wife, it is already a clubbing. Nobody otherwise gives a given. Even a brother doesn't give gift to the another brother. These days, these days I'm telling you. No gift. Lekin yaha to gift di jati hai. Gift humari country mein di nahi jati hai. jati hai. Nobody gives a gift. But we do take gifts from this. Aap word suniye kya likha hai. Udar likha tha B clause mein immobile property. Immobile property being land or building, sabko pata hai? Ya likha hai, property means capital asset being immobile property. Being immobile property or other other. Meaning thereby, if it is a rural agricultural land, is it covered or not covered? The question is this. If I look to section 56 to 10 clause B, it says immobile property. And then second says, property other than immobile property. But when you go to the section explanation, given the definition, it says property means a capital asset being immobile property. Capital asset being immobile property. Meaning thereby, 
if it happens to be a rural agricultural land, which is not a capital asset, it will not be covered under section 56, subsection 2, 10. It still will not be covered because it is a rural agricultural land. That's a different thing, what kind of a rural agricultural land. You have a definition about that, but it is not covered. But I said, look here. Look here what is written. The definition of property includes capital asset. First is immovable property. What was the need of defining property again putting the impulse asset being capital asset? So still it can be done. Motor car can be taken. A Mercedes car gift. Nobody stops you because it is not covered in the definition of the property. It's not doing anything. If you want to give, please give it. I have no problem. Because it's not liable to be taxed in my hands. So there are certain things still there where there is a possibility of taking a gift in kind, but which is not covered in the definition of capital asset. Then he what about the exceptions? They said, yes. Gift you can take from relative. Gift from a relative is, of course, not a problem. Or relative is definition is so big that no one can't tell me that there are relative hai. So read the definition, you'll go mad. What is this? Everything is covered. So you know, you, you can take if your parents, you can take a gift from your lineal ascendant, you can take your gift from your lineal descendant, you can take a gift from your brother, you can take a gift from your sister, you can take a gift spouses of all these persons. Spouses of all these persons. I can take from mama, mommy, from father, 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 from I can take gift from anyone. These are all covered there. I can take gift from my son-in-law also. He is also my daughter. Rather, it doesn't work, but it's happening You can take a gift from anyone. But you cannot take a gift from your nephew, cannot give a gift to uncle, but uncle can make a gift to the nephew. That is also their relation. Get from a relative. You can still take it. But again I told you, gift should be genuine. That means you will have to prove. Otherwise, if you have accounts, so you will be liable under section 68. If you have not made an account, investment not fully disclosed, or source of the investment not disclosed, 69, 69A, 69B, kahi na kahi aapko and then you are liable for a tax at the rate of minimum 78%. Why I am saying 78%? 60% plus 25% surcharge, 75% plus 4% so education tax, 78%. And if you have shown that it is exempt, and later on it is found it is not genuine, then there is a penalty also, which is 10%, that is 6%, 84%. So be careful about that. 84% is the liability of taking a gift which is not proved that it is genuine which is not proved it is. So you can give a gift on it. You can gift, take a gift on the occasion of marriage. Marriage ke time pe jo bhi gift li jai, oi de jai. It is fully exempt. Tabhi to log koi gyaara sa likhte hai, to ek zero bada kar gyaara dar likh lete hai. Koi ikatti sa de jata hai, zero bada kar ikatti sa dar lete hai. Woh list bana ke rakh lete hai. Koi lifafa hi to hai, saath mei rifafa rakh lete hai. What is the proof? He has not given 31,000. Who is going to inquire about that? 11,000, 11,000, 31,000, 50,000. You can take any amount of gift on the occasion of marriage. Whether it is kind or it is in cash, it is already there. What kind of a kind gift you can take? What kind of gift you give? So on occasion of marriage, gift, you know, inheritance or by way of will. Will or inheritance, to vaisi ko tax lagta nahi. Obviously, yeah, there is nothing like that. Gift, in contemplation of death, in contemplation of death, he on occasion of marriage, so many sullia, but on a coin or marriage can be extra sullia. Will it be on the day of marriage? There were judgments, it can be on or about the day of marriage, one day before, one day after. It is hota hi hai. Kyu hota hai? Aap dekhiye, aap gift dek le jate on the occasion of marriage. लेकिन मामा चाहे जाला जो रिश्तेदार क्लोज होते हैं वो एक दिन पहले ही घर आके दे जाते हैं कि ये लो ये गिफ्ट इतने हैं कुछ ज्यादा उन्होंने देने होते हैं तो घर आके दे जाते हैं या कुछ लोग सोचते रहते हैं बाद में देंगे पहले मैं मामा हूं ये देख लूं मुझे मिला क्या वहां से सूट मिला के साड़ी मिली या क्या मिला उसके बाद देखते हैं 
कि पहले देख लू आया क्या है फिर वो अपनी लाल डायरी निकालेंगे देखेंगे मेरे बेटे के टाइम पे क्या दे गया था अरे वो इकतीस सौ दे गया था दस साल पहले चलो कॉस्ट ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन इंडेक्स नंबर लगा कर इक्यावन सौ रुपए दे दो यही होता है सर आर यू नॉट डूइंग द सेम थिंग जिसके घर शादी है उसके घर डायरी पड़ी है और जिसकी डायरी पड़ी है वो देख के ही जाता है कि यह मेरे को क्या दे के गया था और मैं ये दे के आऊँ एम आई राइट और सर मैं रॉन्ग सर आप आपने आप बताइए सबको पता है कि हम ये देखते हैं so this is what is happening you know you can take a gift on the occasion of marriage aur marriage ke hisab se hua tha phir in contemplation of death heart attack ho gaya pata nahi wapas nahi aao na par usko gift par aake chala gaya ki agar main wapas aa gaya to gift cancel nahi aaya teri ho gayi wo kehta mat ya to acha hai ye bhi hai gift in contemplation of death that also is a gift provided it materializes if it does not materialize how does it matter if it is materialized he is already died it is more or less a bill it is more or less like a bill na sir if it be gifted in contemplation of death more or less gift from local authorities wo bhi maaf hai jaise scholarship agar gift from educational institutions or medical institution who are covered under section 10 clause 23c unse jo gift aati hai wo maaf hai gift from or by a charitable trust or religious trust which is registered under 12a 12a or 12ab ye zara dhyan se rakhna ab koi bhi trust jo charitable hai usko koi donation aati hai wo fully taxable hai if the aggregate amount of donation exceeds rupees 250000 and that trust is not registered under 12a or 12ab जितने मंदिर गुरुद्वारे चर्च और ये बने हुए हैं हमारी कंट्री में 50 परसेंट देम आर नॉट रजिस्टर्ड ट्वेल्व डबल ए ट्वेल्व दे आर नॉट रजिस्टर्ड ट्वेल्व ए टबल बी एंड दे आर गेटिंग लॉट ऑफ डोनेशन गुंडी में भी आता है लॉट ऑफ डोनेशन दे आर रिसीविंग लेट मी टेल यू द इंटायर ग्रॉस अमाउंट इज फुल्ली टेक्सीबल नाउ इट इज कवर्ड अंडर फिफ्टी सिक्स ऑफ सेक्शन टू क्रॉस टेन बिकॉज इट इज मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वेदर फ्रॉम वन परसेंट or more than 1% and that trust that trust charitable or religious if it is not registered in the 12 AA or 12 AB it is going to be fully taxed in the hands of the trust in the hands of the trust and if that trust gives you a gift and if that trust is not registered in the 12 AA or 12 AB that that amount will also be taxable in your hand, by or from the trust which is covered under 12 registered under 12 AA or 12 AB that is maximum otherwise it is not exempt ye law bana diya sir to main gaya jab aaya department maine kaha sir aapne ye to trust ka to bana diya aapne to baki sab hata diye what about private trust main apne bacche ka trust bana raha hu child child hai minor child hai maybe mentally challenged hai maybe anything hai aur uske liye to aap koi bhi trust ko proper paise denge It is fully taxable. If I you make a trust now after first April 2017, private trust I'm talking about charitable. So I have told you 12 double A, 12 AB. But if I make a gift to my trust or my property, I'm settling that amount. It is fully taxable. Thereafter, I went and told him what is this you have done. Then they have changed during that discussion. That any a gift to a trust. created by an individual or established by an individual for his relative now i can take a private trust make a gift to a private trust only when that trust is created or established by the individual and it is for the benefit of what is beneficiary or the beneficiary relative of that individual is the beneficiary other it is not exempt if there are private trust which were created earlier not for the anybody uh, not for the relative for any other person or it is created by a uh, uh, business house it is fully taxable it is only created by individual even if it is created by huf fully taxable only individual established or created a trust for the benefit of the relative dependent upon dependent one near relative on him it is fully exempt otherwise ye pura ka pura taxable ये 56 सिक्स ऑफ सेक्शन टू क्लॉज टेन में उन्होंने डाला है सो वॉट आई एम टेलिंग यू वेदर यू आर ए रिसिपियंट ऑफ गिफ्ट इफ इट इज यू विल हैव टू टेक इट इफ इट इज इन एडुकेट कंसिडरेशन यू हैव टू कंसिडर वॉट यू कॉल दिस टाइम ड्यूटी वैल्यू 
stamp duty value minus the actual consideration, the maximum safe harbor is 10% of the actual consideration. Otherwise, now everything has been ring fenced. Now you cannot take a gift from any person more than 50,000 without consideration, of course. Even if you give the proof, it is taxable in your hand and income from other sources or immobile property as income from other sources or property which I have listed as income from other sources. So this is what is now the present position of gift under Income Tax Act. This is the position under Section 56, Subsection 2, Clause 10. If you have any issue, we may have to leave something, we can ask one thing, then we will have the questions. But is there any issue in that? This is 56, Subsection 2, Clause 10. Right? But please note, I am again saying charitable trust or religious trust unless they are registered under 12AA or 12AB if they receive any donation exceeding rupees 50,000 in aggregate whether from one person or more than one person the entire amount is taxable. Entire amount is taxable. This is what is the position which stands today. We will take up the other issue later. If you have any questions, I will take up later. Coming to now, structuring of Hindu undivided family. I don't know what is going to happen when it is a uniform civil court. But there are two chapters in income tax, sir. Nobody knows anything about them. One is HUF, the another is charitable trust. Trust me, nobody knows anything. Nobody knows anything, sir. We knew something again. The lower department of the department didn't know anything. We knew what we were saying, we didn't know what we were saying. Even the Supreme Court has given three judgments on the daughter about 9-9-2005 when the law was changed. That daughter is also a co-person. Three times they had to change their judgment. You have seen a judgment of coming of a Supreme Court reviewing its own judgment regarding charitable trust, you know, having business income, the educational institution having business income. They themselves have reviewed this problem. Queen Mary case was reviewed again. And this case also, Hindu undivided family, let me give you a structure, what is Hindu undivided family? You will have to forgo the old law. Please don't think that Hindu undivided family means male and karta, I mean person who has created a HUF or uske bache means male children. Jamana badal kiya hai. Now, a daughter on or after 9-9-2005 has the same right as that of a son. She has the same right as that of her brother as she becomes co-partner in that case. Daughter after 9-9-2005 has a full right. Look, in Hindu Sanctuary Act, in the section 8, self-acquired property, 1956 onward, when a person dies, his legal heir of first category was allowed to take that property in equal ratio, and those legal heirs were spouse, everybody knows spouse, son, sons, or daughters. One more was mother. Mother. Whether dependent or not. Father nahi hai. Father is not there. Who is the legal heir of first class? That is children. Children means both son, daughter. Self-acquired property. His own property. Children, spouse and mother in equal ratio. If mother is not there, then they balance. That means spouse and children. If mother is not there, spouse and children. If spouse is not there, then neither mother, mother is not there, spouse is not there, only children. Now in the case of children also, when it is in, I am talking about Hindu succession like that is without a will. He had to ask a question, was that son married or not married? Or was that daughter married or not married? If the son was married and he predeceases the father, Son was married and he predeceased the father. 
लॉ क्या कहता है वॉट एवर शेयर विच वुड हैव गॉन टू इज सन वुड गो टू इज लीगल एयर ऑफ द क्लास वन अगर बेटा है और उसकी डेथ हो जाती है प्री डिजीज है तो वी आप हैव टू आस्क टू क्वेश्चन वॉज ही मैरिड और ही वॉज नॉट मैरिड इफ ही वॉज नॉट मैरिड कुछ नहीं मिलेगा क्योंकि वो चला गया तो गया इफ ही वॉज मैरिड वट वुड हैव बीन हिज शेयर हैड पार्टीशन टेकन प्लेस और हैड डेथ टेकन प्लेस ऑन दैट डे बिफोर हिज डेथ उसका शेयर जो आएगा दैट विल गो टू इज लीगल एयर मीन हिज स्पाउस एंड चिल्ड्रन ये लॉ है Similarly, if the daughter again a question is married or unmarried, Hindu succession act. If the daughter was unmarried and she died pre-deceased the father, no harm. If she was married, what would he have been her share? If she had been alive on that date, what would have been her share? Will go to whom? Will go to whom? Not to the husband at all. To her children. Not to the husband at all, to our children only. Husband को कुछ नहीं मिलता, बाप को भी कुछ नहीं मिलता. First category में, second category is a different thing. A problem आया if I die intestate means without writing a will. Will that property go to HUF? Answer is no. जो question does not arise. मेरे मरने पर मेरी प्रॉपर्टी एच के पास जा ही नहीं सकती बिकॉज हिंदू सेक्शन नाइन फिफ्टी सिक्स सेक्शन एट वेरी क्लियरली सेज दैट यू विल गो टू लीगल ऑफ द फर्स्ट कैटेगरी यू कैन नॉट फॉर्म एच यू एफ आउट ऑफ इट एच हो ही नहीं सकती ये हम लोग पुराने जमाने में यही करते थे बाबरा एच बन गई अभी भी कई कर रहे हैं क्योंकि तो उनको नहीं पता लेकिन ये अलाउड नहीं है Not, not. It has to go the the legal heir of the first class in their equal ratio. It cannot go as H U F. H U F हो ही नहीं सकता. 1956 से पहले वाला है तो बात अलग है. अब नहीं हो सकता. Then how will you form a H U F? क्या तो H U F form थोड़ी की जाती है. H U F तो already है. Where is the H U F? When you get married, you are H U F. But form क्या करेगा? Income tax क्या तो मुझे क्या लेना देना? जब इसमें income आएगी, जब इसमें corpus आएगा. तब मैं बात करूंगा ना एच यू एफ क्या है वॉट आर दंसर्न हाउ आर हिंदू लॉ इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इनकम टैक्स हिंदू लॉ टॉक्स अबाउट एच यू एफ दैट यू गेट दू डेक यू गेट मैरिड इट इज एच यू एफ इट इज एंड यू हैव चिल्ड्रन इट इज एच यू एफ इनकम टैक्स आई एम नथिंग टू डू विद दैट आई टू सी ओनली वेन देर इज ए इनकम इन दैट एच यू एफ एंड देर इज बाउंड टू बी कॉर्पस ऑफ दैट यू एफ कॉर्पस के बगैर इनकम कैसे आ जाएगी सर कुछ तो कैपिटल लगाएंगे शेयर कैपिटल होता है हर जगह खलता है पार्टनर्स कैपिटल होता है इंडिविजुअल कैपिटल होता है वेयर फ्रॉम द कॉर्पस ऑफ द एच विल कम हाउ विल यू फॉर्म एच यू एफ एफ इज ऑलरेडी देयर एच बनाने के दो ही तरीके हैं और कोई तरीका नहीं है 1956 के बाद वन इज बाय विल आई कैन राइट इन माई विल दैट आफ्टर माई डेथ सच एंड सच प्रॉपर्टी विल गो टू एच यू एफ सन सच एंड सच सन मुझे लिखना पड़ेगा देर शुड बी ए रिसाइटल देर शुड बी ए रिसाइटल इन द बिल दैट दिस विल गो टू एच यू एफ ऑफ माई सन मैंने सन बोला डॉटर नहीं बोला अभी थोड़ी देर में बताता हूं एच यू एफ ऑफ माई सन ये होगा तब एच यू एफ बनेगी और बनेगी तब जो उसकी डेथ होगी उससे पहले तो बन ही नहीं सकती मैन इट इज ए विल द एच यू एफ विल बी फॉर्म ओनली आफ्टर ई डाइज एंड वट एवर द प्रॉपर्टी कम्स टू दी एच यू एफ विल फॉर्म एच यू एफ ऑफ द सन But there should be a recital. If there is no recital, if it is, it will go to my son. Son cannot say it is H U F property. It has to be written there that it will go to H U F my son. Or the other way is that gift from H U F can be corpus. Where can it come from? Gift can come. Take a gift of two lakh fifty one thousand. Pay tax fifty two rupees, and the H U F is formed. Okay, क्या मतलब वेन यू रिसीव ए गिफ्ट ऑफ टू लैख फिफ्टी वन थाउजेंड इट इज मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इट इज मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड सर सो इट इज टैक्सेबल हाउ मच इज एग्जैम टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड हाउ मच इज लेफ्ट वन थाउजेंड वॉट इज द टैक्स ऑन वन थाउजेंड फिफ्टी रुपीज प्लस फोर परसेंट फिफ्टी टू रुपीज ए गिफ्ट लीजिए किसी से भी ले लीजिए और आपके एच यू तैयार है भाई टू लैख फिफ्टी वन थाउजेंड आप कहेंगे कम ले तो क्या हुआ फिर इनकम टैक्स वालों को पता कैसे लगेगा कि एच बन गई एक रिटर्न भरोगे तो पता लगेगा ना 
आप तो चार लाख की भी ले सकते हैं चार लाख एक हजार की ले लीजिए डेढ़ लाख रुपए एफ डी बनवा दीजिए एटी सी ले लीजिए यू टेक ए गिफ्ट ऑफ फोर लैख वन थाउजेंड वन लैख फिफ्टी वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड मेक एन एफ डी आर बिकॉज एफ डी आर ऑफ वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इज अवेलेबल अंडर ए टी सी एंड टू लैख फिफ्टी वन थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टी एक्जेंट वन लैख दे दो टैक्स कितना वो डिपार्टमेंट भी खुश और आप भी खुश मेरी गिफ्ट बन गई कॉर्पस आ गया ना सर किससे लेना है मेम्बर से नहीं लेना है यू शुड नॉट टेक क्योंकि सेक्शन फिफ्टी सिक्स टू टेन कहता है गिफ्ट फ्रॉम ए मेम्बर बाई यू एच यू एफ इज फुल्ली एग्जेप्ट कहता है ना सर सिक्सटी वन सिक्सटी वो वाला कहता है फिफ्टी सिक्स टू टेन मेम्बर गिफ्ट दे रहा है अपनी एच को तो वो एग्जेप्ट है लेकिन उसका फायदा क्या सेक्शन सिक्सटी फोर सब सेक्शन टू इज एप्लीकेबल वेर यू रिसीव एनी गिफ्ट गिफ्ट फ्रॉम योर मेम्बर द इनकम विच अप्रूव फ्रॉम दैट विल बी क्लब इन देंड ऑफ द ट्रांसफर और पर्सन हुज गिवन दैट गिफ्ट तो लेने का फायदा क्या सर मेम्बर से मेम्बर से मत लीजिए किसी से भी ले लीजिए आप मुझे दे दीजिए मैं लेने को तैयार हूँ पर वाइड मेरी इनकम ज़्यादा ना हो पहले तो गिफ्ट दीजिए टू लैख फिफ्टी वन थाउजेंड टू फोर लैख वन थाउजेंड आपकी माफ है सो देर आर ओनली टू वेज ऑफ क्रिएटिंग एन एच यू एफ बट इन इनकम टैक्स एच यू एफ इज नेवर फॉर्म लाइक दिस एच यू इज फॉर्म लाइक दिस लाइक दिस यू नीड टू हैव टू को पार्सल टू फॉर्म एन एच यू एफ इन हिंदू लॉ यू नीड ओनली वाइफ टू फॉर्म एन एच यू एफ बट इनकम टैक्स इज How can you partition? Because wife cannot ask for partition. Wife is cannot ask for partition. So there should be two members to ask. But then only you can form an HUF. कैसे बनेगी? दो भाइयों में तो बनती नहीं है. Husband wife में नहीं बनती. You बनती. Lineal. कौन होगा? कौन होना चाहिए? हाँ? नहीं नहीं बोलो ना son. Son नहीं है. Son नहीं है. Lineal child. But son child. Any child. ये लोगों के दिमाग में बेटा होना जरूरी है वो बेटा होना कंद हो गया नौ नौ दो हजार पांच के बाद मुझे भी नहीं पता था कि बेटा होना जरूरी है 1974 में मैंने अपनी एच बना ली और मेरी बेटी है बेटा था नहीं मेरी एच बन गई 74 में भाई डॉटर आई टेक ओनली वन मिनट कैन आई टेक सर वन टू टू मिनट नहीं नहीं आप कर लीजिए पहले फिर मैं बात में कर लूंगा दिक्कत नहीं सर इट इज यू हरी हरी सर प्लीज आई एम सो सॉरी आई नेवर वॉन्टेड टू डिस्टर्ब यू एंड इट वॉज सच अ एल्यूमिनेटिंग एड्रेस दट रादर आई फील दैट आई विल मिस इट but i have my some prior commitments probably you were behind the schedule because this session was scheduled to start at 2 i have a flight at 4 for delhi so kindly excuse me there's three four things that i thought first one confession that so far as tax is concerned my age qua tax laws is less than 1 year so in front of you people who have uh, eaten drunk and practiced and professed tax laws for whole of your life my knowledge is quite very shallow with respect to that whatever i have gathered from uh, ahuja saab's address he first talked about these gradual changes in the taxation laws that have taken place in last say 20 years as a student of economics and as as a student of law what i find is that there is a reason behind this gradual change after the world has become a globalized world it's the monetary economics which has taken away the field and since now it's the money which rules the roost so definitely this fight to evade tax to seek exemptions from tax that has increased that urge to evade tax that has increased and that is why this fight between the tax payer and the tax seeker 
the pace has increased in last say 20 years prior to that even the tech seeker was a bit laid back and of course tax evader was i won't say that he, he was also laid back but definitely tax deed tax seeker that is the sovereign that is the government that has now really pumped up that is really pumped up after the monetary economics has now started and uh, so far as the interpretation of laws is concerned definitely the supreme court had a reason to review those judgments thrice for the reason if you see the whole of the law related to huf 2005 amendment is the watershed movement so far as huf is concerned and uh, we are talking today till today they have reviewed it thrice but i feel that there are many rounds to come so far as H law related to huf, HUF is concerned and uh, so far as my knowledge about huf and the taxation laws is concerned i have a very interesting anecdote that i will one of my class fellows he his tenant filed a revision against him so he came to know that one of our class fellows he is doing good in high court so he came to me and engaged me of course after you meet your class fellow after 20 years there was no reason for me to charge fee and uh, luckily the decision also went in our favor so he thought that he should also reciprocate that by offering his services so he saw my office i had certain clients waiting so he thought i was doing good so he said what's your what tax planning how are you are planning your tax I said nothing here. I have a CA. He files my return. He said, "No, you must create HUF." So this is only my exposure with HUF and income tax is concerned. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I would now request uh, Dr. Girish Ahuja ji to kindly present the memo to Justice Jain. We will be continuing with this session. Unfortunately, sir has to leave for a prior engagement. And uh, uh, Dr. Girish Ahuja, we would request you to kindly. Rukawat ke liye khede. Can't help it. It's easy. I took a flight. You can't. And we are right, eh? we have to start the session at 2 o'clock, not at 2.30. So, judge is a judge, he has to complete the appointment, sir. Oh my God. Coming back, sir. I said I pawned my HF in way back in 1974 without realizing that I don't have a son. I thought it's possible. 2005, 1999, 2000, I came to know that I was doing wrong thing. I didn't know that HF was not able to make a son. I चुप रहा मैं सात साल चुप रहा समझ गए ना क्यों सात साल रहा उसके बाद सबको बताया मेरी भी एचयूएफ थी अब बात समझ ले सात साल क्यों रहा तो पता ही आपको अब तो बात दस साल हो गए पहले तो सात ही थे मैक्सिमम सिक्स एवर सिक्स प्लस वन यही थे इग्नोरेंस आई आल्सो डिड नो दैट यू कैन नॉट फॉर्म एन on or after 99-2005, you can form an HUF. HUF is already there, I again told you. You can create an HUF by taking a gift or by will, provided you have a child, whether son or a daughter. Absolutely no problem, whether son or a daughter. 
People says, Hindu law says you can have a HUA with husband and wife. I said, okay, Hindu law is different. Hindu law allows partial partition. Income tax does not allow partial partition. After 31st December 1978, you all know there has to be a complete partition. Otherwise, even if you make a partial partition, the income from that asset which has been partitioned will be clubbed in the hands of the HUA. The law is... I can't change the law, but income tax is different from Hindu and Hindu law. What happened? When the law came in 9-9-2005, there was a law that the law was made in 9-9-2005, but she should be alive on 9-9-2005, and her father should also be alive on 9-9-2005. Both of them are in 9-9-2005, two will become, otherwise not. If father has died before 9-9-2005, no question. Because at that time, she didn't have any questions. Or if she had died before 9-9-2005, then she didn't. Then she came married or unmarried. She said, it doesn't make any difference. Daughter was married before 9-9-2005 or after 9-9-2005. It doesn't make any difference. Daughter has the same right as the son. He steps the same right as that of his son. She is also a co-personal. This law has come. Then the law has come the third time. That even if the father has died before, or the daughter has died before, he will get a share of it. Now this is a big deal. When you have a partition of 9-9-2005, and his death has died before, then how will he get a share of it? The father died. If the father has gone, then if there is a partition, then he will get a share of it. So the daughter will get a share of it. And the daughter is alive or not, he will get a share of it. अब देखिए एचवीएम बनती कैसे ये ध्यान से सुनना एचवीएम में क्या है लेफ्ट साइड फादर हु मेक्स द एचवीएम सन डॉटर ये एचवीएम के पास को पार्सनर है फादर मेड एन एचवीएम उसकी वाइफ भी है वाइफ इज ए मेंबर बट शी इज नॉट ए को पार्सनर हु आर द को पार्सनर फादर सन डॉटर इधर मैं डॉटर रखूंगा इधर सन रखूंगा सन्स चिल्ड्रन Son and daughter, both are co-personal. Again, son, son's children, daughter नहीं मैं बोला, son, son's, sorry, son, son's children, son की daughter नहीं, son, son's children are also co-personal. Male lineage plus daughter. मैं बारा बोल रहा हूँ, मेरे मरने के बाद या मैं हूँ, तो मेरी एच्यू में कौन-कौन co-personal है? By birth, by birth. You cannot say you are not a co-parser. I have removed you. I have given you. You cannot be a co-parser. By birth, you become a co-parser. Who will become a co-parser in my HUF? My son, my HUF. I have made it. My son, my daughter. Now, the daughter will keep it. My son, the day of my child, whether he is a son or a daughter, both are co-parser. Because the daughter is a daughter is daughter is daughter of a co-parser. फिर मैं डॉटर को छोड़ दूंगा फिर बोला ग्रैंडसन का उसके बच्चे उसके बच्चे में भी सन और डॉटर वो भी को पर्सन होंगे अब नए लोग में सो so, क्या हुआ फोर जनरेशन और को पर्सन सन फादर सन डॉटर इधर आ गए इस डॉटर के नीचे नहीं जाएंगे और सन का फिर नीचे सन हुआ और डॉटर हुई डॉटर इज ऑल्सो को पर्सनर लेकिन सन के बच्चे दिए जाएंगे लेकिन डॉटर के बच्चे नहीं लिए Are you getting my point, sir? कि ज़्यादा complicated subject है क्योंकि अभी तक लोगों को समझ में नहीं ये क्या हो रहा है। मेरे बेटी मेरी एचएफ की को पार्सनर है, पर मेरी बेटी के बच्चे नहीं हैं को पार्सनर क्योंकि वो अपने फादर की कब्बे के एक को पार्सनर है, अपने फादर। मेरी डॉटर जब अगर शादी हुई है, तो she is a co partner here, but she is not a co partner in her husband's HUF. But जो उसके बच्चे हैं they are co-parser in the husband of my daughter. वहाँ co-parser है, यहाँ नहीं है। Are you getting my point? What I'm saying? Husband के बच्चे को है। So male lineage से start होती है। Can a child be formed by a woman? No question. A child cannot be formed by a woman. वो होता ही नहीं है। Male lineage है। A child can be formed by a male member. Female नहीं बना सकती a child। Male member। Male के नीचे son आया, daughter आया। after that, the daughter's right is equal. Suppose there is a partition. I, my wife, 
मेरा बेटा और मेरी बेटी है इफ देर इज ए पार्टीशन वन फोर्थ विल गो टू मी वन फोर्थ विल गो टू माई वाइफ वन फोर्थ विल बी गोइंग टू माई सन एंड वन फोर्थ विल गो टू माई डॉटर एनीबडी कैन आस्क फॉर पार्टीशन एक्सेप्ट माई वाइफ औरत बीवी पार्टीशन नहीं करा सकती कराती तो वही है मारेंगे मेरे को लेकिन करा नहीं सकती है डॉटर कैन आस्क फॉर पार्टीशन बट द वाइफ कैन नॉट आस्क फॉर पार्टीशन बट वेन एवर देर इज अ डेथ शी विल गेट द शेयर ये कॉन्सेप्ट है सर मेरी डॉटर को दो जगह से पैसे मिलेंगे एक तो मेरी प्रॉपर्टी के एक अपने हस्बैंड की प्रॉपर्टी के वेन एवर देर इज ए पार्टीशन दो जगह मिले बेटियों के आजकल हाथ में लड्डू हैं वो पुराने जमाने चले गए बेटियां ज्यादा अच्छी होती हैं बेटे तो होते ही बेकार मैं टेली कह रहा हूं सन इज अर सन टेली गेट्स ए वाइफ ए डॉटर मीन्स डॉटर थ्रू आउट अर लाइफ ये सुन लेना और ये दुनिया में हो गया है आजकल के बच्चे नहीं पूछते वो जमाना चला गया बच्चे मीन्स मेल मेंबर बेटी तो पूछती है बेटी तो कहीं भी होगी वो बाप को नहीं छोड़ सकती और माँ को कम छोड़ेगी लेकिन बाप को तो कभी छोड़ ही नहीं सकती चाहे बाप गरीब हो चाहे वो अमीर ये बेटियों में यही ताकत है जो बेटियों के अंदर है लेकिन सन वो उतना ही देर है जितनी देर आपके पास माल है जिस दिन माल दे दिया उस दिन ओल्ड एज होम में बुक करा लेना अपना काम सर ये जनरलाइज नहीं कर रहा एक्सेप्शन आर ऑलवेज देयर ये नहीं है लेकिन मोस्टली यही हो रहा है जो मैं बता बाप का घर है और बाप को ही निकाल देते हैं वहां से उसने दिया भी नहीं है उसको ही निकाल देते हैं ये तो हाल है आजकल का कि आप बाहर रहो अरे वो कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी कि माँ वहां रह रही उसने स्टेटमेंट दी मैं वहां रह रही हूँ ओल्ड एज होम में मेरा बेटा देखो कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी हूँ क्या है ये जमाने में क्या हो गया क्या सेंटिमेंट्स रह गए मुझे तो समझ में नहीं आता ये बच्चों को क्या हो गया हम सैंडविच सोसाइटी है सर मैं और बड़े बड़े लोग जो हैं हम अपने माँ बाप से भी डरते थे अपने बच्चों से भी डरते हैं एम आई राइट और रॉन्ग है ना यही काम और और जो मेरे पचास के नीचे हैं उनका तो और बुरा हाल है थोड़ा बहुत माँ बाप से डरते हैं बच्चों के सामने तो उनकी छाई टाई फिस हो जाती है क्या हो रहा है ये जमाने में हमने ही खराब किया और कहा वी है पेम्पर्ड देन चाइल्ड एक सन होगा एक बेटर होगा डॉटर को ध्यान रखेंगे बेटे का कहा जा जो मर्जी जा जा मर्जी घूम जो करना कर ले तो कर लो फिर हमने ही खराब किया अपने बच्चों को मैं तो कहता होता हूँ ठीक है कोई गिफ्ट मत देना जब तक आप जिंदा हो अपने बेटे को जब कुछ हो नहीं देना सेवा करेगा और उसकी बीवी भी करेगी तेरे लिए तो कमा रहा हूं अपने लिए थोड़ी कमा रहा हूं तेरे लिए कमा रहा हूं जब तू नहीं लेके जाना पर देना मत उसको हाँ उतना तो देना मेरा फर्ज है मेरा बेटा है तो उसको सेट कर दू लाइफ में लेकिन सब कुछ दे दिया तो आप गए ये मैं आपको सही बता रहा बुरा माने या अच्छा माने ये यंग आदमी एक दिन मैं लुधियाना में लेक्चर दे रहा था तो उसका फादर भी बैठा था आप भी बैठा था वो लड़का मैंने कह दिया एक पैसा मत देना अपने बच्चों को कुछ भी हो जाए बच्चे सेट था नो डाउट वही चार्ट अकाउंट वो भी चार्ट अकाउंट अगले दिन फोन आ गया सर मरवा दिया क्या हुआ सर मैंने बाप से पच्चीस लाख मांगा उसने मना कर दिया कि आहूजा साहब कह गए नहीं देना मैं नहीं दूंगा दिस इज द स्टोरी आई एम टेलिंग और सुनना चाहते थे रचित भंडारी है लुधियाना में जो है मेरे को फोन करता है सर मरवा दिया आपने मेरे पास ने कहा मैं नहीं दूंगा मैंने कहा बुरी बात क्या की है बहुत अच्छी बात करी है सर इज्जत तभी है जब आपके पास माल है जिस दिन माल गया कोई नहीं पूछेगा एक ही आदमी पूछता है आपको आपकी वाइफ आपकी स्पाउस और कोई नहीं पूछता पचास पचपन के साथ एक ही आदमी पूछता है आपकी स्पाउस आप स्पाउस से मतलब सके दोनों आई दर भी लेकिन मैं बता रहा हूं और कोई नहीं पूछता बेटी तो अपने घर है ना टेलीफोन कर लेगी और क्या करेगी बेचारी फोन करके पूछ लेगी ठीक है ना ये है और आधी चीजें आप बताओगे आधी बताओगे भी नहीं बट बेटों को फोन करना पड़ता है बेटा तो ठीक है ना आप वो नहीं करेगा आप करोगे मेरा ग्रैंड सन क्या पढ़ने मैंने कहा जी पहले तो हफ्ता भर तो करेगा फोन फिर हमें ही करना पड़ेगा तेरे को और मेरी बेटी रोज उसको फोन करती है ठीक है ना मेरा कभी वो करता है नहीं करता मैं देख लिया प्रैक्टिकल क्या हो रहा है और बेटी का दर्द करेगी बेटी हर बार करेगी आपको सो so, वक्त बदल गया है सर एच बनानी है बनाइए लेकिन पार्टीशन कोई भी करा सकता है सन और डॉटर सन का सन भी करा सकता है 
सन की डॉटर भी करा सकती है फिर तीसरे सन का सन भी करा सकता है इधर चार जनरेशन है फादर सन 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 उस सन की बीवियां नहीं सन की बीवी नहीं होती किसी डजन कैट एनी थिंग ओनली करताज वाइफ गेट इट विच करताज वाइफ मेरा फा मैं मर गया मेरे बेटे की वाइफ है उसका कोई शेयर नहीं है मैं मर गया और मेरे जब भी पार्टीशन होगा तो जो मेरे बेटे को मिलेगा वो माँ का भी हक है माँ मीस मेरी वाइफ का जब तक वो जिंदा है उसका हक है मेरे बेटे की वाइफ का कोई हक नहीं है मेरे बेटे की वाइफ तो बेटे वाला शेयर है उसके बेटे की वाइफ का किस बात का हक नो नो क्वेश्चन लोग कहते हैं कर्ता की वाइफ को मिलता है अरे करता वो जिसने एच जिसका ओरिजिनल एच है बाद वाला कोई कर तो वो नहीं है वाइफ बाद का तो उसका अपना शेर मिल गया बेटे को नहीं तो सारे ही करता बनने तैयार हो जाएंगे अब कौन करता होता है करता इज डेड लॉन्ग लिव द करता या किंग इज डेड लॉन्ग लिव द किंग हु विल बी अ करता आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ द फादर हु विल बी अ करता कौन होता है सर करता मरने के बाद कौन करता होगा एल्डेस्ट चाइल्ड बेटा नहीं एल्डेस्ट चाइल्ड चाइल्ड डॉटर भी हो शी कैन बी ए करता वो ठीक है वो छोड़ दे वो अलग बात है शी डजन वॉन्ट टू बी ए करता इफ ऑल ऑफ दम डिसाइड एनी बडी कैन बी ए करता एनी अडल्ट मेंबर कैन बी ए करता लेकिन सन जरूरी नहीं है करता हो डॉटर कैन ऑल्सो बी ए करता कैन वाइफ बी ए करता नो क्वेश्चन वाइफ कैन नॉट बी ए करता तो किसी ने सवाल पूछा हस्बैंड हस्बैंड है कल उसकी एच है दो माइनर चिल्ड्रन है और उसकी डेथ हो गई अब क्या करें हु विल बी करता ऑफ दैट एच यू एफ शी विल बी मैनेजर ऑफ दैट एच यू एफ टिल द चाइल्ड गेट्स चाइल्ड का है सन्नी का टिल द चाइल्ड गेट्स मेजोरिटी वो करता नहीं होती है शी इज मैनेजर शी इज लुकिंग आफ्टर द अफेयर ऑफ द एच यू एफ ओनली फॉर टेम्पररी पर्पज बिकॉज देर इज नो अडल्ट मेंबर हु कैन बी दो ही तरीके हैं या विल करवाइए एच एफ के नाम पर या गिफ्ट लीजिए एच एफ के नाम पर और कोई तरीका नहीं है कोई प्रॉपर्टी मेरे फादर के मरने के बाद मेरे एच एफ को नहीं जाएगी सवाल ही नहीं पैदा होता सवाल ही पैदा नहीं होता बाकी बहुत चीजें हैं लेकिन मुझे टाइम के लिए कंस्ट्रेट है कोई पांच दस कोई सवाल छोटे मोटे पूछने हैं तो जरूर पूछिए नहीं तो फिर मनीष जी बैठे हैं उनको भी करना है जिसे मैं कह रहा हूं एनी क्वेश्चन यू हैव यू कैन आस्क मी हेर देर एंड पूछिए कुछ भी पूछ हाँ जी सर कुछ है क्वेश्चन ज्वाइंट वट यू थिंक ज्वाइंट लेबर मैं समझा नहीं ज्वाइंट लेबर कोई कॉन्सेप्ट ही नहीं है जॉइंट लेबर उससे क्या नो नो सर नो यू कैन नॉट फॉर्म एन एच यू एफ एच यू एफ बनती ही विल से है सर आफ्टर 1956 और गिफ्ट से है कोई जॉइंट लेबर से एच यू एफ एच यू एफ कुछ नहीं होती कुछ नहीं होती सर सर एच यू एफ का डेट ऑफ इनकॉर्पोरेशन क्या होगा डेट ऑफ इनकॉर्पोरेशन वैसे तो चाइल्ड वाला होना चाहिए लेकिन अगर आप वाइफ का भी लिख देंगे तो फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा इनकम टैक्स में वैसे चाइल्ड का होना चाहिए जिस दिन चाइल्ड हो जाए उस दिन डेट ऑफ इनकॉर्पोरेशन है पैसा है या नहीं डजेंट मेक एनी डिफरेंस थैंक यू सर थैंक यू दिस डजेंट मेक एनी डिफरेंस चार जनरेशन टोटल क्या हाँ कैसे अपने आप मरने के बाद है ही नहीं जाओ हिंदू सक्सेशन एक्ट फाइव सिक्स आ गया तो कैसे करेंगे ओ 1956 के बाद किया तो नहीं भरा अगर परदादा 1956 के बाद पैदा हुआ है तो मरा तो नहीं 56 से पहले हुआ है तो है वो जो कह रहे हो फोर फादर्स प्रॉपर्टी यही कहना चाहते हैं व्हेन दैट पर्सन डाइड हु क्रिएटेड दी एच वो फिफ्टी से पहले है अब तो इतना पुराना हो गया तो मैं बोल नहीं रहा फिफ्टी के बाद डेथ होगी तो हिंदू सेक्शन 1956 ही लगेगा सेक्शन 8 लगेगा सेक्शन 6 लग ही नहीं सकता ये तो लॉ है सर सेक्शन 6 नहीं लग सकता सर आप कह रहे हैं कि दिस साइड सर सर इन केस एच यू एफ मतलब जो आप बता रहे थे वाइफ उसकी मैनेजर रहेगी तो इनकम टैक्स को मतलब कि आपको लेटर लिखना पड़ेगा उसका क्या आपको लिखना है ये दो चीजें बताऊ सब मुझे पूछ
उससे सर मैं बैंक अकाउंट खोलने गया कहता जी डीड लो क्या मतलब एच की कौन सी डीड होती है भाई मैंने कहा इंडिविजुअल की डीड होती है क्या कहता हमें नहीं पता मैं तो लिखा है डीड तो मैं किस बात की डीड दू मैं कहा यू कैन टेक एन एफिडेविट दैट आई एम आई एम दिस पर्सन मेरी एच है और मेरे ये ये को पार्सन है और आपको एच यू एफ खोल नहीं पड़ेगी एंड दे हैव टू डू इट लेकिन किसी को इग्नोरेंस है ना किस बात की डीड एच यू को डीड होती है नथिंग नथिंग एच यू में कोई डीड नहीं होती है ये तो आप बाई बर्थ है सॉरी बाई क्रिएशन बाई लॉ जिस दिन आपकी शादी एच यू एफ हिंदू डन लॉ में जिस दिन आपका बेटा एच यू एफ बन गई लेकिन बनने का फायदा क्या है जब तक कि आपके पास कॉर्पस ना हो या इनकम ना हो तभी तो बनेगी वाइफ बनेगी एज ए करता एज ए मैनेजर उसको रिटर्न भरनी पड़ेगी एज ए मैनेजर टैक्स एच यू एफ कोई लगेगा बट शी विल नॉट बी ए करता करता नहीं है वो एच यू एफ की वो है शी कैनॉट बी ए करता वाइफ कैनॉट बी ए करता वाइफ विल बी मैनेजर टू लुक आफ्टर दी अफेयर ऑफ दैट एच यू पैन कार्ड तो एच यू एफ का है करता का थोड़ी होता है साइन वो करेगी ना एज मैनेजर बोर्ड लगाएगी साइन एज मैनेजर एच यू एफ तो करता का है करता का एच यू एफ तो ये तो अपना पैन है उसको कर देगी थैंक यू वेरी मच जी प्लीज सर सर एक एक क्वेश्चन छोटा था सर आपने कहा है कि एच यू एफ विल से या गिफ्ट से बन सकती है तो गिफ्ट किससे लेना होगा किसी रिश्तेदार से लेना पड़ेगा किसी से ही फ्रेंड से ले लो दे दो सर कुछ तो दे दो फिर थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर दिस वॉज प्लीज मैम प्लीज All members are requested to kindly be seated. We will be starting the next technical session after this. Thank you, sir, for such an engaging session. Especially after lunch, everybody is woken up uh, and alive for the last session, and it's good to see an audience up. Sir, you are CA, so one joke has come. You have said bank has asked you for a deed. You have not told this. You would also ask for a deed. 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 With this, we'd like to close this technical session. I'd request uh, uh, Shri Sanjay Sharma ji and Shri K K Singla ji to kindly felicitate our keynote speaker for such an engaging session today. ये माइक ऑन करना तो बटन दबाना पड़ेगा ये वाला ठीक है
Please be seated, we'll start shortly. Sanjay ji, zara bar sare nu kehna zara apna, quickly.
Allez. Good afternoon, members. Welcome to the fourth technical session that is related to GST. I'll call on the dais, Mr. Vineet Bhatia, who is our guest speaker. Please, sir. Mr. K. L. Goel, who is presiding the session, please come over the dais. Mr. Man Manohar Gupta, please come on the dais. Mr. Ranjeev Lumba, Mr. Vishal Sharma, and Mr. Deepak Sharma, please. Before reprising the subject, I would like to introduce the dignitaries on the dais. Firstly, uh, this session will be presided by Mr. K. L. Goel. He needs no special introduction about his expertise and the knowledge he has. But still, uh, he is the senior advocate of Punjab and Haryana High Court and he has been the all, always a mentor for us, especially for our, our, our local bars and everybody we look up to him. Our guest speaker is Mr. Vineet Bhatia. He is he's a law graduate from the Campus Law Center, Delhi University, and specializes in the practice of indirect taxation since 1991. He regularly argues matters before the Supreme Court, High Court tribunals, and commissioners, as well as before the indirect authorities. He has been a president of the Sales Tax Bar Association of Delhi. Please give him a big applause. And we thank him that he took a time for this session. We also thank Mr. Man Manohar Gupta, advocate. He is the General Secretary of PTBA. Mr. Ranjeev Lumba, Advocate, he is from Chandigarh. Mr. Vishal Sharma, Advocate from Ludhiana. And Mr. Deepak Sharma, he is the General Secretary of District Tax Bar Association of Panchkula. Welcome, welcome you all. The subject for today was, uh, it's been a discussion that what should we discuss in the GST. So, uh, with Sandeep ji and the whole team, we were discussing about what should we do. Should we get some chapters or some subject or, a, or just a particular section we should discuss about. Then we thought of why not go for the scrutiny, assessment and audits and the consequential demands and recoveries in that. Because that's the forte, I think uh, all, the, all the tax practitioners today are, are are looking up to these proceedings only. The compliance part is diminishing every day by day. So we thought of taking up this uh, matter and we requested Mr. Vineet Bhatia ji to take the charge of this session. He, he, <laughs> um, uh, he, he never says no, I think. He never says no, no to us. Uh, talking about this subject, uh, if we see the assessments in the earlier regime were, the notices issued in the earlier regime were uh, uh, journal notices and the dealers been, been, were being called upon for, uh, for the assessment proceeding. But now the, these notices are being issued specifically and some of the authorities were not doing that. Our local bars uh, went up to the authorities and we uh, pointed out this matter that the general notices should not be given to the SSEs and they acknowledged it and three of our bars, the Tri-City Bar, Panchkula, Chandigarh and Mohali, we got through this issue. Now I request Mr. R.K. Chaudhary and Mr. Rajat Gupta to honor Mr. K.L. Goel. Now I request Mr. Vikaspuri and Mr. Vipin Sharma to honor Mr. Vineet Bhatia.
Now I request Ms. Akriti Gupta and Nitish Bansal to honor Mr. Man Manohar Gupta. I request Piyush Pruthi, Rajesh Katoch, and Ms. Chinansha to honor Mr. Ranjeev Lumba. I request Vidishi Swaroop, Sanjay Sharma and Mohit Basral to honor Mr. Vishal Sharma. Now I request Ishan Lumba, Ram Bansal and Mr. Sanjeev Khurana to honor Mr. Deepak Sharma. Thank you, everyone. So, without taking much of time, we will ask Mr. Vineet Bhatia ji to take the charge of this session. Please. Thank you, Mr. Good afternoon, friends. I know it's one of the most difficult sessions to take after lunch, which Giri Shaujaji was taking. And it is my privilege that today I am taking a session where the legal luminary Shri K.L. Goelji is the chairman. And we, when I just entered the profession at that time, when we used to visit Chandigarh, so we used to hear a name that Mr. K. L. Goel is the doyen of the tax profession in Punjab and Haryana. And I was visualizing that Punjab and Haryana and Mr. Goel is the doyen of tax industry. He must be a very hefty man with a lot of weight. But when I saw him, I said, oh, he is Mr. Goel. But when I heard him arguing, then I realized why he is known as Doyen of the tax industry. And I saw him arguing in a matter where the kind of arguments he took were unbelievable. So it is indeed a privilege for me today to be addressing this August gathering over here. And I am thankful to the entire team of this conference, Prerna, who have organized such a wonderful event today, and especially Mr. Sandeep Goelji who has taken all the pains in organizing this conference. My dear friend Sanjay Sharma ji, Varinda Sharma ji, Vishal ji, Mr. Gupta ji, and all the dignitaries of the dais and on the dais, and all my respected colleagues and seniors, and obviously Guru ji, Giri Shauja ji, with whom we were traveling in the morning. He is the Guru ji of the entire profession as far as the tax profession is concerned. 
Friends, the topic assigned to me is audits, assessments and determination of demand and recoveries under the GST Act. Now, we have to change our mindsets, especially those tax professionals who were not practicing excise law or service tax law in the Earthsville regime. हम लोगों को आदत पड़ी हुई है असेसमेंट्स कैसे होते हैं एक सबसे सिंपल क्वेश्चन विल असेसमेंट्स अंडर जीएसटी बी ईयर वाइज यस और नो सो इट विल नॉट बी ईयर वाइज वी आर वेरी क्लियर ऑन दिस इश्यू सो इफ इट विल नॉट बी ईयर वाइज देन हाउ विल असेसमेंट्स बी डन हाउ विल बी असेसमेंट्स टेकिंग प्लेस इन द जीएसटी रजीम Will it be simply self-assessment or will there be some other scheme of assessment? You see, no answer is sometimes leaving a answer question blank in the question paper will not give results. So we will have to take one stand or the other, be it yes or be it no. So if so, we need to understand first few principles of assessment in GST regime. A, it will not be an year-wise assessment. Then what will it be? We will come down to that. We will mellow down on that. B, the first thing we must look into is the person who is assessing us, whether he is my proper officer or not. Most of the times, we do not look into this aspect at all. And mind you, everything is not to be done by the proper officer. I have come across cases where a person's bank account has been attached by whom? By a joint commissioner or by a superintendent. Can he do so? Can a bank account of a person be attached by a superintendent? Who can do so? No. Only the commissioner. Not even the proper officer. Only the commissioner. So, if the commissioner can do it, and the bank account has been regular officer, then what do I do? I don't do anything. I did a small writ file, and in two minutes, I said, yes, it is so simple. It is written in so many words that only the commissioner can do it. No other person can do it. How could you do it? Then, only the commissioner can do it. No other person can do it. How could you do it? The whole exercise goes. और हम उस एंगल से कभी सोचा ही नहीं। We were always thinking कि नहीं यार इसने बैंक अकाउंट तो ठीक अटैच किया है, मेरा डीलर तो गलत ही था, उसने चोरी तो की हुई थी। वो सब बातें बाद में देखेंगे। सबसे पहले तो ये देखें किया किसने अटैच। So friends, with this background, now we must अच्छा। Although I said that there is no scheme of assessment under the Act, still there are many provisions in the act relating to assessment. So what for those provisions are there then? Now when there is no assessment, then what is the role of the whole chapter 12 of the CGST Act? You see, the whole chapter 12 of the CGST Act deals with assessment. And which type of assessments are in this? Section 59 deals with self-assessment. Section 60, provisional assessment. I don't know how many of us are aware of this concept of provisional assessment. I don't think so. Even I have never used this concept of provisional assessment, but there is a provision for provisional assessment under the GST law. Then, section 61 talks of scrutiny of returns. Section 62 is actually an assessment which can be done without issuance of a show cause notice, which is an assessment of non-filers of returns. And section 63 is assessment of unregistered persons. And section 64 is a summary assessment in special circumstances. Now, if we see 59, self-assessment is basically we all are aware that the general law is ki jo return file kar di, that is deemed to have been accepted as it is. And there will be no further action taken unless and until all my returns are okay. So, if I have correctly reported my supply transactions and Basically, two limbs in GST. Mein. People say it's a very complex law, but there are practically only two limbs to it. One is my supply part and 
the other is my input credit part. The whole story revolves around these two limbs. Ki supply, then the further question comes, supply taxable or exempt? Then taxable, if taxable, taxable at what rate? And if, and linked uh, problems are classification disputes, which are again rate related disputes. So one is the supply part, and the second part is input tax credit part, whether I am, the input tax credit which I have availed is right or wrong, genuine or bogus, and whether I was required to do any reversals under rule 42, 43, which I have properly done or not. These are the only two parts which I have to look into. So if I have correctly complied with these all things, then my self-assessment is perfectly fine. But if I have not complied with these, then the second part comes into play. Now, this provisional part, when does this assessment comes into play? If I am myself not able to determine my taxes properly, I can start, make a request to the commissioner that look, say for example, I am selling a computer or I am selling a mobile phone and I am not sure whether it is a mobile phone or it is a camera. So I can say the rate is different on mobile phone and the rate is different on camera. So what I will do, in my opinion, it is mobile phone and I will start paying taxes of mobile phone on provisional basis. For one year, th th there is a time limit given to the commissioner to accept my application for provisional assessment. In the meantime, I will keep paying taxes on provisional assessment basis. The question arises, what will happen if the commissioner decides other way around that look, your provisional assessment is wrong. Then obviously you are required to pay tax, the differential tax and interest. But I save myself from the penal consequences if I opt for section 60. But then the problem is that that is binding on me. So why two similar provisions for similar kind of things? One way is, why don't I go for advanced ruling? I can go for advanced ruling rather than opting for provisional assessment. Sometimes advanced ruling takes a lot of time to come. So by the time advanced ruling comes, I can opt for provisional assessment, but here I have to seek the permission. This will apply only when I am unable to determine the value of goods or services or both, unable to determine the rate of tax, can be done only at the request of the taxpayer. Provisional assessment cannot be done by the department. They cannot provisionally assess me. Only I can request that I want to get myself provisionally assessed. So it can be done only at the request of the taxpayer. He has to apply in writing and the proper officer has to pass an order within 90 days directing payment on provisional basis. So he will pass an order in writing that, okay, within 90 days you pay tax at so and so rate. Then the taxable person has to execute a bond. Now this is the problem why people don't go for provisional assessment. Because within that 90 days he will direct me ki no, as per my version, aap ki liability jo aap pay kar rahe ho 12% ki nahi hai, 18% ki hai, aap mahine mein itni turnover karte ho, to aap uska 6% ka ek difference ka ek bond execute kar do. Aur agle ek saal ke liye jo bond execute kar do. Aur bond kaise execute hona hai GST mein? which is the way for executing a bond, the way to execute a bond is bank guarantee. So, if I have a bank guarantee, I will give a taxi. Because bank guarantees do not come for free. I have to put the money in my bank and then only the bank issues a bank guarantee. So, that is the only reason this provisional is not being used so frequently. It is being used by large multinational corporates where they have a doubt as to the rate of tax. And doubts are innumerable as far as GST is concerned. Uh, this is one provision. Now the second part comes, ki how does the other assessment provisions work? The other pro provisions would be, this is all relating to the provisional assessment that he can make a request for payment on provisional assessment ASMT 01 up to ASMT 09. So these all forms are only in relation to provisional assessment. So no provision for regular assessment as far as ASMT 01 to 09 is concerned. So I will skip that provisional assessment part for a minute. And then 61. This is the section which is being most frequently used 
by the departmental officers as if they are the one who are doing my assessment and there is the provision in law. What it says is that the proper officer may scrutinize my return and related particulars furnished by the registered taxpayer to verify the correctness of the return and notify him of any discrepancy and seek his explanation. So basically three things. He will scrutinize my return. He will say that there is a discrepancy in the return and he will notify me with the discrepancy. And for that he will issue me a notice. That notice is generally in ASMT 10. So ASMT 10 usne mujhe issue kar diya. Now what happens? Now I file my reply to the discrepancies which he has pointed out to me. And the moment I file my reply, what is he supposed to do? One way is, he says ki aapne aapke ye discrepancies aapke return mein, aapne accept kar li discrepancy. Aapne accept kar li to aap kya karoge? Jama kara doge, DRC 03 pay kar doge, or inform kar doge in ASMT 11. But if you do not agree with the discrepancy, you will file your reply to those discrepancies. And then what will happen? When a registered person of explanation or information under sub rule 2 is accepted, the proper officer notifies in him ASMT 12. Ab maine explanation diya, usne accept kar liya aur AS, ASMT 12 de diya mujhe. Ab now here comes the important part. Does issuance of ASMT 12 means that there cannot be any assessment for that tax period subsequently? Let us presume kisi officer ne mujhe 17, 18, 18, 19, 2 saal ke alag alag ASMT 10 diye. Main ne uska jawab diya. ASMT 10 usne maan lije aapko diya ki aapne ye input credit le rakhe aur ye input credit galat hai mere isaap se. और मैंने उसका जवाब दे दिया और उसने जवाब एक्सेप्ट कर लिया आपने कोई भी अच्छी सी जजमेंट मणिपुर हाई कोर्ट वगैरह की दिखाई होगी तो उसने एक्सेप्ट कर लिया और उसने आपको एक एएसएमटी 12 इशू कर दिया अब क्वेश्चन यह है कि वो 17 18 18 19 जिन दो सालों का एएसएमटी 12 आपको इशू हो गया क्या उन सालों के लिए 73 या 74 का शोकास नोटिस बाद में आपको इशू हो सकता है कि नहीं? सर, I need an answer. I, it cannot be a monologue. It has to be a dialogue. So you mean to say कि on a different point he can issue? So that means he has not looked into your complete assessment. He has looked into only that discrepancy. So qua that discrepancy, he cannot issue you a notice under section 73-74, but for other issues, he can issue you a show cause notice. That means the window for opening of show cause notice still remains open. This is an important aspect which must, we must keep in mind. Ki the window for opening of show cause notice still remains open. It does not get closed. So this process of ASMT is not the final assessment. This will not conclude the whole thing. So we, at times we say, sir, is period ka to ASMT 12 ho gaya. So we think, ab is period ka ASMT 12 ho gaya, ab hum ganga na hai. No, that will not serve the purpose. And what will happen if you furnish a reply and he does not found it to be satisfactory? Then what will be the consequences? Usne ek return ke andar aapko ek point discrepancy note kari. Say for example, usne kaha ki aapke 3B aur 2A mein differences hai. Aur is baat ka usne ek aapko ASMT 10 issue kiya ki aapne 3B mein credit le rakha hai 1 crore rupay aur aapke 2A mein to aara hai sirah 60 lakh rupay. तो ये 40 लाख रुपए आप से क्यों ना डिमांड किए जाएं या ये आपके रिटर्न में डिस्क्रिपेंसी है क्यों ना डिमांड किए जाएं वाली स्टेज तो भी आई नहीं अभी तो यही स्टेज है कि आपकी रिटर्न में डिस्क्रिपेंसी है आपने एक्सेसिव क्रेडिट ले रखा है 3B में 
Now what happens? You furnish your reply. Ki look, these are the credits which I have taken, which were not reflecting in that year, which have come in subsequent year, whatever, whatever reasons you want to give. And you give a recon reconciliation and tell him, ki look, my input tax credit, I have rightly availed three crore rupee, uh, 1 crore rupees. It was not 60 lakh rupees, it was actually 1 crore rupees. Or Joby Apne Rule 36 for us period mein nahi tha, us period mein, uh, ye baad mein aaya ye provisions. Whatever reasons you want to take on merits, you take. Now he says, no, 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 I don't agree with all this. You also do not agree, so you are not willing to deposit that 40 lakh rupees. The officer also says, no, I also do not agree. So then can he just straight away issue you, ki, okay, deposit this 40 lakh rupees, here is an assessment order. Can he do it th that way? Ab dekho, ye ek view aaya ki audit ke jayega. Kyu audit ke jayega bhai? That is not audit. DRC 01A is not audit. Audit is ADT 01. Then he will issue DRC 01A. DRC 01A is, which we will look into later on, a pre-consultation notice. So, as we were talking about Kapil Ji, very vehemently, that show cause notice, se pehle, yeah, sorry, reopening, se pehle, ek pura procedure add kar diya, 148A, B, C, D. Similarly, in GST law also, Abhiyam, we will see that show cause notices have to be issued either under section 73 or under section 74. There is no other provision in law under which show cause notice is to be issued. And in dono mein kya difference hai? we will look into right now. But 73-74 mein show cause notice issue karne se pehle, ek pre-consultation notice ka concept law mein inbuilt hai. Jisko DRC 01A kehti hai. Rule 142 1A mein. Ab pehle, isse pehle, GST se pehle, service tax law mein ye provision by way of a circular tha. It was not a statutory provision. It was only by way of a circular. Or circular mein likha tha ki aap kisi ko, assessi ko notice dene ke liye, notice dene se pehle, badi demand create karne se pehle, ek bar usko bula lo, usko confront kar lo, उसको बता दो कि आपका यह केस है हो सकता है वो आपको पे ही कर दे तो आपको शो कॉज नोटिस देने की नौबत ही ना आए और वो लिटिगेशन वहीं पर खत्म हो जाए सिंस दिस वाज माय वे ऑफ सर्कुलर कुछ ऑफिसर फॉलो करते थे कुछ नहीं करते थे दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट में ये मैटर चैलेंज हुआ एमएडीएस के केस में और दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट ने ये कह दिया कि ये एक मैंडेटरी प्री रिक्वायरमेंट है this circular, it's, although it's in the nature of circular, but circulars are binding on the departmental officers. So it is a pre-requirement. Unko pre-consultation notice dena. Usko pre-consultation notice kehte the. Usko consultation word use karte the. Ki of, bula ke ek bar consult kar lo SSC ko. Ki aapke against ye proposed show cause notice hai. Now that pre-consultation notice was held to be mandatory in the case of MADS. And then followed by many other cases. Now in GST law, they put that as a statutory provision in Rule 142 1A and sec Section 73 as well as 74. So, up to ye bilkul mandatory ho gaya. Lekin, ab fir kuch cases gaye, High Court jaha par unho ne kya kiya ki DRC 01A issue ni kiya, straight away DRC 01 issue kiya, which is the show cause notice. To logo ne challenge kar diya ki, sir, inho ne mere ko mauka to diya hi ni. एक एक मैटर में हम भी गए थे हाई कोर्ट हमने भी ये आर्गुमेंट लिया कि सर इन्होंने हमें शो कॉज नोटिस से पहले प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस तो दिया ही नहीं तो दैट शो कॉज नोटिस इटसेल्फ इज बैड इन लॉ बिकॉज़ दे डिड नॉट गिव मी अ प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस ऑल्दो इट वाज एन एकेडमिक एक्सरसाइज बट वो टाइम गेन हो गया ना दो तीन साल दो तीन दो साल का जब वो दोबारा देंगे तो दोबारा से डी नोवो एक्सरसाइज स्टार्ट होगी नाउ द कोर्ट स्ट्रक डाउन दैट शो कॉज नोटिस ऑन द ग्राउंड कि यू हैव नॉट गिवन अ प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस so now what they did is, a word tha 142-1A that before issuance of a show cause notice, the proper officer shall issue a notice in pre-consultation notice world, hai, shall issue a notice confronting the uh, assessee about the case which he has to meet. So that word shall ko replace kar diya, may se. So now, 
डस डेट मीन दैट प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस देना ही नहीं किसी भी केस में सीधा सीधा अब आप वन फोर्टी सीधा डी आर सी जीरो वन इश्यू करना शुरू कर दो विल इट मीन दैट वे अगर यही मतलब है तो फिर हटाई दो उसको लॉ से वन फोर्टी रूल वन फोर्टी टू में रखा क्यों है चाहे शैल के साथ भी क्यों मे के साथ भी क्यों वाई टू कीप दैट प्रोविजन एट ऑल माई व्यू इज दैट प्रोविजन कैन नॉट बिकम रिडेंडेंट जस्ट लाइक दैट अगर एक रूल में एक बात लिखी गई है चाहे मे वर्ड लिखा है यू मे इशू अ प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस बट इफ यू आर डिस्पेंसिंग विद दैट प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस यू मस्ट रिकॉर्ड द रीजन एज टू वाई यू डू नॉट विश टू गिव अ प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस और वाई यू फील दैट दिस मैटर कैन नॉट बी सॉर्टेड आउट बाई इशूंग प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस एंड देन इन ओनली इन दोज केसेस यू कैन स्ट्रेट अवे गो एंड गिव अ शो कॉज नोटिस इन डी आर सी जीरो वन अदरवाइज ऑल दो द वर्ड शैल हैज बीन रिप्लेस बाई मे स्टिल इट डज नॉट मीन दैट इट हैज बीन कंप्लीटली डिस्पेंस विद You have to give a notice still in DRC zero one A, and if some officer is giving you straight away a notice on DRC zero one, you must tell him. At least in your reply to show cause notice, you must take this objection that you have not given me a pre consultation notice and you and you have taken away a valid right of mine. अब आपको सर फर्क क्या पड़ता है? नहीं दिया तो फर्क पड़ता है कोई? Assuming कि ये सेक्शन 74 का केस है बिफोर वी कम डाउन टू दैट लेटर्स कम वी विल सी वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सेवेंटी थ्री एंड सेवेंटी फोर एंड देन आई विल टेल यू की क्या फर्क क्या पड़ता है प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस देने से और ना देने से एक सेकेंड में कंक्लूड करते हैं अगर प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस दिया उसने और मैंने पे कर दिया सेवेंटी फोर का केस है तो मेरे पे कोई पेनल्टी लगनी है सर 74 में लगेगी अगर प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस दिया बिफोर इश्यूएंस ऑफ नोटिस तब 15 परसेंट लगनी है ठीक है ना वो शोकस नोटिस से भी पहले 15 परसेंट ही लगनी है बट अगर मेरे को शोकस नोटिस होगा या नहीं होगा ये मुझे कैसे पता चलेगा ये मुझे प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस से पता चलेगा मुझे सपना तो नहीं आएगा अदरवाइज कि वो मेरे को समझ दे रहा है मेरे को बुला रहा है वो अल्टीमेटली वेदर डेट विल कल्मिनेट इन टू अज नोटिस और इंटेंड्स टू गिव मी शो कॉज नोटिस और नॉट आई विल बट इफ ही गिव्स मी अ प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस देन आई विल बी श्योर डेट यस ही इज बाउंड टू गिव मी अ शो कॉज नोटिस एंड एट दैट गिवन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई कैन ऑप्ट टू पे दैट अमाउंट एंड पे फिफ्टीन परसेंट पेनल्टी एंड गेट अवे विद इट बट इफ ही डज नॉट गिव मी अ प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस आई विल नेवर कम टू नो ऑफ दैट But generally, yes, Sandeep ji is right. By and large, they off the record they inform you, sir. Itni tax banta hai, jama kara lao. Hey? Ha. Generally, by and large, off the record. But sir, hota kya hai? Off the record, ek aur baat bhi hoti hai. Wo wali figure jo wo apko batate hai, wo bahut inflated figure hoti hai. For extraneous consideration, ki sir, apka shokas notice main banana ho, five crore ka. Apka shokas banana ho, ten crore ka. जब एक्चुअल शोकॉज आता है तो पता चलता है तो एक डेढ़ करोड़ का या दो करोड़ का शोकॉज नोटिस आया दिस हैपेंस क्वाइट अ नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स दैट दे अनवांटेडली अननेसेसरली इन्फ्लेट द प्रपोज शोकॉज नोटिस स्पेशली व्हेन दे आर नॉट पुटिंग इट इन ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट बिफोर कमिंग टू शोकॉज नोटिस दीज आर फ्यू प्रोविजन रिलेटिंग टू द असेसमेंट ओनली सेक्शन सिक्सटी टू डील विद नॉन फाइलर ऑफ रिटर्न सेक्शन सिक्सटी If he fails to get registered, अब 62 में भी क्या है आपने रिटर्न नहीं फाइल करी उसने आपकी असेसमेंट कर दी असेसमेंट ऑर्डर भी दे दिया आपको बट लॉ क्या कहता है उसके बाद अगर आपने रिटर्न फाइल कर दी चाहे डिफरेंट फिगर्स पे करी उसने तो बेस्ट जजमेंट असेसमेंट करी क्योंकि आप रिटर्न तो भर नहीं रहे थे आपने अपने रिटर्न अपने हिसाब से लेट फाइल उसके बाद फाइल कर दी तो वो जो ऑर्डर है वो ऑटोमेटिकली डीम टू हैव बीन वैकेटेड हो जाता है There is no, then there is no order. That order is deemed to have been vacated. तो वो जो best judgment assessment का order उसने किया, आपके return भरते ही वो order खत्म हो गया. फिर उसके बाद अगर उसको demand create करनी है, तो उसको show cause notice वाला process फिर से adopt करना पड़ेगा. Now audit. I will just briefly touch. There are two provisions relating to audit. One is audit under section sixty-five, and here I am talking of audit by the department. One is section sixty-five, and other is section sixty-six. 
Now, section 65, the audit is to be done by the commissioner or any officer authorized by him. They do not say proper officer. It could be any officer authorized by him, provided he is authorized by the commissioner. By way of a general or specific order, may undertake audit of any unregistered person for such period at such frequency and in such manner as may be prescribed. एक तो देखिए GST law में बहुत सारी ऐसी जगह है जहाँ पर excessive delegation I would use the term. In many places GST law there is a concept of excessive delegation. When I say excessive delegation, basically it means that all the powers have been given to the rule making authorities. And why they have done so? Because primarily this law has been adopted from the excise law. And if you happen to see the excise law or those who used to practice in excise law would know it was governed act to tha mushkil se char page ka but it was governed always by notifications and circulars and same is the fate which is happening with the GST law also. The only good point is that for coming out with a notification they have to go to GST council. So that is a saving grace. Otherwise, by now they would have, I don't know how many, despite that, there are more than 1000 notifications. Agar wo wala rider nahi hota, to pata nahi ab tak kitne notification aage hote. Now section 65 audit has to be done by an officer who has been empowered by the commissioner. Again the same question. Ek commissioner ne ex officer ko empower kiya. Usne meri audit start kar di. And mind you, this audit has to be completed in a time bound manner. What is the time to complete the audit? 90 days. And he can seek further extension from the commis joint commissioner and then further by the commissioner. So maximum is one year. And he starts doing your audit and he makes lot of paragraphs in the audit. Now you are not satisfied or you do not agree with the observations of the audit. What do you do? Can he straight away create a demand? Can the audit says I have done your entire audit, I have looked into your books of accounts, I have, uh, I have confronted you with the audit paras, you have given your replies to the audit para, I am not satisfied with your audit replies. So, can he straight away come and say that look now you are required to make a payment of so and so amount? No. Then what is he supposed to do? Again going back to 73-74. So then if you, he is not satisfied with the, your reply to the audit objections, wo aapko ek show cause notice hi issue karna padega. Bina Shokas ke, he cannot create a demand. Or section 66, this is again a departmental audit, but by a chartered accountant or a cost accountant who have been nominated by the commissioner. So instead of the officer, here it is a chartered accountant or a cost accountant nominated by the commissioner. But then, can randomly, he can just simply say ki, okay, aapki shakal pasand nahi hai, aapke case mein, Special audit karaunga. Aapke case mein department kai commissioner, department kai officer audit kar dega. Can he do so? Can the commissioner do so? To kis case ko special auditor ko dena hai? Koi parameters, koi guidelines decided hongi ki ye wala case special, special audit ke le jayega aur ye wala case department ka officer audit karega. Kya parameters, kya guidelines honi chahiye uske le? Aur kab karega wo decide? पहले दिन से कह सकता है कि मेरे को ऑडिट करना है इंडियन ऑयल का ऑडिट होना है इंडियन ऑयल एक बहुत बड़ी एंटिटी है तो इसका ऑडिट तो मैं किसी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट को दे रहा हूं या किसी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट को ऑब्लाइज कर रहा है कमिश्नर कहता है यार ये एक बहुत बड़ी एंटिटी है इंडियन ऑयल इसका ऑडिट ये सीए करेगा चलो जी सीए को असाइन कर दिया ये ऑडिट कैन ही डू सो और बिफोर असाइनिंग अ ऑडिट टू अ स्पेशल ऑडिट to a chartered accountant, is he supposed to do any exercise? He is supposed to do an exercise. What will be that exercise? That 
First of all, this special audit can be done only if there is a stage of scrutiny, inquiry, investigation or any other proceeding before him. So, first of all, he is doing scrutiny or doing proceedings, investigation. First step. Second, and the officer not below the rank of assistant commissioner having regard to the nature and the complexity of the case. मतलब बेसिकली ऑफिसर को यह कहना पड़ेगा कि यार मेरे समझ नहीं आ रहा मेरे पल्ले नहीं पड़ रहा ये क्या कर रहे हो तुम इसलिए मैं एक चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट को अपॉइंट करना चाहता हूं क्योंकि ये चीज मेरे पल्ले से बाहर है तो जैसे सुबह वेंकट रमणी सर ने कहा कि गेम ऑफ चांस या गेम ऑफ स्किल या 21000 करोड़ का शोकॉज नोटिस वहां पर भी उन्होंने स्पेशल ऑडिटर नहीं अपॉइंट किया था वहां खुद ही इशू किया डीजीजीआई ने शोकॉज नोटिस तो स्पेशल ऑडिटर के केस को अपॉइंट करने के लिए यू हैव टू फर्स्ट रिकॉर्ड अ फाइंडिंग दैट देयर आर द नेचर ऑफ द केस इज सच दैट देयर आर कॉम्प्लेक्सिटीज इन्वॉल्व्ड इन द केस देन ओनली यू कैन रेफर अ मैटर फॉर अ स्पेशल ऑडिट एंड नेचर ऑफ ऑडिट शुड नॉट मियरली कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी सर ये आई हैव गॉट अ केस स्ट्रक डाउन फ्रॉम दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट बिकॉज़ दे सिंपली स्टेटेड सर इनकी टर्नओवर 40000 करोड़ है और इनकी नेचर ट्रांजैक्शन ऐसी है कि मेरे समझ नहीं आ रही इसलिए मैं स्पेशल ऑडिटर को मैंने चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट की फर्म को बिग फोर को अपॉइंट कर दिया हमने कहा सिर्फ इतना रिकॉर्ड करना काफी नहीं है आपको साथ में यह भी रिकॉर्ड करना पड़ेगा कि ऐसा कौन सा इंटरेस्ट ऑफ रेवेन्यू है जो आप वॉच नहीं कर सकते और वो वॉच कर, कर सकते हैं वट इज द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ रेवेन्यू इन्वॉल्व विच यू आर अनेबल टू डू सो दैट पॉइंट दे फेल टू रिकॉर्ड so you will have to record two things that nature and complexity of case and interest of revenue aur iske bade jhagde hote the pehle special auditor appoint ho jata tha badi si company ka ek special auditor appoint ho gaya aur anaap shanaap fees ke bill aa jate the 2 crore ka special auditor ka bill 1 crore ka special auditor ka bill 5 crore ka special auditor ka bill kyun kyunki ye bhi doubtful ye income tax law mein zyada hota tha और वहां पर ये ग्रे एरिया था कि हु इज टू पे द प्रोफेशनल चार्जेस फॉर दैट स्पेशल ऑडिटर तो देन द मैटर गॉट सेटल डाउन फाइनली एंड द कोर्ट सेल डिपार्टमेंट को स्पेशल ऑडिटर चाहिए था एसएससी को नहीं चाहिए था एसएससी को तो जो चाहिए था उसने अपना ऑडिट करा लिया स्टैट्यूटरी ऑडिट तो अगर आपको चाहिए था आपने कराना है तो उसकी फीस भी आप ही बियर करोगे जीएसटी लॉ में फॉर्चूनेटली दे हैव पुट दिस इन ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट दे हैव पुट इट इन द स्टैट्यूटरी प्रोविजन इटसेल्फ इन 66 दैट द फी फॉर द स्पेशल ऑडिटर विल बी बॉन्ड by the department so now that issue is over so that is also one of the reasons that number of special audits have gone down then there is a provision relating to inspection search seizure and arrest i don't think so we, this was my topic for the day so we will not be taking this although one issue which important issue which i would just like to touch upon which honorable justice uh jingan sahab also mentioned in the morning that what is happening is the gst people at the first instance are registering an fir evasion more than 5 crore rupees the case is of availment of itc or issuance of fake invoices without actual supply of goods more than 5 crore just call the police register an fir and the issue which he very validly raised whether police has the authority at all to look into this matter sandeep ji se main help hi le raha hu ek matter hum kar chandigarh high court mein kar rahe hain justice behel ke paas so that matter is subject so i'll not comment on that but they are the main point we have taken and that, that officer has initiated more than 40 cases where he is investigating matters relating to gst and it is a gold mine for him he is sitting on a gold mine karna kya hai police wala hai maine maan lijiye fake invoice assuming for a minute fake invoice issue kar rakhe hain department ne complaint kari fir file kari ki vinith bhatia ji ne fake invoices issue kar rakhe hain ab vinith bhatia ke case to jo kar raha hai kar raha hai विनीत भाटिया ने इनवॉइस एक्स को दे रखा है वाई को दे रखा है जेड को दे रखा है वो एक्स के पास भी पहुंच जाता है वाई के पास भी पहुंच जाता है जेड के पास भी पहुंच जाता है कि जी आपने इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट गलत ले रखा है मैंने कभी आप 
होते कौन हो पूछने वाले मैंने ठीक ले रखा है गलत ले रखा है ये तो जीएसटी डिपार्टमेंट डिसाइड करेगा ना नहीं मेरे पास तो एफ है कि आप विनीत भाटिया फेक है so with all due respect this matter is yet to be decided and it is or peculiar in the state of haryana which which i have noticed no other state is taking up this exercise but peculiarly in the state of haryana what is being done is that the entire investigation is being conducted by police department with all due respect my view is this is a special law this is a special law where the arrest is also conditional only in four cases arrest can be done that also if the quantum is above 5 crore rupees below 5 crore rupees it is a bailable offence now is police competent enough to decide whether my gst wager is more than 5 crore rupees or not i don't think so they can ever come to know on that issue so this whole debate is still going on as to whether who will have the authority to decide and make arrest now 73 and 74 two three things i will touch upon 73 is basically where there is a dispute but that dispute is not on account of fraud willful misstatement or suppression of facts but there has to be a tax which has been not paid short paid erroneously refunded or input tax credit wrongly availed or utilized so these five things have to be a precondition for issuance of a show cause notice now there are so many judgments as to show cause what should be the ingredients in a show cause notice ab hamare paas kuch show cause notice to aate hain wo ek page ke bhi nahi hote usse kai baar to yahi determine karna mushkil ho jata hai especially with all due respect those which are issued by state authorities especially in delhi kai bar ye nahi samajh aata show cause notice diya kis liye so when we are replying to a show cause important is not show cause notice the importance is reply to the show cause notice what do we have to take in our replies when we are replying to the show cause notice a as i told you the first step we must look into is whether the officer who has issued the show cause notice whether he has the requisite jurisdiction or not to sabse pehle to hame jurisdiction ka point take up karna chahiye aur check karna chahiye show cause notice aaya to jisne show cause notice issue kiya uske paas mere ko show cause notice dene ke liye power thi bhi ki nahi thi whether he is my proper officer or not for that we will have to look into both the things the territorial jurisdiction as well as the monetary jurisdiction एक मॉनिटरी जूरिस्टिक्शन भी प्रिस्क्राइब है लॉ में तो वी विल हैव टू लुक इन टू बोथ द एस्पेक्ट नंबर वन नंबर टू वी विल हैव टू सी वेदर ही गेव मी अ प्री कंसल्टेशन नोटिस बिफोर इश्यूएंस ऑफ शो कॉज नोटिस और नॉट नंबर थ्री वेदर द शो कॉज नोटिस इज बार्ड बाय लिमिटेशन और नॉट अब आज तक तो खैर अभी कोई भी बार्ड नहीं हुआ क्यों नहीं बाढ़ हुआ वॉट इज द टाइम पीरियड फॉर इश्यूएंस ऑफ अ शो कॉज नोटिस अंडर सेक्शन 73? 73 का शो कॉज नोटिस इश्यू करने का टाइम पीरियड क्या है थ्री मंथ्स बिफोर द पासिंग ऑफ द ऑर्डर और ऑर्डर कब तक पास करना है थ्री इयर्स फ्रॉम द ड्यू डेट ऑफ फर्निशिंग ऑफ एनुअल रिटर्न तो 17, 18 की एनुअल रिटर्न हमने कब फाइल करी थी फरवरी ट्वेंटी में so this was the show cause notice has to be issued before november november last it had to be issued and it had to be adjudicated before february now what they did was since this was almost coming to an end feb was almost coming to an end par bahut zyada to nahi thoda sa they have enhanced this time period and they have issued a नोटिफिकेशन नंबर थर्टीन ऑफ लीग ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू सो जो तीन साल का पीरियड था सत्रह अठारह के लिए बढ़ा के उन्होंने क्या कर दिया अप टू थर्टी एथ सेप्टेंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री अब थर्टी एथ सेप्टेंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री तक तो सत्रह अठारह का शोकॉज नोटिस एडजुडिकेट कर पाएंगे ये एडजुडिकेशन का टाइम पीरियड है 
शोकॉज नोटिस इश्यू करने का टाइम पीरियड इससे तीन महीने पहले हो जाएगा अगर वो शोकॉज नोटिस इश्यू कर रहे हैं सेक्शन सेवेंटी का सेवेंटी के लिए तो अभी भी पांच साल टाइम पीरियड है उनके पास और बाकी सालों के लिए ये टाइम पीरियड बढ़ा दिया उन्होंने और उन्होंने क्या कहा कि जो कोरोना का पीरियड है स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम फर्स्ट मार्च 2020 ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी ये दो साल का पीरियड एक्सक्लूड हो जाएगा तो दे हैव इश्यूड अ नोटिफिकेशन अब क्वेश्चन अगेन विच कम्स टू माई माइंड इज ये नोटिफिकेशन इश्यू है अंडर सेक्शन वन ए ऑफ द सीजीएसटी एक्ट and this time period was not in rules this was in the act ye jo 3 saal ka time period aur 5 saal ka time period likha hua hai ye act mein likha hua hai to inhone act ko change nahi kiya notification se lekin time period badha liya to i examined this issue whether they could have done this so yes what they did was inhone pehle act mein ek naya provision dala 168a और वहां पर ये लिख दिया कि फोर्स मेजर जब भी कभी होगा तो फोर्स मेजर के केसेस में हम ये टाइम पीरियड बढ़ा सकते हैं और पैंडेमिक को फोर्स मेजर इन्होंने माना क्योंकि इन्होंने जब लोगों ने ये कहा कि हमने रिफंड हमारे टाइम बार्ड हो रहे थे तो टाइम बार्ड रिफंड्स को विद इन टाइम फ्रेम लाने के लिए यह टाइम पीरियड एक्सक्लूड किया उन्होंने रिफंड के लिए भी एक्सक्लूड किया कि जो दो साल का टाइम पीरियड रिफंड अप्लाई करने का उसमें यह पीरियड एक्सक्लूड हो जाएगा तो अगर आपने कोई रिफंड आपका जो टाइम बार हो रहा था फर्स्ट मार्च 2020 का और वो आपने रिफंड अगर अप्लाई कर लिया 28 फरवरी 2022 तक तब भी वो विद इन टाइम है तो मान लीजिए किसी का रिफंड फर्स्ट मार्च 2022 को टाइम बार हो रहा था 20 को फर्स्ट मार्च 2020 फर्स्ट अप्रैल 2020 को टाइम बार हो रहा था उसने फर्स्ट अप्रैल में तो नहीं अप्लाई किया लेकिन उसने रिफंड फाइल किया थर्टी डिसंबर ट्वेंटी को स्टिल After this amendment, after this notification, that refund is not barred by limitation. It is within time. So, उन्होंने refund के लिए time बढ़ाया, तो simultaneously अपने assessment के लिए भी time बढ़ा लिया. So now they have two more years for the remaining of the financial years. Otherwise, the limitation period is three years and five years. Now, what is the difference between three year and five years, and when seventy four is to be invoked? ये एक जनरली शो का नोटिस 74 में इश्यू होते हैं और ये एक ग्राउंड है जो हमें हर केस में लेना चाहिए वॉट 74 फोर इज टू बी इन्वोक ओनली इफ द टैक्स हैज नॉट बीन पेड और शॉर्ट पेड और एरोनियसली रिफंडेड और इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट हैज बीन रॉन्गली अवेल्ड बाय रीजन ऑफ ये तीन वर्ड बड़े इंपॉर्टेंट है फ्रॉड विलफुल मिस स्टेटमेंट और सप्रेशन ऑफ फैक्ट और यहीं पर बात खत्म नहीं होती तो तीन वर्ड है देखिए फ्रॉड विलफुल मिस स्टेटमेंट और सप्रेशन ऑफ फैक्ट एंड दैट हैज टू बी विद इंटेंट टू इवेड टैक्स अब ये तीनों वर्ड क्या रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं वेदर दे हैव एन इनबिल्ट एलिमेंट ऑफ मैंसरिया इन इट और नॉट मतलब अगर मैंने गलती से कोई इनपुट ले लिया कैन यू से डेट इट इज अ केस ऑफ 74? मेरे टू ए में नहीं आ रहा मेरे मैंने थ्री बी में क्लेम किया हुआ है बट मेरे पास बाकी सारी कंडीशन सेक्शन 16 की मैं फुलफिल कर रहा हूं कैन इट बी सेट टू बी अ केस ऑफ सेक्शन 74? मैंने डिपार्टमेंट को जब अपनी एनुअल रिटर्न भरी उसमें सारी चीजें बता दी उसके बावजूद डिपार्टमेंट एग्री नहीं करता मेरे से कैन दे इश्यू मी अशोक नोटिस अंडर सेक्शन सेवेंटी अगेन नो तो जब भी डिपार्टमेंट 74 का नोटिस दे हमारे को सबसे पहले ये कुछ ऐसे डॉक्यूमेंट्स एस्टैब्लिश करने हैं रिकॉर्ड पे लाने हैं कि दिस वाज नॉट अ केस अगर मान लीजिए एक मिनट के लिए एज्यूम भी कर ले कि मैंने टैक्स कम दिया है वी विल हैव टू ब्रिंग आउट अ केस कि ये टैक्स मैंने जानबूझ के कम नहीं दिया था फर्क है सेवेंटी और सेवेंटी में सेवेंटी विल कम इन पिक्चर ओनली इफ देर इज अ विलफुल मिस वट इज द वर्ल्ड विलफुल मीन हिंदी में विलफुल का मतलब हो गया जानबूझ कर फ्रॉड हिंदी में फ्रॉड को क्या बोलेंगे धोखा देके धोखा करके मैंने कम टैक्स दिया तो फ्रॉड विलफुल मिस स्टेटमेंट और सप्रेशन ऑफ फैक्ट तो वी मस्ट ऑलवेज ब्रिंग इन टू रिकॉर्ड कि सर देखिए मैंने अपनी ऑडिटेड बैलेंस शीट आपको दी हुई थी 
Once I have given an order, and there are umpteenth number of judgments, n number of judgments on this issue, ki section 74 cannot be invoked if there was no willful misstatement or suppression of fact. So if you want to invoke section 74, and ye onus kis ke upar approve karna? Meri jimme wari hai, ya jo allegation laga raha hai, uski jimme wari hai. Uski jimme wari hai. He is the one who is alleging that I have done some willful misstatement or I have suppressed some facts, then the onus is on them to prove that I have done so. And in, if they are not able to do so, section 74 cannot be invoked. Now, difference kya hai dona mein 73 or 74 mein? 73 mein, aap mujhe show cause dena chate, maine usse pehle payment kar di, no penalty. Aap ne mujhe uske bhaavjud bhi show cause de diya, maine payment bhi nahi kari, तब भी नो पेनल्टी एक महीने के अंदर अगर मैंने पेमेंट करी और उसके बाद भी अगर आपने कर दिया तो 10% ऑफ द पेनल्टी विल बी इन टू बट 74 में क्या है आपने मुझे शो कॉज अभी देना है प्रपोज कर रहा है और मैं खुद उससे पहले अगर पेमेंट करना चाहता हूं तो 15% पेनल्टी साथ दो तो जितने बोगस इनवॉइसिंग के केस थे हमने जिसके टैक्स जमा कराया डीआरसी 03 अगर किसी ने कहा भी ना ससी ने जमा करा दो हमने कहा करा दे लेकिन वहां पर चलान में सेक्शन 73 5 ऑप्ट करना 15% पेनल्टी कम से कम अभी तो नहीं देनी पड़ेगी नहीं तो वहां पर जहां पर भी सेक्शन जिन लोगों ने 74 5 चलान में डीआरसी 03 में खुद एडमिट कर दिया कि वो पेमेंट 74 5 में कर रहे हैं तो वहां तो ऑटोमेटिकली आपका एडमिशन आ गया कि आपने चलान में खुद 74 5 लिखा तब तो 15% पेनल्टी आप बच ही नहीं सकते तो अब 74 में क्या है पहले पे करो 15% पेनल्टी शो कॉज नोटिस इशू होने के बाद विद इन 1 मंथ पे कर दो 25% पेनल्टी ऑर्डर होने के विद इन 1 मंथ पे कर दो 50% पेनल्टी और अगर ऑर्डर होने के बाद भी अगर आप पे नहीं करते फिर तो ऑब्वियसली फिर 100% पेनल्टी इक्वल टू द अमाउंट ऑफ टैक्स इवेडेड सो देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस एज फार एज पेनल्टीज आर कंसर्न बिटवीन 73 एंड 74 एंड देन देयर आर मेनी इश्यूज as far as these two issues of 73 and 74 are concerned and I think the whole of the litigation re procedurally revolves around this. I am not going into the procedure part, the procedure part is simple that they will issue a show cause notice which will be have to be issued online and again that will have to file a reply and if he is not satisfied with my reply, mind it, DRC 01 is not in the order, it is just a simple show cause notice. And there are so many judgments also which say that what all should be the ingredients of show cause notice. There should be a specific show cause notice stating that you are hereby required to show cause as to why an amount also should be stated. As to why an amount of rupees so and so should not be demanded from you. And most of the show cause notice do not have these contents which are a prerequisite in a show cause notice. So with these words I thank Thank you all for a very, very patient hearing. You can have a copy of this PPT. I'll give it to Sandeep ji. And I thank you all for a very, very patient hearing. And special thanks to Sandeep ji, my friend Shivratan ji over there. All of you for giving me this opportunity of being amongst you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vinit ji. Thank you very much. Now I uh, request Mr. K. L. Goyal ji to conclude this session. speaking in Hindi and Punjabi for the reason that all the members may understand because many of the people there is a problem in speak, uh, understanding the English. Today Mr. Bhatia has said that he has said assessment in the beginning. He has said that the assessment the provision of the bad act has been lost. There are some special cases that we can't say that the assessment is not the case. There are some cases that are not the case. There are some cases that are not the case. There are some cases that और उधर प्रविजन ने पेनल्टीज दे हो दे प्रोसीजर तो बिना प्रॉपर ऑफिसर दे नोट्स इशित होते बिना बहुत ही बंदियां दे होते वो कानून लागू नहीं होते अगर तो कोई माइनर असेसमेंट्स वगैरह हों दिया ने तभी आर टू सी दैट मैटर कम्स टू एन एंड पर जितने वट्टे केसेस ने और जिधर जो प्रॉब्लम आते उसी आज प्रदेश करना चाह 
ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੇਸਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੋਰ ਬੜੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮਸ ਆ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਬਾਅਦ ਵਿੱਚ ਪੈਨਲਟੀਜ਼ ਦਾ ਇਨਕਮ ਟੈਕਸ ਦਾ ਹੋਰ ਤਾਂ ਸੋ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਸੋਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਕਿਸੇ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਨਜਾਇਜ਼ ਤੱਕਾ ਸੋਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਮੇਰਾ ਖਿਆਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੇਸਾਂ ਦੇ ਵੱਡੇ ਕੇਸਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੋਰਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਅਪਰੋਚ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਸ ਗੱਲ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਾਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਹੀ ਖਤਮ ਕਰ ਦਈਏ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਬਾਰੇ ਇਲੈਬੋਰੇਟਲੀ ਪਾਟੀਆ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਦੱਸਤਾ ਕਿ ਵੀ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਅਪਰੋਚ ਦੀ ਕੋਰਟਸ ਇਨ ਦੋਸ ਕੇਸਸ ਐਂਡ ਟ੍ਰਾਈ ਟੂ ਡਿਸਟ ਅਗਰ ਨਾ ਹਾਈ ਕੋ ਅਪਰੋਚ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਵੀ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਟਾਕ ਟੂ ਦੀ ਐਕਸਾਈਜ਼ ਐਂਡ ਟੈਕਸੇਸ਼ਨ ਕਮਿਸ਼ਨਰ ਔਰ ਦੀ ਸੈਂਟਰਲ ਐਕਸਾਈਜ਼ ਅਥਾਰਟੀਸ ਫਾਰ ਥੈਟ ਪਰਪਸ ਦੂਸਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਗੱਲ ਕਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਰਿਕਵਰੀ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਟੈਕਸ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਕੋਈ ਅਸੈਸਮੈਂਟ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਉੱਥੇ 10% ਟੈਕਸ ਭਰ ਕੇ ਅਪੀਲ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਬਾਕੀ ਦੀ ਰਕਮ ਸਟੇ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਗੱਲ ਦੇਖਣੀ ਪੈਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੈਸਮੈਂਟ ਜਦੋਂ ਕਰਵਾਉਣੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਹਰ ਕਿਸਮ ਦਾ ਜਵਾਬ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ ਹਰ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੇ ਪੇਪਰ ਨੂੰ ਨਾਲ ਲਾਇਆ ਜਾਵੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿਣ ਦਾ ਮੌਕਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਮਿਲੇ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰਲੀ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਅਗਰ ਉਹ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਮਤਲਬ ਹੀਰਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਮੌਕਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਹੋਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਕੋਰਟਸ ਵਿਲ ਇੰਟਰਫੀਅਰ ਬਟ ਐਟ ਦ ਸੇਮ ਟਾਈਮ ਈਵਨ ਅਪੀਲਟ ਅਥਾਰਟੀ ਆਫਟਰ ਗੈਟਿੰਗ 10% ਅਮਾਉਂਟ ਵਿਲ ਡਿਸਾਈਡ ਦ ਮੈਟਰ ਇਨ ਯੂਅਰ ਫੇਵਰ ਅਦਰਵਾਈਜ਼ ਅਗਰ ਆਪਾਂ ਇਹ ਕਹਦੇ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੁਣਦਾ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੁਣਦਾ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਕਿਤੇ ਵੀ ਰਿਲੀਫ ਨਹੀਂ ਮਿਲੇਗੀ ਅਲੈਬੋਰੇਟਲੀ ਦਿਸ ਹੈਜ਼ ਆਲਸੋ ਬੀਨ ਡਿਸਕਸਡ ਬਾਈ ਮਾਈ ਲਰਨ ਫਰੈਂਡ ਮਿਸਟ ਬਾਕੀਆ ਤੀਸਰਾ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਜੋ ਰਾਈਜ਼ ਰੋਜ਼ਾਨਾ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਮੈਂ ਦੇਖ ਰਿਹਾ ਹਾਂ ਉਹ ਹੈ ਅਰੈਸਟ ਐਂਡ ਬੇਲ ਮੈਟਰ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਵੀ ਪਾਟੀਆ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਕੁਝ ਕਿਹਾ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਪ੍ਰੋਵੀਜ਼ਨ ਜੀਐਸਟੀ ਐਕਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਕਿ 5 ਕਰੋੜ ਰੁਪਏ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਅਗਰ ਟੈਕਸ ਦੀ ਅਵੇਅਨ ਹੋਵੇ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਮੈਨ ਕੈਨ ਬੀ ਅਰੈਸਟਡ ਔਰ ਜਨਰਲੀ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਕਿ ਬੇਲਸ ਆਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਡਿਸਾਈਡਡ ਬਾਈ ਦੀ ਡਿਸਟ੍ਰਿਕਟ ਐਂਡ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਜੱਜਸ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਹਾਈ ਕੋਰਟ ਜੱਜਸ ਉੱਥੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਕੀ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਨਾ ਤਾਂ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਜੱਜਸ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਲਾਫਾਈਡ ਲਈ ਉਹ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਨਾ ਹਾਈ ਕੋਰਟ ਦੇ ਜੱਜਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਟੈਕਸ ਲਾ ਸਮਝ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤਾਂ ਕੀ ਸਮਝ ਆਣਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਸੀਨੀਅਰ ਐਡਵੋਕੇਟਸ ਨੇ ਜਾਂ ਸੀਨੀਅਰ ਆਫੀਸਰਸ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਕਿ ਜੀਐਸਟੀ ਲਾ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਫੈਡਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਬਾਹਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਇਸ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਤਰੀਕਾ ਵਰਤਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਇੱਕ ਐਲੀਗੇਸ਼ਨ ਲਗਾਇਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ 5 ਕਰੋੜ ਰੁਪਏ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਦੀ ਅਸੈਸਮੈਂਟ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਤੇ ਇੰਨੇ ਦਾ ਵਹੀਏ ਨਾ ਅਗਰ ਕੋਈ ਬੰਦਾ ਬਿਜ਼ਨਸਮੈਨ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੀ ਕੋਈ ਡਰ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਹੋਰ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹਦੀ ਇਨਕੁਆਇਰੀ ਐਨੀ ਕਿ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਕਰਨੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਹੈ ਅਰੈਸਟ ਕਰਨ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਬੁਲਾ ਕੇ ਦਫ਼ਤਰ ਚ ਕਹਿ ਦੋ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਅੰਡਰ ਅਰੈਸਟ ਉਹਦੀ ਐਨੀ ਕਿ ਇਨਕੁਆਇਰੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਕਰਨੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ 5 ਕਰੋੜ ਰੁਪਿਆ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬਣਾਉਂਦੇ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਔਰ ਉਸ ਦਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਆਰਡਰ ਵੀ ਦਿਓ ਆਰਡਰ ਵੀ ਜਾਂ ਮਤਲਬ ਪ੍ਰੀ ਅਸੈਸਮੈਂਟ ਵਾਟ ਐਵਰ ਯੂ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਸੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੰਨੀ ਗੱਲ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਕਹਿਣ ਦਾ ਹੱਕ ਮਿਲਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ 5 ਕਰੋੜ ਰੁਪਿਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਣਦਾ ਔਰ ਸਾਨੇ ਟੈਕਸ ਦੀ ਅਵੇਅ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰੀ ਔਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਚਾਰ ਚਾਰ
शिव एंटरप्राइजेज का केस होया कि अगर लाइक गहरू लाल बालचंद है दैट इज ए डिफरेंट थिंग वो केस भी असी किया शेर केस के हो कि तुम अगर माल तुम ए हो माल तुम बी तो लिया बी इज नॉट ए डिफॉल्ट लेकिन बी ने सी तो माल लिया है द कोर्ट सैड जस्टिस पी के जैन आज आए थे इन्ह की जजमेंट है और बड़ी एलैबोरेट जजमेंट है कि बी गल कि तुम सी तो एनाइवेंस दस दो खेरू लाल मालचंद के मुताबिक अदरवाइज ए ने तो बी तो माल लिया उसको की पता है तुम सतारा सैक्टर के माल दल लै लैन जाने हो और किसी बंद तो मतलब भी लख रुपये का माल लै लें हो तो फिर उस गल का सूँ की पता भी अगर टैक्स देगा कि नहीं देगा और अपने ये खास नॉलेज है एम ए मैं किसी बंद बलेम नहीं करता कि करोड़ करोड़ रुपए की सेल करके सारी सेंटर के दो प्रसेंट तो दिखाई हुई है इट इज़ जनरल फीचर सो आई वॉन्ट टू से कि वह कहें भी जिन्ना चर सी तो ए कनाइवें साबित नहीं होंगी तुम एन पेनल्टी नहीं ला सकते सो ये चार गल् जोज़ अपने काम आदियां ने यह मैं ता दसिया ने क्योंकि भाटिया साहब ने भी इसमें ओलैबोरेटली किया डिस्कस तो मेरे ख्याल होर कोई इशू है नहीं अच्छ थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर थैंक यू मिस्टर के एल गोयल जी नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर मन मनोहर सिंह मन मनोहर जी एंड मिस्टर विशाल शर्मा टू गिव अ टोकन ऑफ थैंक्स टू मिस्टर विनीत भाटिया टू मिस्टर विनीत भाटिया Thank you, Vinay ji, for accepting our invite and enlightening us. Thank you very much. Now I request Mr. Ranjit Bhumba and Mr. Deepak Sharma to give a token of thanks to Mr. K L Goel. I request the, all the dignitaries to be seated on the dais. We are just going to start the validatory session. Uh, I I I would request everybody to be seated for another 10 minutes. So if you are there, all the organizing committee and the volunteers over there, they'll be very happy to hear a clap from you. Thank you. Good afternoon, members, for the validatory session. Uh, we have two honors so we starting with we would like to honor our patron lawyer shri ravish agarwal ji who has been practicing for last 35 years so can i request him to kindly come on the dais i like to call lumba ji to do the honor so i request him to come on dais so i like to call kl goel ji to do the honor devinder sharma ji <laughs> please i okay i request kl goel ji to do the honor The validity session is important because now it is a time to recognize the effort for those who had done the undone job. So let's have a round of applause from them. So to acknowledge and recognize their effort. So to acknowledge and recognize their effort, I start with Mr. Rajesh Malhotra, and I like to call others to do the honor.
I like to call Ranjit Sharma ji on the dais and I request Gulumba ji to do the honor. I like to call the Vineet Gandhi, President of District Tax Bar Association Panchkola. Sir, please come on the dais. So, I would request Vineet Bhatia ji to do the honor. Next is myself, Atul Gupta. I'll request Mr. Vineet Bhatia to please do the honors. Mr. Atul Gupta is the president of Mali Tax Bar Association and he was awfully busy with the cricket uh, tournament he held, uh, he, he organized after 20 years. Right? And it was a successful and today he has again successfully organized this conference. Mr. Atul Gupta. Thank you, sir. Now I will request Mr. Adarsh Veer Singh, a pillar of this conference, to please come forward and receive a token of gratitude from the entire organizing team. I will request Mr. K. L. Goel, Senior Advocate, to please do the honors. Mr. Adarsh Veer Singh is a very dynamic and versatile person. You will always find him smiling, untiring. He's was, he was here at 12 o'clock last night and at 5 o'clock in the morning as well. Thank you, Adarshi. Sir. And after playing uh, tennis in the morning. <laughs> Ram Narayan Yadav. I like to call Ram Narayan Yadav. He's left. He's left. Okay. Uh, Mr. B.K. Gupta. Uh, Mr. B.K. Gupta. Mr. B.K. Gupta. Uh, Mr. B.K. Gupta. Mr. B.K. Gupta. Mr. B.K. Gupta. He is the president of Punjab Tax Bar Association. So, basically this bar association is the umbrella of our small bars. Now, I like to call my big brother and the chairman of this committee, Sandeep Goelji. Mr. Ah, I like to call, uh, I like to call Vineet Bhatia ji to do the honor. Sandeep Goelji ke baare ek kana chata hoon, bade bai to hai. So, let's have a huge applause of round for him. All credits go to him. For organizing this event. Mr. Varindra Sharma. Uh, now I'd like to call Mr. Varindra Sharma. And I, I would request. I would request. Sir, please come on the dais. He's coming with the team. Yes, yes. I, I, I request uh, Deepak Sharma to do the honor, please.
you to do the honor. Now I'm going to quickly name the other persons. So, so that they can be ready. Yes, they can be ready. Papa, sir, come on. One minute. Now the. Now I would like to honor uh, our very senior advocate and regarded advocate, Mr. Lumbaji, and to do the honor, I like Vanit Bhatia ji, uh, Vanit ji to please. Now I like to call the better half of Sandeep Goel ji. <laughs> so <laughs> he is uh, the main coordinator for this organizing this event. So I like to call Kail Goel Sahib ji. Kail Goel ji to <laughs> honor him. Honor. Ah, sir, Vineet and Vineet ji and Hanji Hanji. Loma ji, please you also join. I request all the dignities on the join, uh, on the dice to join, please. So I will going, we are short of time, so I will going to quickly name the volunteers and the other coordinated committees. Akriti uh, Gupta. Akriti, are you around? Yes. Okay, she has been looking after the IT part, so all the presentations that you were watching on the projector screen. She was behind the show, but she was the major part of it. Next is Abhay Sharma. Mr. Thank you. 
हमारी बार के निर्मला सीतारमन ने दी यहाँ से देखो मिस्टर आशदीप सिंह सलू मिस्टर आर एन मिस्टर आर एन गुप्ता
Thank you. 
privilege to please come on the stage and accept our token of gratitude for having been the backbone of this conference. Mr. Sunil Pindlish, she is the senior standing counsel for indirect taxes in Punjab and Haryana High Court.